shopatically been ethical citizen tourist when you saw a endangered animal you can inform to the near forest areas the role these three days are celebrated for endangered animal the world elephant day is internationally annual celebrated in august 12 and dedicated to the conservation of unpreserving um, on the world elephants the march 16 has celebrated the national panda day this is celebrated for the one of the world's unique bear and it has it is the one of the risk of extinction march 20 people have celebrate the world's sparrow's day it it desired to save the and preserving and conservationing of these on sparrows the role of government government taking many steps to protect the endangered animal and some of the people who are only hunting and selling animal in black market the a part of the saving of endangered animal while of centuries while of centuries and selling um, many people have selling black, uh, animals in black market the peop- the government to, should take official action on them conclusion now we going to see the last session on my topic yes the discorrect conclusion the world is currently facing a critical issue of both including beast and critters the decline in their population is primary cause of species extinction additionally arise awareness about the importance of biodiversity and inspirations of preserving these beautiful creatures to the future generation by working collectively we can make a remarkable difference in preserving of these beautiful creatures towards the future generation and have a chance to survive and enrich our planet with their presence i have yeah, uh, disappearing of uh, i ha- i like to tell a slogan on my life conservation told by e o wilson the disappearing of a plan plants and animals from our environment is likely to becoming taking a page from a book of life told by e o wilson i have like to end this session with a slogan on my life conservation if you like to shoot the animal do it with the camera not with the gun today you will hunt it. tomorrow they will hunt you if you remember these two slogans we can preserve these beautiful creatures to us future generation thank you a warm greetings to all present here i am vignesh of grade 7 from the frontline academy matriculation no, no. high school no, 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 no. today i am going to give you a lecture 20. about the resilience of nature appreciating the importance beauty and the complexity of ecosystem now i am going to tell a small intro about nature nature is the ultimate source of our living both living and non living things include nature and everyone is interdependent which helps maintaining the ecosystems plants animals and humans all depend on nature for their survival nature supply it supplies oxygen sunlight soil water and other necessary components nature holds a balance between diverse ecosystems for smooth functioning it consists of air water plants animals human life and many more nature provides us with water to drink air to breathe food to eat clothes to wear and shelter to live in imbalance in nature can be life threatening to all today the contents of my topic are ecosystem functions of ecosystem structure of ecosystem food chain and the examples of ecosystem first i am going to tell about ecosystem what is an ecosystem an ecosystem is a community of living things that interact with each other and with the physical world the plants and animals within each ecosystem interact with each other and the non living elements of ecosystem like climate precipitation and soil an ecosystem can be 
very small such as n puddle or under a rock it can also be as big as n ocean or a desert now we now we now we can see about the definition of ecology ecology is the study of organisms in their natural home interacting with their surroundings the term ecology is coined by ernest haeckel in 1869 it is derived from greek words oikos means home and logos means study so ecology is the study of ecosystems components of ecosystem different the environment consists of both the biotic components and the abiotic components biotic components are the living organisms and the abiotic components are the non living organisms so now first structure of ecosystem ecosystem consists of both ecosystem consists of both the biotic components and the abiotic components biotic components consist of producers consumers and decomposers in that consumers consist of herbivores carnivores omnivores and detritivores functions in the and the abiotic components consist of physical components and the chemical components physical components physical components are sunlight air water and wind speed and the chemical components are carbon dioxide oxygen nitrogen and hydrogen functions of ecosystem informational function ecosystems provide an essential reference function and contribute to the maintenance of human health by providing opportunities for spiritual enrichment cognitive development recreation and aesthetic experience Now it's time to see the definition of biotic, abiotic, and the components of biotic and abiotic. A biotic. Any living organisms in an ecosystem is called biotic. Biotic components of ecosystem. Different living organisms constitute the biotic components of ecosystem. This refers to large life forms such as trees. or mammals small life forms such as insects and alga and the microscopic life forms such as bacteria biotic meaning of are related to life or living factors plants animals fungi and bacteria are all biotic or living factors abiotic any non living organisms in an ecosystem is called abiotic an abiotic factor is a non living condition or thing such as climate or habitat that influences or affects an ecosystem and the organisms in it and abiotic factor can determine which species of organisms will survive in a given environment next producer producers or organism produce a living thing that can make its own food are called producers examples of producers are trees trees serps creepers climbers and alga producers extract nutrients from soil or ocean and manufacture their own food by the method of photosynthesis in the presence of carbon dioxide sunlight air water and chlorophyll plants prepare their own food the energy from sun is the base of food chain a prote- an exception occurs in deep sea hydrothermal oh, ecosystems sure, sure. where there is no sunlight so here so it is the primary answer. producers manufacture food through a process called chemosynthesis chemos what is chemosynthesis Chemosynthesis is a process that certain organisms use to produce energy akin to photosynthesis but without the utilization of sunlight the energy comes from oxidization or burning of chemicals which seep up from the earth's crust so producers are either phototrophs or chemototrophs consumers consumers are organisms that obtain nutrients by consuming other organisms examples of consumers are dog cats lion tiger fish and human beings these organisms 
are formally referred to as heterotrophs the word heterotroph is derived from greek words heteros meaning another or different and trophy meaning nourishment trophy meaning nourishment group and trophy meaning nourishment and herb heterotroph is an organism that cannot synthesize its own food and must obtain it ready made they can be herbivores carnivores omnivores or detritivores decomposers a living thing that breaks down other living things to get nutrients and energy is called decomposers examples of decomposers are bacteria fungi insects and earthworms herbivores animals who derive their required energy directly from consuming the plants only are called herbivores they are also known as primary consumers herbivores have special digestive system that let them digest all kinds of plants including grasses examples of herbivores are rabbit cattle horse sheep and etc carnivores carnivores generally eat herbivores but occasionally eat other carnivores also also known as territory consumers examples of carnivores are lion tiger cats birds of prey frogs frogs etc and the carnivores are divided into two parts one is predators and the other one is scavengers predators predators are an animal that kills and eats other animals scavengers scavengers are an animal that feeds on carrion dead man dead plant material or refuse omnivores omnivores often are opportunistic general feeders with neither carnivore nor herbivore specializations for acquiring or processing food and are capable of consuming and to consume both animal protein and vegetation many omnivores depend on a suitable mix of both animal and plant food for long term good health and reproduction example humans bears and crows detritivores detritivores consume the organic material such as crustaceans fallen leaves dead plants animal droppings and seed skins having consumed the material the organisms the next creates are a guest waste this waste contains of nutrients which are thus returned to the soil by facilitating new plant growth are made easier for other organisms to consume having consumed the material the organisms then excrete or excrete by breaking down dead matter into smaller pieces detritivores speed up the process of decomposition types of food chain food chains are divided into two parts one is grazing food chains and the another one is detritus or saprophytic food chain in that detritus food chains are divided into two parts one is predatory food chains and the another one is parasitic food chains and the another one is parasitic food chains food energy cycle flow of energy in an ecosystem is governed by laws of thermodynamics which are energy cannot be created or destroyed but it can be transformed into stored energy and heat energy is lost as energy is transformed food chain a food chain is the sequence of who eats who in a biological community to obtain nutrition a food chain shows how each living things gets its food and how nutrients and energy are passed from creature to creature every living organism or thing requires energy to survive whether it be plants animals or humans energy is required by living beings to grow plants get their energy from photosynthesis animals get energy from food they consume a two examples of food chain is a grass is in my rabbit a rabbit is in my fox here the grass is producers rabbit is primary consumers and the fox is secondary consumers 
Lisa Canonis, a grass is in my grasshopper, a grasshopper is in my rat, a rat is in my snake, and the snake is in my an eagle. Here, a grass is producers, grasshopper is primary consumers, rat is secondary consumers, e snake is territory consumers, and the eagle is high level consumers. Next, we can see a brief overview of different marine ecosystems. Aquatic ecosystem. An aquatic ecosystem is an ecosystem located in the body of water. The two main types of aquatic ecosystems are freshwater ecosystems and the marine ecosystems. Freshwater ecosystems are ponds and lakes, streams and rivers and wetlands. And the marine ecosystems are oceans, coral reefs and estuaries. Marine, marine ecosystem is characterized by many biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components of marine. Fish, sea stars and predators. Abiotic components of marine. Salinity of the water, sunlight, nutrients availability, weather or climate, weather or climate and waves. Oceans. Oceans cover more than 70% of earth surface. About 97% of all the water available on the earth or in the oceans. Coral reefs found in warm environments, clear nutrient poor water and high wave energy environments. Estuarine salt marshes. Coastal region that is affected by tides can potentially have extreme temperature changes. Generally, clam waters, fresh and salt water mix in this area. Mangroves found in tropical regions affected by the tides. Can. Water may be brackies in some mangrove environments. Brackies means mixing of fresh and salt water. Examples of mangroves are Pichavaram mangroves, Gulf of Kutch mangroves and Sundarban mangroves. The sandy beach environment made up of small sand, grassing waves and exposed to Freshwater from rain and runoff has distinct zones of life, contains small organisms adapted to the sandy environments such as mole crab and surf clam. Rocky coast. Example are western coast. Greatly affected by tides, crashing waves, ice in higher latitudes, intense sunlight in tropic region and freshwater runoff which can contain a lot of minerals and lots of dissolved gas. Mud flats characterized by dark muddy sand and no marsh grasses, very little wave action, so the sands are poorly aerated. It's food web. A krill, a plankton is in my krill, a krill is in my silverfish, a silverfish is in my leopard seal, the leopard seal is in my anokra. Finally, cons and plank plankton. A diverse group of organisms that float with the ocean currents because they are too weak to swim. The most important photosynthesizing organisms on earth. Algae are the foundation of aquatic food web and have many economic benefits. Alga are divided into two groups. One is microalga and the other one is macroalga. Microalga are divided into three types. One is green alga, diatoms and the golden alga. And the macro alga are divided into three types. One is green alga, brown alga and red alga. Finally, conclusion. Preserving biodiversity, adopting sustainable practices and recognizing the value of healthy ecosystems are essential for the well-being well of both nature and society. The resilience and beauty of the world and its ecosystems are truly remarkable. Recognizing and appreciating the import, ap appreciating the resilience and beauty of the world's ecosystems is critical for our well-being and future of our ecosystem. Let us strive to protect and nature our ecosystems for a sustainable and prosperous future. Thank you for one and all present here for giving me and this wonderful opportunity.
Then Marzuk of Grade 9C, studying at the Frontline Academy, Middle Crescent Higher Secondary School. Today, I am here to take part in the World Record Festival in the, front, in the longest lecture marathon. I welcome you all for this wonderful occasion. I am going to take lecture on the topic Green World and Introduction to Plant Kingdom. Plants. Plants are eukaryotic, autotrophic, and multicellular organisms. Plants have a rigid cell wall, chloroplast, and chlorophyll pigment. They differ from other plants through their shape, size, and structure. Scientists know over 360,000 species of plant kingdom. For the sake of study, it is divided into two types, Thalophyta and Embryophyta. In Thalophyta, plants do not develop in the embryo and their morphology is very simple. In Embryophyta, plants develop in the embryo and their morphology is very complicated. Uh, evolution of plants. Plants are said to be evolved from the aquatic green alga. Uh, the expert says that bacteria was the first living organism to exist on Earth. I have divided my lecture into three sections. In section 1, we will see on the topic photosynthesis, algae, bacteria, ferns, and poisonous plants. Photosynthesis. Plants need two types of nutrition, organic nutrition and inorganic nutrition. They get the inorganic nutrition from the soil to their roots, while organic food is in the size in the body. The process by which green plants synthesize organic food in their body is known as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs only in the green plants. The green color of the plant is due to the pigment called chlorophyll. In the absence of chlorophyll, this process does not take place. It takes place in the presence of sunlight. This is a very complicated process. This reaction occurs uh, water plus carbon dioxide with sunlight and chlorophyll gives out sugar and oxygen. Gives out sugar and oxygen. Uh, plants absorb water through their roots and passes it through the leaves. Uh, then the carbon dioxide enters the leaf through tiny pores present on the surface of the leaf. With the pigment chlorophyll and sunlight, this reaction occurs. The glucose in the size is utilized by plant cell as chemical energy. The glucose is also converted into cellulose to form plant tissues. This is how life cycle of plant goes on. Algae. Algae are the simplest living organism. They have the pigment chlorophyll. Therefore, they can make their own food through the process photosynthesis. They lack vascular bundles, that is, they do not possess xylem and phloem. Um, commonly, algae are colored and they can grow up to 60 meters in length. They come in different colors such as red, brown, pink, golden, purple, and green. Algae include unicellular plants to very big multicellular plants. The best known alga is probably the seaweed found at beaches. In India, algae are used to prepare ice cream, chocolate milk, gelatin, and beer. Some algae are poisonous in nature and some can paralyze a person. We get carbohydrate, vitamin A, B, C, D, and E, and other materials from algae. Also, fish depends on algae for their food. Algae obtained from oceans are rich source of iodine, potassium, and other minerals. Al algae are also good fertilizers. Bacteria. Bacteria are, bacteria are the smallest and the simplest living organism. Most bacteria are unicellular, but some may have many cells up to 20 in numbers. The length varies from 2 to 5 microns. 1 micron is equal to 0 0.001 millimeter. Uh, bacteria can be found everywhere, in land, in water, and in on other materials. They can be of two types, the moving type and the stationary type. These bacteria grow by multiplication. A single bacteria divides into two, and two it forms four, and so on. Within few hours, the number exceeds million, but only few of them survive in search of food. Some bacteria are useful to us by making chemicals for industrial use and some bacteria are harmful to us by causing diseases to humans, animals, and plants. They also spoil food and extract nitrogen from the soil. The four common bacterial body forms are coccus, spiral, vibro, and bacillus. Poisonous plants. The fruits and flowers of some plant look very beautiful and attractive, but they may be poisonous in nature. A few famous poisonous plants are as follows. The white flower, which flourishes on the hemlock plant, produces an unpleasant smell. The root and seed of this plant is used to make a poison called canine, which this canine can paralyze all the organs of a human body. 
this uh, the great Greek philosopher Socrates was given a cup of hemlock to drink as a punishment. The, the colchicine poison is obtained from the meadow saffron plant. This uh, seeds of meadow saffron plant. This poison is used is used used for the treatment of disease called arthritis. Many varieties of mushrooms are also poisonous in nature. EV is also a poisonous plant and produce allergy in the body. Ferns. Ferns include about 250 living genius to 9,000 species of plants. Ferns mostly grow in the moist and dark places of the forest. In some cases, fern trees can also be found in open areas. Ferns are flowerless and non seed bearing plants. People in the 17th and the 18th century uh, so were surprised when they did not find flowers and seeds from these plants. They thought that it may reproduce by some secret means at night. They also believed that one who gets the fern seed may acquire some extraordinary qualities. Even now, people complain to the fern plant seller that on the lower side of the leaf, dark brown patches or worms are developing. In fact, they are not dark, dark brown patches or worms. They are called as forangnium or sorry. Ferns are very beautiful and their bulbs are edible. The fiber obtained from the, and the fiber obtained from the fern is used to make pillows. Ferns are also used to prepare a medicine which kill intestinal worms. Section 2. In section 2, we will see on the topics ecological classifications of plants, defolation, insectivorous plants, parasitic plants, and tallest plants. Ecological classifications of plants like human beings and animals. Plants also need to adapt their environment for their survival. For their survival, they compete with other plants in search of food, sunlight, and water. The ability to adjust the environment is known as adaptations. According to the ecological classifications, plants are categorized as follows. Hydrophytes, mesophytes, xerophytes, holophytes, and epiphytes. Hydrophytes. Hydrophytes are plants which grow, under in, uh, which grow in water and adjust with their surrounding. It may be of two types. In the first type, the most of the body part of the plant will be underwater, and like hydrilla. In the second type, the, uh, half of the body part will be underwater, and the other half will be above water, like lotus. Mesophytes. The land plant which grow, and, uh, which grow in the normal condition is known as mesophytes. An uh, example of mesophytes are mango, Goa, apple, and etc. They live. They grow in the temperature where the place is too moist or too dry. Xerophytes. Xerophytes are plants which grow in the desert areas or in dry areas. All varieties of cactus are said to be xerophytes. Various kinds of cactus, aloes, stone crops belong to this category. Holophytes. These holophytes. This group of plants grow where the mineral salt in water level is very high. And this and this this plant have a thick and, and thick and fleshy stem and roots. Epiphytes. These plants grow on other plant. These plants grow on other plant or poles on our wires or on roof of other buildings. On roof of other buildings. They have the pigment chlorophyll. Therefore, they can make their own food through the process photosynthesis. They get the carbon dioxide and the water from the moisture of the air. Defolation. Plants which shed the leaves every year is called as deciduous trees. Evergreen plant does not shed the leaves every year, but always remain green. Defolation does not take place in every, in every leaves at the same time. If a leaf is detached from a point, a new leaf is replaced there. The defolation is same for both kinds of plants. In the first stage of leaf falling from a tree, abscission layer is formed in between the twig and the leaf. As soon as, it, uh, as soon as it is formed, it begins to dry and lose out. It begins to dry and lose out. Then the leaf is hollowed by the vascular bundles. Yeah, due to high heavy winds or frost, these vascular bundles become weak. Then the leaf snaps and falls down. This process is, to, uh, this process is called as defolation. A layer of cork cell develops below the abscission layer and provides a protective covering over the spot which a leaf has been detached. Insectivorous plants. There is a superstition about insectivorous plants that some, some can trap large-sized animals, including even man, and digest them. But scientists have yet to discover such type of plant. The known insectivorous plants eat only crustacean, small crustacean, aquatic animals, and small insects. These plants mostly grow in the marsh places, um, places of the forest, which are deficient in hydrogen compound. 
they did not get the uh, nitrogenous compound from the soil there by uh, by they did not get the nitrogenous compound from the soil therefore by eating small insects and animals they fulfill their nitrogenous uh, needs there are about 400 species of insectivorous plants only a few are mentioned here picture plant a leaf the leaf of this plant are tubular and picture type and contain a sweet enzyme when an insect get attracted for the smell and color of this leaf it get uh, it get attracted it crawls over the it crawls over the leaf and get trapped inside then the leaf cell digests the soft body part of the insect the leaf cell digests the soft body part of the insect in this group the plant of sarracenia are longest more than a meter venus fly trap these plants have mainly have lamine and lobes on the surface of the lamine several thin hair grows which are sensitive to touch if an insect come in contact with these le- in, if an insect come in contact with these leaves this and this and this hairs then the two flap of the leaf starts closing like a book then the digestive gland present in the upper surface of the leaf digests a soft body part of the insect then the, after this digestion the two flap of the leaf reopens again it it takes just a second to uh, it takes just a second to close the flap drosera or sandru these drosera or sandru are also a group of insectivorous plants these plants mainly have st- uh, circular and a flat lamine and a hair like structure on the upper surface of the leaf if uh, these secret a gummy liquid which shines like a dew drop when an insect get attracted for the smell of the leaf it it crawls over and sits on the lamine then the, uh, it gets stuck in it gets stuck into the tentacles the near tentacles also helps to ho- hold the prey hold the prey the, the the enzyme present in the gummy liquid digests the nitrogenous substance present in the insect parasitic plants parasitic plants most plants can make their own food through the process photosynthesis but some plants couldn't therefore these plants depend on other plants for their for their needs therefore these plants are called as parasitic plant the plant which the parasitic plant depends for the food is for the needs is called as host cascata is also a parasitic plant uh, which which has a yellow thin and delicate stem which uh, which winds itself around the host it penetrates into the xylem and phloem of the ho- uh, phloem of the host and absorbs minerals water and food from the host then the host gradually dies rafficelia is a not worthy parasitic plant this is a very thin like a thread and its flower is the largest in the world and its flower is the largest in the world this it can weight it can its diameter is about uh, up to 1 meter and it can weight up to 7 to 8 kilograms this uh, this poison produces a foul, foul smell of a rotten dead body and this po- this flower is poisonous in nature tallest plant the leaf of all coniferous plants are considered to be Uh, are considered to be simple and, and they remain throughout the year therefore these trees are called as evergreen trees the tallest tree of the world belong to this category the redwood trees are considered to be the tallest tree of the world these trees are now found in the coastal regions of california uh, the tallest tree of this, uh, in the, the tallest tree in the redwood trees are group is found in 1963 and when uh, when it is found in 96 in 1963 it heights was about 112.10 meter and in 1970 it heights was about 109 uh, 1970 in 1970 it height was about 110.60 meter the tree is gradually dying up the tallest tree of the world which is in uh, which is alive and in a good condition is a general sherman which is 85 meters tall among the flowering plants the eucalyptus regnans Uh, the eucalyptus regnans is the tallest tree which has uh, a height about 99 meters height of some other plants calligrass 5.5 meter sagora cactus 16 meter tree fern 18 meter bamboo 37 meter and jain kelp 60 meter section 3 in section 3 you will just see about four topics in the first topic is the useful roots second topic is nitrogen fixation then structure and functions of a flower then the types of fruit the types of forest useful roots plants roots uh, roots are not useful only for the plant they are also useful to us we get uh, we make use of them by in two ways as medicines and as foods in uh, we make use of the plant roots like uh, aconite hing blue flower plant of the carrot family uh, golden seal and etc we use them as medicinal roots as food we use carrot radish 
carrots, carrot, radish, ginger, onion, and etc. They have some modifications such as fusiforms, conical, napiforms, tuberous, and nodulated. In the first year of their life cycle, they produce a large number of food on the top roots. In the second year, this, this, this food is in the formation of flowers and seeds. We make use of them in the first year of the food, first year of the life cycle. Uh, in the first year of the life cycle, the rice, uh, the rice also re have replaced, the rice obtained from the roots has replaced uh, the rice obtained, the rice used by synthetic fiber. The turkey red dye is obtained from the mother. Nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is an essential biological process in which nitrogen present in the uh, atmosphere is converted into ammonia by some certain bacterial body forms such as azotobacter and rhizobium. These, uh, these uh, the root nodules are present in the roots of leguminous plants. These root nodules use space to some nitrogen fixing bacteria like rhizobium which can, uh, which can convert atmospheric nitrogen into useful form in which a plant can use it. These roots are, uh, these, therefore, these roots are helpful for the plant by fulfilling their nitrogenous needs and fertilizing the soil. Structure and functions of a flower. All the flowers are, uh, called, are said to be agnosperms. They, um, all the flowers are set, said to be agnosperms. They have a large variety in the, they have nearly two lakh species which, which are different in shape, size, and color. Their function is to pro produce seeds which grow into a new plant. There are the four main part of the flower are carls, corolla, gynosium, and androsium. Carls are the leaf-like sepals which provides a protective covering, which provides a protective covering for the developing bud. A corolla are the petals which, uh, which make the flower look very beautiful. Mostly corolla come in different colors, uh, which, which is uh, beautiful to see. Androsium. Androsium are the male reproductive organs. Gynosium. Gynosium are the female reproductive organs such as stigma, style, and ovary. Pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is known as pollination. In pollination, there are two types, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Cross-pollination, self-pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from the, uh, from the anther of a plant to the stigma of a flower, uh, the stigma of a flower on the same plant or uh, to the same plant on the same other plant on the same other to the same flower or other flower on the same plant. This is called as self pollination. In cross pollination, the the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of a of a flower on the other plant. This is called as cross pollination. Cross pollination mostly occurs through the pollinators. Example of pollinators are in insect, wind, water, and birds. When an example, in a, when an insect comes and sit, sits to, uh, sits on the sits on the flower to collect nectar, the these these seeds may get stuck in stuck in the body of the flower, um, body of the insect, and then then when it moves to the other plant, when then when it moves to the other plant to collect nectar, these 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 uh, pollen grains may lose out. Then it uh, then it get pollinated there. The next step in this is fertilization. When for the first step is pollination, and the second step step is fertilization. The union of sperm and ovum, sperm, which is called as the pollen grains, get transferred into the pistil. In, uh, or, the, uh, or the pollen tube, then it reaches the ovary. It fertilizes there. It fertilizes. Then an egg and uh, then an egg and a uh, and a fruit is uh, and a fruit is detached there. The, when the it it grows gradually. When it grows, and the ovary becomes the fruit and it's containing one seed or two uh, or many seeds. When, when after this, the, when it get the when they get fruit, it thrives. It falls from the tree, and the new and the new uh, tree is formed there. Types of forest. Uh, the four main types. There are uh, forest is a place which have uh, which have abundance of animals and trees. Uh, in the in the there are four main there are three main types of the forest. In the first type, a tropical rainforest, temperate forest, and the coniferous forest. In the tropical rainforest, these forests mostly grow where the where there is a hot and humid regions. They always experience a hot, hot climate throughout the year and always experience a high, heavy rainfall. Therefore, these trees are called as evergreen trees. These, these trees are mostly found in equatorial regions.
temperate forest. In temperate forest, these trees are uh, found in the places which are colder and drier than the uh, rainforest. Therefore, uh, these therefore these trees can al can uh, can also be called as some of these trees can also be called as uh, evergreen trees. Coniferous forest. Coniferous forests which grow in the cold cold areas. In USA, it is found in the mid of uh, mid of Northwest California and in the uh, north north side of the Pacific regions. Hereby, I can I, I, I we are in the conclusion part. The, the plants are not only useful for us. It maintains uh, it maintains uh, sustainability in both in both for humans and animals by recognizing the use of plants. By recognizing the use of plants and capability of these plants, we, we must have we must try to preserve and uh, we must try to preserve uh, for the preserve it for the future and the current generation. Thank you. All the a warm welcome to everyone present here. I'm Nikki La from grade 11, studying in the Frontline Academy Matriculation High Secondary School. I'm, giving to, I'm going to give a lecture on the topic of environmental stewardship, protecting our world for future generation. Let us see the definition of environmental stewardship. The response, use, and the protection of natural resources through conservation and sustainable practices to enhance natural resources and human well-being. The topic, importance of protection of environment, focuses on why it is crucial to take action now safeguarding the environment. It focuses on the long-term consequence of environmental degradation and natural resilience. And it ensures the need and importance of environmental stewardship. And the next is the importance of environmental management and protection. This includes the preservation of natural resources. By protecting the environment, we can ensure the essential natural resources like clean air, water, biodiversity, water, soil, etc. are available for the future generation. By protecting these resources, we can ensure a stable future and environment crisis and sustainable practices. And the main aim is to improve and maintain the environmental stewardship by protecting our natural environment. And the next is human impact on the natural environment. Environment impact refers to the natural environment by the human impact. The term in anthropogenic designates the impact of human activity. There are two common environmental impacts, resources, depletion, and uh, pollution. Population and consumption are the two forces accelerating the resources, depletion, and pollution. And the next is the importance of human activities. Deforestation is a permanent destruction of uh, indigenous forests and woodlands, including biosphere. The land is often cleared for uh, conversion into agriculture land for feeding number of growing people or to obtain cattle ranging or uh, livestock building materials. Forests and woodlands are act as a major components. By removing these components will lead to the uh, drier climate and the possibilities of human impacts. Uh, Trees also help to circulate water in the local ecosystem. This increases the water in the various ecosystem and the environmental well-being. And the next is sustainable activities occurring by human activities. Growing population, marine population like air pollution, climate change reliance on fossil fuels. And the next is climate change and its importance. The topic environmental challenges ensures it uh, focuses on various issues and problems that our planet faces. It highlights the long-term consequence of environmental degradation and the process of environmental well-being. Uh, this includes the, the one of the most environmental challenges, uh, climate change, primarily occurring by uh, human activities such as degradation and the burning of fossil fuels like vehicle gases, do this increase the global temperature and sea level rise, altered weather patterns, extreme frequency of weather events. Uh, the important uh, various systems disturbs the various ecosystem disturbs the uh, pollution environment and the including the importance of environmental challenge. And the next is types of pollution and their effects. Uh, types of pollution include various forms, including uh, soil pollution, air pollution, water pollution, etc. These are affecting the natural environment and especially human well-being. Uh, pollution in its various forms uh, affecting the ranges from the including uh, pollution and their effects. Uh, 
Sources of pollution ranges from pollution disturbs the various ecosystem and the environmental well-being. And the next is sources and effects of water pollution. Uh, these are the effects and uh, effects of water pollution like the sewage and domestic wastes, industries and affluents, uh, the insecticides, pesticides, detergents and fertilizer, silitation and thermal population, radioactive elements. Uh, these are the examples of water pollution. And the next is uh, how do pollutants affect the marine life? Water pollution is primarily occurring by release of pollutant into the environment. Uh, by the release of uh, industrial gases, uh, improper disposal of waste management, water pollution primarily occurring the marine life and in human life. When contaminated water is used for drinking and especially in recreation, common water pollutants are fertilizer, insecticides, pesticides, dilatation, and thermal population. Uh, and the next is air pollution affecting the atmospheric process. How do air pollution affecting the environment process? Air pollution is a release of pollutants into the environment by the human activities such as burning of fuels, vehicle gases, and the environmental degradation. Common air pollutants are nitrogen, sulfur, volatile organic compounds. This is a pollute in the environment by the human activities such as leads to the various diseases, respiratory diseases, and cardiovascular diseases, and other health issues in humans. And the next is soil pollution. Soil pollution is the degradation of soil pollution due to the uh, presence of uh, pollutants. Soil pollution affect the soil quality and the uh, contaminated food and crops. This leads to affect the various ecosystem through uh, food chain, through plants and animals. Uh, and the next is loss of biodiversity. Biodiversity is often termed as biologically diversity within a species, ecosystem, places, and earth as a whole. If there is loss in a species in a given area or loss in as genetic variabilities or in numbers in any area is often termed as loss of biodiversity. Biodiversity is a variety of life on earth including plants, animals, and microorganisms, etc. By protecting the environment, we can safeguard biodiversity. It affects the food chain through plants and animals. And the next is water scarcity. The increased demand of water resources combined with the pollution and the climate change impact. It affects mainly in agriculture, industries, and human activities. Water scarcity increases the over water resources. And the next is sustainable energy. By highlighting the importance of natural environment, it improves the sustainable energy which needs the needs of the present without compromising the future ability, which meets their own needs. By implementing eco-friendly practices and ecosystem, we can secure a strike balance between the environmental well-being. And the next is agriculture sustainability. Agriculture sustainability practices include uh, rotating or embracing diversity, planting crops or uh, cover perennials, managing whole system and livestock, and the Reducing the tillages and eliminating uh, biodiversity. Agriculture sustainability, including practices. And the next is waste management. Waste management is the accumulation of waste and the improper disposal of single use plastics. Uh, waste management uh, primarily causes by uh, human activities and the improper disposal. It affects the marine life and aquatic life, and especially in human life. Uh, Waste management is accumulation of waste is possesses significant environmental challenges. Uh, it, it harms the wildlife and including to contaminate the various ecosystems. Uh, and the next is role of government. Uh, by protecting the uh, environment, government take many roles, including uh, the first role is that in many nations, government regulate business activities in order to protect the natural environment. And the next is, by setting common standards, government can take a cost of pollutants out of competition. And the next is, government can also provide economic incentives and offer systems for incentives. These are the roles of governments. And the next is, International Environment Agreement, Convention Protocol and Treaties. There are several international agreement uh, to protocol and treaties. And the first is United Nations Convert, uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC. And the next is Con Kyoto Protocol, Paris Climate Change Agreement, uh, Monotral Protocol on Substance. Let us see the first uh, agreement is Kyoto Protocol. 
Part of the protocol to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change is an amendment to the International Treaty on Climate Change. It assigns the mandatory emission of greenhouse gas emission that would reduce the uh, global warming effects. Uh, the objectives of stabilization of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere in the uh, carbon content in the level is reduces and the interference with the climate change. Uh, and the next is uh, Paris Climate Change Agreement. Paris Climate Change set out a global framework. Paris Climate Change Agreement set out a framework to avoid dangerous uh, greenhouse gas emission to provide uh, incentivity to the human well-being. It is uh, affecting well below 2 point degrees Celsius, pursuing efforts to well below 1.5 degrees Celsius. It also provides strength to countries and also incentives to the environment. And the next is CSR. CSR stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. As, e as important as CSR is equally valuable for company and it is protection for the humanity also. Boost morale, boost community. Also, this employees are more connected to the world around them. And the next is education for sustainable development. By highlighting the uh, protection of natural environment, we can reduce, we can awareness and educate individuals for the sustainable practices. By educate individuals, empowers the people to take action or take decision in their daily lives. And the next is sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goals transform our lives and the uh, employment processes. They are a call to action to end poverty, inequality, and prosperity. It also regulate the it also regulate the transformation of development goals. It is a relationship between natural and technological. Uh, sustainable development goals is that you know it is critical to that no one is left behind. Sustainable development goals create awareness and educate individuals. It also helps for sustainable practices also. And the next is resources efficiency. Resources efficiency is nothing but using less living better. Is a relationship between natural raw material and technological economic material. It is also essential for sustainable economic growth. It is also called as material energy and effi energy efficiency. Example, re-manufacturing, reproducing, and recycling, etc. Resources efficiency is primarily uh, using less or living better. It is nothing but producing from the people uses benefits gained from the production or consumption. And the next is green technology. The proper use of science is not concurred to nature, but to live on it, said by Barry Commander. Green technology is three divisions, like harmony, friendly, and save. Let us see the first division of green technology, harmony. When green technology method is used, it will help us to live with our natural surroundings. And the next is friendly to use, not pollute the environment, and not destroy the natural environment. So therefore, it is mankind to handle. And the next is safe, to be used because it uses a harness device, which harness the natural environment by protecting the natural environment. Therefore, this is safe for mankind to handle. And the next is, these are the examples of renewable resources like solar energy, hydrogen, biofuels, and the wind energy, biomass energy, geothermal energy, and the others are hydropower, biogas, ocean thermal energy, and the tidal energy. These are the examples of sustainable activities. And the next is mobilizing sustainability transport for development. It is important to mobilizing the transport for development of the uh, transport. This including uh, various principles and objectives of sustainability transport. And the first is policy development and implementation. Next, financing, technological innovation. These are the principles of sustainable development. And the next is protecting our ocean. We can uh, clean the beaches and the oceans for protecting our oceans by taking the steps or uh, eating sustainable and use the uh, various ecosystem practices, etc. And the next is uh, protected areas in India. Protected areas in India includes national park, wildlife sanctuary, reserved forest, protected forest, community reserve, and forest community conservation reserve. Reforestation in India. Reforestation in India is a, a project to include planting trees in the periphery of Tiger Reserve and the uh, Delhi NCR region and the plantation of Thani. Deforestation is all uh, India. 
இது பிளேயிங் க்ரூஷியல் ரோல் வந்து நேச்சுரல் டெவலப்மெண்ட் டிஃபாரஸ்டேஷன் இஸ் தி பர்மனன்ட் டிஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் ஆஃப் வுட் லேண்ட்ஸ் பயோஸ்பியர் அண்ட் எக்ஸெட்ரா இட் இஸ் இந்த லேண்ட் இஸ் ஆஃப் அண்ட் கிளியர்ட் ஃபார் டெக் இந்த லேண்ட் இஸ் ஆஃப் அண்ட் கிளியர்ட் ஃபார் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் கன்வர்ஷன் இன் டூ ஃபீட் ட்ரோயிங் நம்பர் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் லைக் கேட்டல் ரேஞ்சிங் அப்டைனிங் ஃப்ரூட் அண்ட் தி பில்டிங் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் எக்ஸெட்ரா அண்ட் தி ஃபாரஸ்ட் அண்ட் வுட் லேண்ட்ஸ் ஆக்ட் ஆஸ் அ மேஜர் கார்பன் காம்பவுண்ட் by having these uh, carbon compounds by removing these chemical properties will lead to the drier climate trees also circulate water to the local ecosystem this increase the waters in local various ecosystems uh, and the next is biodiversity conservation indigenous knowledge and practices uh, biodiversity is a variety of life on earth including plants animals and microorganisms um, it is often termed as loss of biodiversity and the conservation biodiversity by protecting the natural environment uh, we can safeguard the biodiversity uh, this also affect the food chain through plants animals and microorganisms uh, this leads to conversion into foods and crops uh, uh, it affect the food security and economic sustainability these are the impo- important steps to the conversion biodiversity and the next is community engagement and empowerment it is a process of enabling individuals to control over their life this means acknowledging the individuals and power imbalance and relinquishing power these are the steps to community engagement and empowerment it empowers the individuals to make decision and take action in their daily lives it also empowers the environmental protection also and the next is leveraging technology for the healthy planet let us see the opportunities and philanthropists and investors leveraging technology is the main benefit to take action and main uh, maximizing achievements of every areas of your life uh, leveraging technology is uh, um, for the instruction of healthy planet opportunities for the philanthropists and investors uh, uh, the main benefits of leveraging technology is to maximizing the achievements uh, and the next is environmental activism the seven ways to get community involved uh, environmental activism is a plan or uh, um action to um, safeguard our environment uh, it is an action or a plan of a people or a group of people to protect our natural environment through destruction and pollution uh, and the next is youth engagement youth engagement is nothing but process of involving youth into responsibilities and the challenges action uh, youth engagement uh, results from uh, process of enabling them also and uh, affecting the youth also and the next is uh, this picture talks uh, concluding the uh, the three upper coins saving money for the future generation it also including uh, uh, biodiversity and the loss of biodiversity three upper coin is a growing stock business photo um this also affect the deforestation in india and reforestation in india national uh, parks and wildlife sanctuary forest reserved and forest community reserved plastic pollution also including the uh, growing stock photo plastic pollution is the accumulation of wastes into oceans landfills and waterways seaways and many ways uh, it also uh, including uh, many human lives affecting by the single use plastics uh, it also empowering the individuals to take action and doing their daily lives uh, plastic pollution is the accumulation of Uh, building block wastes into the oceans and the environments uh, it also affect the soil quality and the degradation of soil uh, and the next is sustainable uh, practices uh, by highlighting the importance of natural environment we can secure the awareness and educate individuals by educating individuals is uh, important to the individuals to take action uh, empowering individuals to taking plans and take action in their daily lives uh, and the next is uh, preservation of natural resources preservation of natural resources is uh, uh, by protecting the environment we can ensure the essential uh, natural resources like clean air water and biodiversity etc by protecting these we can ensure a stable future and economic crisis and water scarcity etc the main aim is to improve the uh, natural environment by growing these natural resources um this will helps to living the sustainable life on this planet the main aim is to 
improve the human impacts on uh, environmental agriculture. Environmental degradation refers to the alteration of environmental plan by the impact of human activities. The term anthropogenic designates the impact of human activities and the resources depletion and pollution. There are two main environmental components, population and consumption. Population and consumption affecting the resources uh, like uh, resources depletion and po population. Uh, and then um, uh, lo lo loss of biodiversity is termed as also growing stock business. Uh, it also helps for the saving money for the future generation. Uh, um, by preventing these, we can secure a stable future and also a yeah, environmental well-being. Uh, and the uh, uh, process of enabling the individuals to acknowledging means in realizing power and power imbalance. Uh, uh, by having these entities, we can secure your practices like sustainable practices. Uh, and the next is um, including practices for the sustainable development. Agriculture practices include rotating or embracing diversity, planting cover crops and perennials, and the managing whole system and livestock, pest integrated uh, livestock, uh, and the eliminating tillages, applying pest integrated management, apporting agro based forestries. Uh, uh, these are the various practices, including. Uh, uh, agriculture practices and the effects of water pollution is the uh, sewage and agriculture wasters and the um, insecticides, pesticides, fertilizer, infertilizer, silitation, population and the uh, radioactive elements such as uh, air pollution is uh, also affecting the growing stock business. Uh, uh, air pollution is the release of comp pollutants into the environment including uh, industrial wasters, improper disposal and uh, agriculture wasters. Uh, these also affecting the marine life and aquatic life. Uh, um, common air pollutants are uh, sulfur, volatile organic compound. This leads to various diseases like cardiovascular diseases, um, respiratory diseases, like, and other health issues in humans. Um, pollution disrupts various ecosystems and also disrupting the uh, contaminates uh, ecosystems. Uh, these are all the sources of uh, water pollution and effects of sustainable development. Uh, it highlights the long-term consequence of environmental degradation and emphasizes the need and uh, environmental stewardship. The process of enabling the uh, diversity is into the biological, within a species or in a number of diversities, uh, if there is loss in a number of genetic variabilities and in the number of people in a given area is often termed as a loss in the biodiversity. By highlighting the importance of environmental degradation, we can improve the uh, sustainable practices and including the uh, growing stock business. Uh, it also includes the uh, UNFCC stands for United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, it also uh, set out a Paris climate change. It assigns the mandatory emission gas into the atmospheric level in the carbon dioxide uh, will remove these elements leads to the drier climates. Uh, this also well below 2 point degree Celsius, pursuing efforts to reducing the greenhouse gas by 1.5 degree Celsius. Um, it also affects to strengthen countries for the well-being of the uh, future generation. It also uh, suspect the sustainable future and environmental crisis and water scarcity. Water scarcity is uh, affecting the environmental and the growing stock uh, business. Uh, it also affect the uh, increase the uh, over water resources and affecting the human population by having a um, growing business structure. It also includes the community engagement and empowerment by acknowledging the uh, process of enabling individuals to control over their lives. Uh, and the importance of um, protection, management and uh, um, environmental development. Uh, environmental development is a uh, transform our world into various uh, situations, they are a call to action to end poverty, inequality and prosperity. It is having a critical to that no one is left behind. It is a relationship between natural raw material and economic uh, technological material. It is also known as uh, remanufacturing, re recycling and the sustainable agriculture practices. Uh, uh, leveraging technology also including the growing business stacks. Uh, like the main benefits of leveraging technology is to uh, empowering individuals in the maximizing achievements of the every areas of your life. 
The main benefits of environmental activism is the action or plan of an, uh, peoples or a group of peoples by empowering these resources. We can ensure that um, stable future by developing the environmental food security. Uh, education, educate individuals is empowering the uh, peoples to take action and take decision in their daily lives, uh, including the growing stock business. Um, and the next is uh, um, protection of natural environment by the environment by the environmental stewardship. Stewardship is the response used in the protection of natural resources through conservation and the um, environmental well-being. It also includes the natural resilience by including the loss of biodiversity. Um, by preventing these resources, we can ensure the stable future and resources like uh, population and displacements. Uh, uh, by having these government entity, we can dedicate a uh, growing stock business. Uh, and then let us see the recap of the topic, environmental stewardship. Uh, by prevent the environmental scarcity and uh, mitigate the environment, we can have a healthier and uh, educate individuals for the sustainable development. Uh, this can prevent the crisis and by the future and uh, environmental practices. Let us work together to develop the environment uh, through the conservation and sustainable practices in the use of environmental stewardship. Uh, the importance of your stewardship is the, uh, empowering the individuals to make decisions and make actions. Uh, thank you. Greetings to, greetings to one and all present. Avanish of Grade 7 from the Frontline Academy Matriculation High Secondary School. Today, I am going to take a long lecture on the topic of the building blocks of universe. Art. Before going into the lecture, we can know what are the content. The content are what is universe, what are protons, what are neutrons, what are electrons, and the fundamental forces of these particles. Before going into the lecture, we can take a small introduction about the universe. Boys and girls, everyone, please prepare yourself for a journey into the mysteries of the universe. Today, we are going to explore some mind-boggling questions that scientists have been trying to answer for ages. What are the mysteries of the universe? The mysteries of the universe are black hole and dark matter. First, let's talk about black hole. Imagine a place in space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light can escape. That's the black hole. Scientists are still trying to understand how they form and what happens inside them. But it is a big mystery that they are trying to solve it. You can see the picture of a black hole in the PPT. So, is there any problem because of black hole? Hey, there is no problem because of black hole. Because it is too far away from our solar system. Next we have dark matter. Dark matter is like a hidden material in space that we cannot see, but we think it is there. That's called dark because it doesn't give off light or shine like a star, even though we cannot see it. Scientists are still trying to understand why exactly dark matter is made of, but it is also a big mystery that they are trying to solve it. You can see the picture of a black hole in the PPT. It is so mysterious picture in our whole world. Now we are going into the content. What is universe? Universe is a vast place. Many things from small grains of sand to huge stars and galaxies. But what are the basic pieces that fit together to create everything? Well, at the smallest level, everything in our universe is made up of tiny building blocks. They 
can join together to create different things. It is like building with a brick, where these atoms are the tiniest particles in our whole universe. Here we have a question. What is a star? A big ball of nuclear functions. So, stars are the one of the hottest thing in our universe. They come in all color and size. They are like huge balls of fiery gas. Some stars are even bigger than our whole solar system. Can you imagine it? It is too big. So, next we have galaxies. Stars join together to create a galaxy, which are like families of stars. The Milky Way is our own galaxy. It is too big. If we could travel at the speed of the light, it would take thousands of years to explore it. Can you imagine it? It is too big. So, the Milky Way, so there are more left us to explore. Scientists think there are billions of galaxies and or billions of stars. Can you imagine it? Growing number of stars. So, as we explore the universe, we may find other cool things too. There are planets, moons, comets, and asteroids in the universe. Some planets like Jupiter are super huge with wild storms. Others like Earth are just right for living through. So my little adventures. When you look up at the night sky, remember the universe is filled with wonders and enormous. There are more left us to explore. Now let's come back to Earth. I hope you had a fantastic time learning about the vastness of the universe. Next, we have atoms. Atoms are, atoms are the tiniest particles that make up everything. Atoms are like, that make up everything. Like air we breathe, water we drink, even ourselves. So, atoms are so small that even we could not see them with the most powerful microscope. They are the basic pieces that make up everything. And atoms can join together to create different substance. Next, we have molecules. Atoms are incredible because they can join together to create different things. When different atoms come together, they make Molecules. Molecules are like teams of atoms working to different things. So, for example, when hydrogen atom and oxygen atom comes together, they make water molecules, which we need for drinking and plants for growing. What is the formula of water? The formula of water is H2O. Everyone thinks it doesn't contain the ratio, but it contains the ratio. What is the ratio of water? 1 is 2 is the ratio of water. So, for example, you can take 8 hydrogen atom and 4 oxygen atom. When you are combining it, you get a molecules. And there are no more atoms left more. But when you take four hydrogen atom and four oxygen atom, when you are combining it, you get water molecules. But you, but there are two more atoms left more. What are they? Oxygen atoms. So, everything in our universe is made up of atoms and it contains a ratio. Also, they are the three main parts, protons, neutrons and electrons. So, scientists have discovered 100 types of atoms 
and they are still finding more. So each contains its own unique property, like shape, size, mass, length, and its behavior. So it is, it is. This is what makes everything in our universe so diverse and interesting. Scientists have discovered hundred types of, hundred and eighteen types of molecules, and. Some of the molecules are made up of human made and some of the molecules are made up of natural. Now we are going even deeper and going to see about what is a proton. Protons are the one of the three main parts that make up an atom. They have a positive charge which means they have a plus sign in an atom. So they have some of the key points found are positively charged particles found in the atom's nucleus and subatomic and so one of the important thing about proton is that they help def how define at what type of atom we have each type of atoms has its species number of proton for example hydrogen atom have one proton and oxygen atom have eight protons and carbon atom have just six protons. So, so a number of a proton in an atom is like its identity card. They define how atoms each other and help us behavior and what type of atom we have. So. It is like having a different number of puzzle pieces to make up in a unique picture. Where do we find these protons? A special place called nucleus. Think the nucleus is the heart and protons are just like superheroes protecting it. So they are the basic pieces that make up an atom, they have a positive charge. So, they stick with other particles called neutrons, which have no charge. Protons and neutrons are like best friends, always hanging out of atom and help to hold the nucleus together. Why are protons so important? They play in a big role in holding an atom's nucleus together. What is an a neutron? Neutrons are one of the three main parts that in an atom. So, they are like neutral bodies because they have no charge. They live in the center of an atom in a special place called nucleus. So these are also like superheroes, like protons, and they protect the nucleus of an atom. So they stick to other particles called protons. Protons and neutrons have strong friendship between them and help them together. So some of the key points I found are. Atoms, atomic nucleus. So, one of the important thing about neutron is that they help to define in making atoms stable. So, a number of an a neutron in an atom can vary even to the same type of atom. So, having the right number of neutron in an atom makes the nucleus stable and which can make it unstable. In such case, an atom may or gain particles to find a balanced diet and be stable. This process is called radioactivity decay. So, they call protons, neutrons also affect some part of atoms like mass. They contribute to overall mass along with protons. 
So now we are going to see about again the radioactivity decay. So you can see the pictures. So this is an a neutron and it is varying into the proton and it is releasing. Important. They play in a big role in making stable, atom stable and determining their weight. So now we are going to see about electrons. What is an electron? Electrons are the one of the three main parts in an atom. They are like buzzy bees of an atom. Always buzzing around. They are the energetic particles that revolves around an atom. So some of the key points are negatively charged particles located in the shells that surrounds an atom. Nucleus equal to the number of protons in an atom, neutral atom. So, they are like buzzy bees of an atom, always buzzing around these particles and protecting the protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons protect the nucleus of an atom, but electrons protect the, the, these particles such as protons and neutrons. So, electrons are like Unlike protons and neutrons, which live in the center of an atom, electrons are just like to dance around the nucleus. So they can they are dancing around the nucleus and makes they acts like a storage tanks. So they are like social butterflies because they have no charge. They can move to from atom to one other atom. So, if they can move, why are they moving? So, because of the interaction between other atoms, they are moving. So, creating different reactions and connections between different substances is the. These particles they cannot be interact with each other. So. They are the tiny orbits that revolves around an atom. It is like a grand dance party where the electrons are the tiny energetic guests that around an atom. So they are the tiny orbits that brings atoms to life. Without these electrons, they cannot be live in, and without these particles, they cannot be interacted. Why are electrons so important? Electrons are super important because they determine how atoms interact with each other and form bonds. So, they also play a big role in creating electricity. This is not end. Scientists have given even discovered that Protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles called quas. Quas are the tiniest entities in our nature thing. So they help us to govern these nature. So they come in six different flavors. So first one is up, down, charm. Strange, bottom, and top. So they come in these flavors, and protons are made up of protons are made up of one down square and two up square. And where the neutrons consist, one up square and two. So they are the basic pieces that make up everything we see. Now, now let's take an approximately incredible diversity of matter that arises just particles. So, when we combine different types of particles together, we get a long, wide variety of particles, each with its own unique properties.
But what holds these particles together? Well, there are four fundamental forces in our universe. First one is gravity. It is the responsible for holdation of our earth. It requires in our earth the electromagnetism is a force getting interactions between the charged particles. Next we have strong nuclear force. So the short form of the strong, strong nuclear force is strong force. It is responsible for the whole together. The next one is weak force. The full form of the weak force is weak nuclear force. So it is the responsible radioactivity decay such as we can see in the top content of what is on. So now we are going to see even deeper. Gravity is a force that holds us to the earth and keeps the planet in the orbit. So gravity is weak compared to forces. So there are no strong forces. It is a force that acquires in round shape. Man it contains a certain types of gravity, but our earth is a gravity. It there is a, if the gravity doesn't have we will be floating anywhere. So now we can drink the water. Astronauts use us a water bottle a super machine that makes a uh, water 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 bubbles and use the, the at they will eat like the food so without these gravities we cannot do any so electromagnetism is a force that is responsible for interaction such as protons and electrons. So, you think that it is responsible for the charged particles? Charged particles. So, but you can take positive charge and positive charge. It doesn't get interacted. But when you take negative charge and positive charge, it get interacted. So, for example, it acts like a magnet. So, you can take a Magnet, two magnets, and you are keeping the north pole and north pole. You are going it, you are pushing it to the near, and it is. But you can take south pole and north pole it, with each other. It is working like that. So it works like a magnet. It interact with each other. So next we have strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force is a force that holds the atoms nucleus together. So without these strong nuclear force, the atom will be anywhere and they would fall assembly effort. So now you can think it, if there is no strong nuclear force and the atom the protons are there and the electrons are there and the neutrons are there and the nucleus of an atom will be anywhere. So because of these particles it has coordination between. So next is a weak nuclear force. Weak nuclear force is responsible for the radioactivity decay. So for example you can take these radioactivity decay. So, it the new strong nuclear force acts like nuclear force. It is responsible for the radioactivity decay. It pushes each other. So, it will be not interacted with, uh, with each other and for each other. It get removes the at for example, if an atom may have too many neutrons, the atom will throw some of A. 
it is so fast universe so strong so now we came to the conclusion so i hope you had a fantastic time learning about these things so this is the force we have seen about the atoms so this is an atom so for example we have seen about history of the universe and we have seen about such particles tiniest particles and we have seen about many parts of these particles so for example you can take atoms they are the tiniest particles and so they and we i didn't told that it doesn't get interacted and cutted with each other but it cut cut it with each so we have seen about protons neutrons and electrons and the fundamental forces and the quarks thank you good evening and dear let me introduce myself to you my name is sp ardhanesh from grade 11 Today I am going to speak, take a lecture on the topic called you, Threads of Tradition. What is thread? Thread is a stag or strand which is the combinations of fibers like cotton, wool, jute and synthetic fibers etc. Next, introduction to the Indian textile traditions. Indian textile tradition industries have evolved over centuries. Uh, evolved over centuries. They, have, they have encompassed through the production, processing and trades of the tradition industry productions. It is a, it is the one of the oldest industry which is deeply rooted in the Indian cultures and traditions. In uh, India, uh, India is known for its diverse range of fabrics like cotton, wool, jute, synthetic fibers, etc. India is the largest producer and leading exporters of the textile traditions in India. India's uh, sustainable practice such as organic farming and eco-friendly dyeing are adapted and su suitable for in this method. Next, Indian textile clusters and the industrial hub in India are. Uh, such as Surat, Ahmedabad, Tirupur, contributing more significant in the industrial sectors. Next, evolution of Indian textile tradition. Indian textile tradition has evolved over centuries, which is deeply rooted in the Indian cultures, traditions, and Indian traditions. Ancient civilization like Indus Valley civilization laid the importance in the uh, textile traditions in India. Mughal era. Mughal era is introducing new weaving techniques, designs, and fabrics like Brachiado, Mussolini, etc. Uh, geographical region have their own textile traditions like Banara silk saris, Kanjuguram saris. Next, textile museums and exhibitions shows the evolution and the beauty of the Indian textile traditions. Next, textile te te uh, traditional textile pr processing. Hand looming. Hand looming is a prominent technique where woolen has woolen manually by, uh, by hand looming machines. Block painting. Block painting is a stable design onto fabrics is commonly used in this more more significant designs to to create a integrated and detailed designs tie dyeing tie dyeing is a technique where applying uh, applying more creativity uh, creative adding adding dyes and applying dyes to create unique and integrated patterns bandhagini technique bandhagini technique is a tie dyeing technique where small knots are used to create unique and integrated fabric designs chik kalamhari kalamhari is a hand painting or block painting onto fabrics zardosi Zardosi is a technique where involving on the gold and silver thread embroidery works are commonly used in this methods. Chicken curry. Chicken curry is a delicate white and white uh, designs onto fabrics using threads for an, uh, uh, for an uh, creative embellishment. Next, significance of handcrafted textiles in Indian culture. Handcrafted textiles hold immense, immense cultural significance in the traditions. They representing the, they representing the traditions and rituals of the country. They embodied the country's rich history, diversity, and the cultural and, and the craftsmanship. They are, most of the uh, designs are, are considered as the symbols of prestige, status, and identity of the country. They are, uh, the museums are showcasing, the, uh, showcasing and preserving the old, and old textile traditions in Indian cultures. Next, this is an example of an handcrafted textiles in Indian cultures. Next, the roles of Indian, te Indian textiles in Indian festivals and ceremonies. This is an example of an Indian textile, uh, roles of Indian, te Indian textiles in Indian festivals. Indian textile industries, uh, Indian textiles plays an, uh, plays an important role in the uh, Indian festival and the ceremonies, adding a vibrant and simulation touch to the, uh, touch to the uh, designs and fabrics. Fabrics like silks, silks like uh, Brachiado and Mussolini, 
are favor for the luxurious feel they are used to decorate homes event venues festivals to create a uh, create a festival atmosphere in uh, in wedding elaborate bridal sarees outfit symbolization to the beauty and marital bliss they are used to create a traditional headdress like turban representing their dignity and respect next famous indian textile clusters and centers famous indian textile clusters and centers are significant for place to place they are varnasi varnasi is famous for the manaras silk sarees and kanjipuram sarees jaipur jaipur is known for their known for their block painting uh, kanjipuram kanjipuram is known for their uh, silk sarees with integrated designs Je, uh, ahmedabad ahmedabad is known for their uh, hand looming fabrics kolkata kolkata is famous for their hand looming fabrics buj buj is recognized for their uh, bandaini tie dye fabrics uh, coimbatore coimbatore is known for their coimbatore is known for their uh, cotton production in india and it's offer more uh, cotton production in india uh, tirupur tirupur is known for their uh, knitwear manufacturing sectors in india they are the knitwax manuf- uh, they are uh, they are the knitwax manufacturing industry of the india south india uh, uh, salem salem is also known for their uh, cotton productions and it's offer more softness and coolness ajmer ajmer is the ajmer is known for the rajasthani rajasthani textile wares and it's famous in rajasthan gujarat uh gujarat chanderi Chand- Ch- chanderi is known for the lightweight hand looming fabrics and it's often uh, more uh, gave more uh, warmthness and colors warmthness and colors next the legacy of indian uh, indian uh, textile artisan indian textile artisan has passed down through genera- through knowledge and techniques through generations they preserving the traditional techniques and craft uh, rich uh, and craftsmanship the, the indian legacy of the legacy of indian textiles includes a wide range of techniques uh, techniques such as embroidery block painting weaving and more they are um, uh, they are rich um, uh, they are embody the rich cultural heritage biodiversity and more next weaving weft is no is an old english word it's often it means the woven uh, the way of warping and filling of filling threads interlacted with each other is uh, known as weaving uh, weaving the we- weaving can be done uh, on plain or can be done on a decorative designs and artisan designs next exploring the diversity of indian textile cluster cultures silks silks like uh, uh, banaras silk sarees kanjipuram sarees tuje are known for their natural textures and luxurious feels cotton cotton is like pushmania um, uh, provides more softness and coolness for the natural tex- textures wool wool like wool like uh, uh, wool provides insulating fibers and it provides Uh, so warmthness and colors to the natural textiles linen 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 lay is uh, be, no best for its natural textures and uh, with its integrated uh, designs uh, jute jute is a uh, eco friendly uh, eco friendly dyeing and it's uh, and it's often used to create home decorating furniture and electronics maheshwari fabrics maheshwari fabrics are combinations of silks cotton wool jute etc they are representing the country's rich biodiversity and cultures next the traditional uh, traditional indian fabrics silks cotton wool beyond and beyond uh, silk silk is a luxurious fabrics it's often uh, uh, often used for its marriage uh, marriage occasional and it's used for the indian traditional attires wool wool is an insulating fibers and it's oftenly used in a winter chill climate and often used to, uh, uh, it's uh, used us to protect from in the uh, winter chill uh, cotton cotton is a uh, is a wa- warmthless can used to for, used to provide warmth color color and uh, natural textures kanjivaram sari kanjivaram is held from tamil nadu and it's famous for their integrated detailed designs with heavily border and heavily colored embellishment pushmania pushmania is a lightweight hand looming fabrics and it's offer for their breathability coolness and nature textile brocade brocade is all uh, used in marriage festival occasional and it's a it's a old traditional musolini traditionals in india they have passed down over generations through indian cultures 
this is an example of an uh, Indian textile substance. Poly polyesters, pure cottons, non woven chiffon fabrics, and silks. The Indian embroidery techniques integrated artisans on fabrics. Chicken, uh, Zardoshi. Zardoshi is a technique involved from uh, introduced in Persia, later it was introducing in uh, India. They, pro, uh, they involving in the silver and the cotton threads are used to, uh, used to create embroidery designs onto fabrics. Chicken curry. Chicken curry is originated from Lucknow and it's offered for their, and it's offered for their softness, coolness color. Uh, these are uh, involving in a white and white, delicate white and white embroidery, uh, em embroidery designs onto fabrics. Mirror work. Mirror work is also known as Shishan embroidery and it's, uh, and it's uh, uh, all involving in the attachment of small mirrors. They, they used to create a reflective emblazement. They sh uh, India, uh, in uh, Indian embroidery techniques uh, shows the artisan prowess and the cultural diversity of the countries and the charm to our Indian fabrics. Charm to our Indian fabrics. The art of block painting in, in Indian textiles. Art paint, uh, block painting is the traditional textile, traditional te uh, technique used in the Indian textile clusters. They, the labor requires, uh, the labor requires skills and precision for the integrated work. The natural dyes are commonly used in this method. A block painting can be done on cotton, wool, uh, jute, fibers, etc. The, the techniques are uh, they evolved over centuries. They are, uh, they are rooted in the Indian cultures and textile industries. Uh, the fabrics are usually pre-washed or treated before using. These fabrics are used to create saris, shirts, dupattas, and more. This, uh, each of the pieces are unique and handmade. The, it creates a vibrant and unique designs onto fabrics. Next, tie-dyeing and bandai, tie bandaini vibrant textile designs. Tie-dyeing. Tie-dyeing involves in a twist and twigs of fabrics and applying dyes to create integrated and unique designs onto fabrics. Bandaini. Bandaini is a, te uh, is a technique, tie dyeing techniques involving in the to create uh, small knots are used to create small knots are tied and applying dyes before uh, after uh, threading. Kalamhari. Kalamhari is a hand painting or block painting. It is used to create integrated and detailed designs onto fabrics. They create an, they offer an endless possibilities for creating more and integrated and unique designs, colors, and motifs. It is used in saris, shirts, dupattas, turbans, adding a vibrant outfit to the simulation. Outfit, outfit. Textile, te, uh, traditional textile patterns, motifs in Indian uh, designs. Palse. Palse is a tiered up shaped motifs. It's commonly used in Indian traditional, traditional, uh, Indian traditional, geographical uh, motifs. Uh, symmetrical and repetition shapes like square, rectangle, triangle. They uh, the symbol the symbolization that balance and uh, balance and border to the Indian cultures. Peacock. Peacock is a natural bird uh, inspired by the natural uh, in, in, nat national in the Indian bird, and they representing the spirituality, grace, and the beauty of the Indian textiles. Block painting. Block painting is uh, is used by cloud blocks are used to uh, cloud blocks and they dip it onto fabrics and applying into fabric, fi fabrics. The, it reflects the country's rich uh, uh, cultural heritage and uh, rich craftsmanship. Traditional, in, in the traditional uh, textile te uh, techniques, chicken curry and zardoshi. Zardoshi is a, is a, delay, is a technique involved, uh, introduced in by Persia. It was later introduced in India. Uh, they involving in uh, silver and thread works, silver and gold thread works, and uh, small stones uh, stones, beads, sequins are used to create more embroidery designs with integrated designs. Chicken curry. Chicken curry is originated from Lucknow and it's offered for their featuring stitching like shadow works, French knot and stream stitch. Uh, stream stitch. Chicken curry is uh, used in garments like sharis, shirts, uh, shirt shoots and kurtis. Next. This is an example of a chicken curry and zardoshi. The white color embroidery is uh, Chicken, uh, chicken curry, the golden, uh, golden silver embroidery works are Zardosi. Next, the influence of nature in Indian textile inspirations. The, the inspiration are uh, drawn from the Indian, uh, Indian uh, natures and textiles. 
like elements like elements like animals animals like yeah, elephant peacock birds and animals are shows the rich biodiversity of the country and the human the connection between the humans and the animals uh, sun and moon motive sun and moon motive are shown for the light color and the celestial energy of the countries natural rays natural rays are commonly derived from the plants animals and minerals they are eco friendly and commonly used in this used to, they are eco friendly and commonly used they showcase the connection between the human and the uh, environmental next this is an example of a nature influence in the textiles the the, the painting in, uh, the dyes used in this uh, textiles are e natural dyes derived from the plants animals and minerals next indigenous fibers and sustainable practice textile practices the example of indigenous indigenous fibers includes cotton wool jute and bamboo the uh, indigenous fibers are biodegradable and uh, lower carbon footprints comparing to the synthetic fibers indigenous fibers require less water and energy during the con conception and uh, uh, productions of the uh, fabrics uh, comparing to the synthetic fabrics this offers uh, sustainable practice uh, uh, pro practices by by pro promoting uh, waste by the textile productions are recycling and uh, upcycling are adapted in this method contributing more significant in the industrial field next the revival of hand looming industries in india the, pro the hand looming industries are is the refers as the process of uh, woven fabric manually using traditional fab uh, traditional loom loomings using indigenous techniques the revival of hand looming industries promoting sustainable and ethical practice on the textile uh, of the indian textiles uh, indian productions they embody the rich cultural diversity and the rich, uh, indian cra rich craftsmanship of the indian artisans artisan with the exploring the variant weaving traditions in india the india is known uh, renowned for the renowned for rich weaving tech, rich weaving traditions showcasing the diverse range of river techniques and styles they are including a various uh, type of designs uh, like uh, techniques like hand, hand, hand looming and power looming they are they are used to various fabrics like silk weaving cotton looming cotton weaving fibers weaving and synthetic fibers weaving they are more they are more techniques in this method they are pit looming power looming shuttle looming and black strap looming next traditional garments for men's kurtas dhotis and shewanis kurtis kurta is a long knee length bottom often paired with pyjama bottoms and jeans they are used in a indian uh, used in indian festivals and indian attires traditional attires dhotis dhotis is a long uh, triangular rectangular rectangular cotton uh, draped around the waist and it's often used in a I, uh, typically worn by the south indian peoples uh, shewani shewani is a knee length bottom often paired with jeans uh, they are of, uh, they with uh, integrated with the integrated with the designs and heavily embroidery uh, designs heavily embroidery designs they are used in uh, uh, marriage and festival occasions they are uh, kurtas kurtis dhotis and shewani are available in wide range of colors and colors colors patterns and motifs next this is an this is an example of a silk cotton wool plasters viscous viscous linen textile museums and instituting preserving indian heritage in uh, te uh, textile museums and institute plays a vital role in the preserving of indian rich heritage Uh, heritage for future generations these museums collect preserves and showcases the wide range of textiles including the traditional textile garments fabrics and accessories next this is an example of an uh, museums where 680 uh, uh, textiles are preserved and showcasing in uh, for future generations this is an example of a power looming where thread were used to manually or throwing machines takes the role of indian textiles in 
interior designs. The India, uh, uh, roles of interior text, Indian textiles in interior designs uh, plays a crucial role to adding a warmth, colors, and a texture to the interior spaces. They, uh, it provides an uh, opportunity to the uh, showcasing skilled craftsmanship and the rich, bio, uh, rich, uh, rich uh, traditional uh, techniques to the Indian cultures. Next. This is an example of the textile roles of Indian texture in integrated designs. Fashion designing inspiration by the Indian, tex uh, Indian textiles. Most of the, most of the uh, textile de designs are drawn from the Indian, uh, Indian traditional designs. Uh, they, are, they may use block painting, block painting techniques to create unique and uh, differentiated patterns in the, in, the, in the fashion technologies. Saris, Saris, lehengas, and kurtis are popularly borrowed from the Indian art trades, Indian fashions. This is an example of an Indian, uh, fa Indian fabrics often uh, is uh, the inspiration, drawn inspiration from the Indian, uh, Indian traditions. Next, the traditional, traditional textile markets and shopping destinies in India. Uh, one of the popular destinies is Chanderi Chowan in Delhi, where you can find a wide range of a uh, uh, wide range of textiles, including cotton, the cotton and uh, cotton, banana silk saris, and uh, embroidery fabrics. Vishwanath, Varnasi Vishwanath Gal. Varnasi Vishwanath Gal is renowned for the banana silk saris with integrated and detailed patterns and motifs. Chennai Georgetown. Chennai Georgetown is where you can find a wide range of fabrics. Fabrics, they are useful for this, uh, detailed designs where you can find uh, more integrated fabrics like Kanjivaram silk saris and uh, motifs. Surat in Gujarat. Surat in Gujarat, where you can find more detailed designs fabrics. It's offered for their colors, uh, color, warmth, and uh, natural textures. Mumbai market. Mumbai market is known for their cotton production in India. It is the Manchester of India, where you can find more and more cotton saris and more. Koyamathur Opanakar Street. Koyamathur Opanakar Street is best for its cotton production, and it's offer more cotton silk saris and other home furniture textile. Next, this is an example of, example of innovations of innovation meets Innovation meets traditional industries. Innovation in Indian technology, traditional meat technology. Traditional meat technology, traditional combines with the technology of new designs and fabric. Hand looming weaving is enhanced with the digital tools that offer more detailed designs and fabrics. 3D printing. 3D printing offers more integrated detailed design onto fabrics. They used to create more unique and vibrant designs on patterns. Nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is used to, used to adding functional properties like water resistance, UV protection. They are uh, onto the fabrics. A computer aided design. CAD. CAD offers to create detailed and integrated uh, designs onto fabrics. Uh, digital printing. Digital printing allows us to, uh, allow us to create uh, more uh, de uh, detailed and fast Precision, uh, precision designs onto fabrics. Uh, recycling, recycling are adapt, recycling and upcycling are adapted in this method. They are gaining more importance in the cultural significance in the craftsmanship. Laser cutting, laser cutting pro pro provides accurate and precision cutting on the fabrics. Artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, AI, assist in the identification and recognition of the fabrics, patterns, designs and motifs. Biodegradable. Biodegradable and eco-friendly eco -friendly fabrics are used in this method. They provide less pollution to our, pollution to our nature and the earth surface. Conclusion. The Indian textile industry is a treasure trovery of the creativity, craftsmanship and the cultural heritage. Thank you, for, thank you for one and all. Thank you for your kind attention. My convenience. Yeah, warm welcome to one and all present here. Tlane Academy, Metric, High Secondary School, Tirupur. 
I am here to take a lecture about the micro, small and medium entrepreneur and self-help yeah, groups. So ladies and gentlemen who are all present here, I want your kind attention for this lecture. So let's start our session. In this lecture, we are going to see what is mean by the micro, small and medium enterprises, the role and significance of micro, small and medium enterprises, the overview of the concept of self-help groups and its objectives, futures and functions. Let's start our session. MSME. MSME stands for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. It's emerged vibrantly in the Indian economy and seems to be complementary to the large scale industries and contributing in a good percentage of Indian economy and social economic development. Entrepreneurship is the key for economic development of any country by empowering entrepreneurs. I mean, micro industries include the activities such as clay pot making, fruits and vegetable vendors, uh, repair shops, cottage industries, hand looms, handicraft work, etc. According to the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, the Act 2006, the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises has classified into two classes, Manufacturing Enterprises and Service Enterprises. Now we are going to see what is mean by Manufacturing Enterprises. The Manufacturing Enterprises refers to the enterprises engaged in manufacturing or production of goods pertaining to any Industries Act 1951. It is defined in the terms of investment of plant and machineries. The manufacturing enterprises engaged in providing or rendering of services. Example for manufacturing enterprises are automotive companies, uh, shoemakers, bakeries, tailors, as all they create products rather than providing of services. Now we are going to see what is mean by service enterprises. The service enterprises is it, does, it doesn't an organization, it does, it does not uh, just engage volunteers, but operates with a culture of volunteerism. It fundamentally leverages volunteers on their skills to accomplish their social missions. The main, the main motto of the service enterprises is to strengthen the organization strategically and effectively. The volunteers should address the community needs. Example for service enterprises are including uh, including in transport, food service distribution, retail and price, rather than providing of services. Next, we are going to see what is mean by role and significance of MSME. MSME aid workers to uh, aid workers and artisans and provide more employment opportunities to the people in India. MSME provide credit limit of fundamentally supporting of two banks. MSME is known to provide reasonable assistance for improving access to the domestic as well as export markets. There are totally nine role and significance of MSMEs. They, those are employment potential, low cost protection, low investment, quick decision making, supplementary role, establishment of the socialistic pattern of society, balanced regional development, promotion of self-employment and self-reliance spirit, higher contribution to the manufacturing and export. Now we are going to see what is mean by employment potential. MSME sector produces more employment opportunities to the people in Indian economy. It can be able to provide employment opportunities to the people who are skilled, unskilled and semi-skilled. They can provide an employment in various sectors. The business, these are more than business concerns. Next we are going to see what is mean by low cost protection. The MSME sector need not to be had huge cap capital amount to start the unit. It can appoint cheap labors to start the unit. The units are more cost efficient than large scale units. Next, we are going to see what is mean by low investment. It does not require a huge capital and uh, skilled workers to uh, run the management in day by day basis. These industries facilitate the growth of self employed professionals and employees in some small towns and villages. Next, we are going to see what is mean by quick decision making. Success, successful people make their decisions quickly and firmly. Unsuccessful people make their decisions slowly and change them often, said by Napoleon Hill. Like that, it does, uh, MSME sector does not hire the professional managers to run the management on day by day basis. Uh, sometimes the owner himself take the organizations and uh, make timely decisions become easy and effective. Next, we are going to see what this means by supplementary role. The MSME supply goods and services to large scale industries. 
it is the backbone of indian indian economy in export and import india has more than 9 crore msmes accounting for nearly 40 percentage of exports from india next we are going to see what is mean by establishment of the socialistic pattern of society it contributes the establishment of the socialistic pattern of society it helps to achieve equitable distribution and wealth and it provide more employment opportunities than all the industries next we are going to see what is mean by balanced regional development by encouraging means msmes in industrially backward areas and of india it provide employment opportunities to the people who are economically backward and fighting for the uh, financial options it provide employment to to those people next promotion of self employment and self reliance spirit msmes helps to de- helps to helps in a great deal in with in developing a class of entrepreneurs it contributing contributes an increase in per capita income or economic development next higher contribution to manufacturing and export the man, msme sector produ- had 45 percentage of manufacturing output from the country and 40 percentage of total manufacturing output from the indian economy next contribution of msmes in indian economy msme had a crucial contribution in india's gdp it has it has 8 percentage of gdp uh, and has 45 percentage of total manufacturing output from the country and 40 percentage of manufacturing output from the country it has more than 6000 products and the msme sector has totally 36 million units in the in, in, in indian country next we are going to see what is uh, msme sector in tamil nadu tamil nadu is the land of opportunities for the micro small and medium enterprises tamil nadu ranks first among the states in terms of number of factories and industrial workers it in gross domestic product is estimated as 320.320.27 billion dollar in 2022 to 23 tamil nadu is mainly concentrate in, in the products which are chemical factories uh, Uh, automobiles food processing textiles electronic products civil products and leather industries the manufacturing sector is the major contribution to the state's gdp according for over 40 percentage of total manufacturing output next we are going to see the institutional source of finance for msmes there are totally five institutional source of finance for micro small and medium enterprises those are commercial banks regional rural banks cooperative banks micro finance institution non banking finance institution first we are going to see what this mean by commercial banks commercial banks are the government aided banks in, com- in the commercial banks there are two types public sector banks and private sector banks public sector banks public sector banks undertaking are major of government owned banks in india shares of these government owned banks listen on stock exchanges it has more than 50 percentage of stock stock ma stock added to the government to from the public sector banks next we are going to see the private sector banks private sector banks of financial bodies owned and operated by private shareholders are under profit driven currently there are 21 private sector banks in india it can be run with the trusted companies in big big companies in india example for private sector banks are icici bank karur vaisya bank hdfc bank Hack, axis bank and etc next we are going to see the regional rural banks regional rural banks in india are scheduled commercial banks the conduct banking activities in rural areas at the state level the regional rural banks in various uh, states and across the country it has the main role in india's financial source of um, the micro small and medium enterprises the cooperative banks cooperative bank is a financial institution that is owned and controlled by its members in the organization cooperative banks are founded and collecting funds through shares accepting deposit and guarantee loans it can collect that collect the monies from the people who are uh, from the wealthy people and they can give this uh, give this money to to economically challenged people who want loans and i uh, mean and other things next micro finance institution a micro finance institution is a 
provider of credit, a micro finance institution is focused on providing low income individuals and group with banking services. Next, non-banking finance institutions. Non-banking finance institutions includes insurance firms, venture capitalism, currency exchanges, some people's micro loan, micro loan organization and pawn shops. This non-banking finance institution provides services that not necessarily suited to banks. Next, micro unit development refinance agency, Mudra Bank. The government had launched the Mudra Bank with a capital amount of 20,000 crores and the guarantee cops of 3,000 crores. Mudra Bank Finance Institution are founded by Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana. Mudra has formed as wholly owned supplementary of small industries, Development Bank of India, with 100% capital being contributing by it. Next, we are going to see what is mean by self-help groups. The self-help group is a small and voluntary association form, self and group, formed by the association formed by a small people with the, in the region. It is formed only in group where there are uh, maybe 10 to 20 members. There are uh, objectives of self-help groups, futures of self-help groups, and functions of self-help groups. First, we are going to see what the objectives of self-help groups. To indicate the savings and banking habit among the members, focusing on empowerment of the self-help groups, saving people from the clutches of money lenders, building capacity of women, as enables them to participate in generating activities. It is mainly formal to uh, help the people who are economically backward and creating the habit of saving in my mind of people who are economically backward. Promoting entrepreneurship skills among the women. The women also have the equal rights for women in a, in a micro uh, industrial sectors. Creating awareness about the importance of credit circles or revolving credit and, and the payment of circles. Evaluating economic standard of the members' families. The main objective of the self-care groups is to provide and help the people who are economically backward and struggling for the financial support from the other peoples. Next, we are going to see the futures of self-care groups. The motto of self-care groups is save first and credit later. The peoples in the self-care groups help the people who are need help without any expectation from them. Self-care group is homogeneous in terms of economic status. The ideal size of the self-help groups ranges between 10 to 20 members. It can formed with formed with only by men's or only with women's. The group need not to be registered. The groups are non-political volunteer association and followed a democratic culture. Each group has, each group should have one members from single family. Self-help groups hold weekly meetings due mostly during non-working hours, and when they are free, they they uh, sit group and in, discuss the wa next, what we do at next day and uh, how can we all the people who are economically backward. Next, we are going to see the functions of self-help groups. Developing and en enhancing the decision-making capacity of members, increasing general awareness of literacy among members, equipping the poor with ba basic skills for understanding uh, monetary transactions, Maintaining books and registers to ensure proper accounts. Providing necessary training in the chosen field to, to, to success in their career and have proper salary to maintain their families and struggled situations. Submitting the account of annual audit by a qualified auditor. By a qualified auditor, we want to submit the correct auditing uh, equipment in correct time deciding the loan amount transaction to the group members. The loan amount was already loan amount was already prepared while the people who are joining in the self-help groups. The self-help groups in Indian country, the Indian boards of some 12 million self-help groups 
of uh, which 88 percentage are all are women members ones these groups usually consist of 20 to 25 members mostly in resident of villages who are who are economically backward and need in financial support with from others the tamil nadu corporation of development of women limited was founded in 1983 in tamil nadu in the self help groups in tamil nadu are there are totally 29 self districts have the self help groups the first 10 districts are kanjipuram tiruvallur vellur tiruvannamalai dharmapuri krishnagiri selam namakkal erode koyambattur these are the self help groups are most number of self help groups and there are totally 29 self help groups i am here to conclude with the point uh, in this lecture we have we seen the what is mean by self help groups the role and significance of the micro small and medium enterprises the uh, and what is mean by micro small and medium enterprises the role and signia the overview of the concept of self help groups the objectives of self help groups the futures of self help groups and the functions of self help groups financial support of financial support of source from the micro small and medium enterprises so thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity thank you good morning everyone let me introduce myself to you my name is batnavan i am from grade 11 studying in frontline academy today i am going to take a lecture on the topic called artistic marveling at the splendors of indian traditional art introduction indian traditional art reflects the country's rich cultural history and shows a wide range of artistic technique style and theme and it has various art forms such as painting sculpture textiles pottery and jewelry each within its distinct religion and these art forms are deeply rooted with spirituality and mythology and religious symbolism and often says about gods and goddesses significance and influence of indian traditional art indian traditional art is celebrated during festivals and cultural events which helps to develop the community bonds and national identity and it plays a significant role in preserving and promoting of indian architecture uh, we can see it in temples palaces and monuments and these artworks are inspired and influenced by indian artists worldwide contributing to the global artistic diversity evolution of indian traditional art evolution of indian traditional art is classified into four types they are ancient origin cultural influence cross culture encounters modernization in indian traditional art and contemporary exploration ancient origin ancient origin refers to tracing the roots of indian traditional art cultural influence cultural influence refers to the evolution of indian traditional art through culture cross culture encounters modernization in indian traditional art which means realism to fusion contemporary exploration contemporary exploration means blending of tradition and modernity in indian traditional art religional diversity in indian traditional art indian traditional art is a reflection of country's rich cultural history and each religion shows its unique art form such as madhubani paintings tanjore art and rajasthan miniature painting role of religion and mythology in indian traditional art indian traditional art takes inspiration from mythological texts like vedas ramayana and mahabharatam mythological themes are depicted in painting sculpture and architecture and cultural dances takes inspiration from uh, mythological uh, mythological themes through movements expression and dialogues impact of colonialism in indian traditional art impact of colonialism in indian traditional art are given below they are loss of support and so, loss of support and encouragement in indian traditional art and addition and removal of artworks done by colonial power and centralization of art was introduced and western art was introduced and forced by colonial power and new revolutionary artists were formed at this time period they are raja ravi verma jemini roy and nandalal bose raja ravi verma 
Raja Ravi Verma is an Indian artist who lived in 20th century and his work helped to develop the oil painting in Indian traditional art. And Gemini Rai. Gemini Rai is an Indian artist who lived in 90th century and his work helped to develop the, uh, develop the traditional art. And uh, Nandalal Bose. Nandalal Bose is an Indian artist who lived in 90th century and his work helped to develop the rural life. And this picture represents the rural life of a girl. Revival and Preservation of Indian Traditional Art Based on revival and preservation, they are classified into three types. They are documentation, training programs and exhibition. Even government plays a crucial role in this part by transferring artwork to the future generation. This, is, uh, this picture represents the importance of preserving of a cultural heritage. Techniques and materials used in Indian traditional art. Based on techniques and materials, they are classified into three parts. They are sculpture, painting, and textile art. Sculpture. Sculpture uses te technique and materials such as stone, metal carving, clay modeling, and wood carving. Painting. Painting uses natural pigments such as minerals and vegetable dyes on the surfaces such as cloth, paper, and wood. Textile art. Textile art uses techniques such as weaving, embroidery, and block printing by using uh, materials such as silk, cotton, and wool. Sculptures in Indian traditional art. Sculptures in Indian traditional art utilizes materials such as stone, metal, clay, wood, and etc. And this uh, sculptures in Indian traditional art utilizes material uh, techniques such as carving, casting, and modeling. And sculptures in Indian traditional art are widely seen in temples and spiritual figures. Indian traditional art form in South India. South India has a rich and diverse art form and it is known for its vibrant traditional heritage. And South India has South India has different types of disciplines such as dance, music, sculpture, craft and more. And some examples of traditional art form in South India are Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, Carnatic music, Tanjur dolls and Kolam. This picture represents the traditional art form in South India because uh, Lord Krishna as a South India Lord uh, is represented in this picture. Rangoli Kolam. Rangoli Kolam is an Indian traditional art form where integrated drawings are made in the ground using materials such as color powders, rice and uh, flower petals. And this, uh, this decoration is made in uh, festivals and celebration which integrate beauty, harmony and welcoming of positive energy. This is the example of Rangoli Kolam in Indian traditional art form. Role of Women Artists in Indian Traditional Art Women artists play a vital role in preserving and promoting of Indian traditional art form through their active participation and presentation. Their presence have challenged general roles and norms, empowering women and encouraging them to appreciate their artistic talents. These are the Women Artists. Traditional Art in Textiles Traditional Art in Textiles refers to the cultural practices made to create artwork uh, using threads and fabrics. And some examples of traditional artworks in textiles are Panjatantira, uh, Kalamakari band and Bandhani. And we, it uses techniques such as weaving, embroidering and block printing and some of the natural dyeing methods. Traditional art in textiles as a unique style which is done in the cloth or other fabric materials. This is an example of traditional art in textiles because this embroidering is done in a sari, so it is considered as a traditional art in textiles. Musical instruments in Indian traditional art. Indian traditional art depicts musical instruments that hold culture and spiritual uh, figures. And some examples of musical instruments in Indian traditional art are dabla, drums, veena, sita, violin, and more. 
These are the few examples of musical instruments. Traditional art, art forms in jewelry and ornaments. Traditional art form in jewelry and ornaments refers to the cultural practices and techniques passed down to the generation, passed down to the generation using different materials and techniques. Traditional art in textiles refers to each mastery of peace and religious artworks are added in it. This is the picture which represents the traditional art in jewelry and ornaments. Ritualistic art form. Ritualistic art form are the creative expression added in the ritualistic ritual or cultural rituals. And ritualistic art form can are practiced for many centuries and continue to be a important part of a cultural heritage. And ritualistic art form create emotion, sense of community and connection among participants. Ritualistic art form are the are practiced and considered as a source for the artists to contribute their part. Influence of nature and wildlife in Indian traditional art. Indian traditional art is deeply influenced by Indian na nature and wildlife, and it draws inspiration from the country's diverse landscape, which shows flora, fauna, and other natural morphs. And Indian traditional art portrays the animals, plants, and natural morphs which hold culture and spiritual significance. This picture represents the nature and wildlife in Indian traditional art form because it contains animals. Storytelling and folk art in Indian traditional art. Storytelling and folk art is considered to be a source of art which help to recover the cultural heritage and through oral tradition. And even artists uh, use this as a source for developing their part in uh, history. This is the example of storytelling in Indian traditional art. And this picture represents the folk art in Indian traditional art. Cultural identity and significance. Cultural identity and significance refers to a person's sense of con connectivity and interconnection between humans and environment. And each group has its unique art forms. And cultural identity and significance represents the sense of community and connection among their ritualistic art forms. This picture represents the cultural identity and each person has its own uh, ritual dress. Miniature painting. Miniature painting is a highly detailed art form originated in India. And miniature painting is a highly de uh, detailed art form is done in a small scale. And miniature painting was uh, developed by Mughal emperors. And miniature painting is done in a uh, done using brushworks and fine detail in lines. Some examples of uh, miniature painting are. Rajput miniature painting and Mughal miniature painting. And the subject range from mythology to cochins in portrait. And it contains brushwork, vibrant colors, and meticulous attention in detail. This picture represents the miniature painting in Indian traditional art because peoples are compared with gems, which is smaller in size. And this is also considered as a examples of miniature painting because squirrel is smaller than a finger. Rajput miniature painting. Rajput miniature is a miniature painting floored during royal courts of Rajput in 16th century to 19th century. And it stopped decreasing in 18th century. And even uh, Rajput miniature painting is done using small scale materials such as paper, cloth and wood. And Rajput miniature painting played an important role in development of miniature painting. And this painting was done by Mughal emperors also. Mughal miniature paintings. Mughal miniature painting is a miniature painting which flooring during Mughal era. And this was developed in 16th century and started decreasing in 18th century and distracted in 19th century. And this um, art form was encouraged by Mughal emperors, who they are uh, Akbar and Emperor Sajagan. 
Mohal miniature painting is a important miniature painting which developed the miniature painting through their uh, important parts used in them. And this uh, represents the Mohal court uh, in uh, mythology and in literature. This is an example of Mughal painting, uh, Mughal painting in Indian traditional art form. This is done in a small scale in a piece of sari. Mural painting. Mural painting is an art form that is directly painted in a large scale surfaces such as wall, ceilings and other large surfaces areas. They, these are found in various culture throughout the history and shows different themes, styles and techniques. This serves as a public art which gives an artistic appeal to the buildings and public spaces. This is the example of mural painting in Indian traditional art form. This picture is drawn in a big large size, large size building and so it is considered to be a mural, mural painting. Architecture. Architecture is a diverse and rich field, encompasses various styles and influence. And it is characterized by stone, integrate carving, and structural elements like stone, uh, dome and pillars. Indian Parliament in Delhi is designed by Edwin Lewitton, which is a prominent example of modern architecture. Architect, some examples of architecture are Madurai Meenakshi Amman Temple and Red Fort Temple. Uh, Red Fort, Madurai Meenakshi Amman Temple. Madurai Meenakshi Amman Temple is located in Madurai and in Tamil Nadu. And this represents the Lordess Meenakshi Avatar of Parvati, Red Fort. Red Fort is an uh, building which was built by Emperor Shah Jahan and this was made by uh, red and stone which give a reddish color and reddish color and artistic appeal to the building. Some examples of Indian traditional artwork are Taj Mahal, Ellora Caves, Ajanta Caves and Tanjur painting. Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is a world UNESCO's world, world, you know, world heritage site located in Agra and this this the uh, iconic sculpture uh, has a stunning symmetry and beautiful gardens and this was created by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan for his beloved wife Muntaj Mahal. Ellora Caves. Ellora Caves is a world's UNESCO World Heritage Site and this temple has only rocket faces which consist of Buddhist, Jain and uh, Hindus tradition. And this shows the faces of Hindu goddess, Buddhist goddess, and Jainism goddess. It is a picture of all of them. And this picture, rep this picture represents the Ellora cave present. Ajanta Caves. Ajanta Caves is also considered as a world UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it contains ancient Buddhist cave cave sculptures and this was made in 2nd century BCE and this was encouraged by Buddhist teaching and stories and this is helpful cave for Buddhist, uh, Buddhist followers. Tanjur painting. Tanjur painting, is a mini, uh, Tanjur painting is a painting originated in the district called Tanjur in Tamil Nadu, India. It is characterized by rich and vibrant colors, gold foil, and embellishing and integrate carving. It depicts Hindu's goddess and, god and uh, court scenes from portrait and mythology. This is the example of Tanjur painting because it represents the god Krishna in it. He is uh, considered as a Hindu goddess. Development of Indian traditional artwork. Uh, development of Indian traditional art, artwork are considered as follows. They are preservation of te uh, traditional techniques and research and documentation and uh, increasing artworks in schools and colleges. Preservation of traditional techniques. In encouraging artists and artisans to learn and master their traditional techniques. Research and documentation. Investing in research and documentation of training programs ensure the preservation and understanding of Indian traditional artwork 
and implementing artwork in schools and colleges. It helps to um, uh, it helps to improve the traditional artwork percentage, and we can give it to the future generation. In conclusion, I say uh, in Indian traditional artwork has a preservation of them, and we need to develop it and preserve it for the future generation. We need to enjoy it by their visually representation. Thank you and thank you for your kind attention. Ali. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Good uh, Greetings. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Manushri from grade 7, studying in the Frontline Academy, Metric, Higher Secondary School, Tirupur. I'm going to give a lecture on the topic of Round Table Conference, 1930 to 1932. What is Round Table Conference? Does anybody know? Uh, know? The Round Table Conference is where a series of meetings held between 1930 and 1932 in London, United Kingdom. These conferences were organized by the British government. Uh, British government. Why the conference is organized, aimed to discuss and navigate it. Here are the main reasons why the round table conference is organized. Number one, Indian political demands. Number two, constitutional reforms. Number three, representation derives for intersect. And number four, bringing divisions. Number one, Indian political demands. In the year 20th century, they were growing nationalities movement in India, seeking self-ruling and political representation, including the possibility of more granting and accompanying. The roundtable conferences, also known as the Indian Stratastry Committee, Number two, constitutional reforms. The British government wanted to politaringly introduce the constitutional reforms for those demands. In number three, representation derives intersect. The Brit the India has and derives country. It has various religious and committees including Hindus, Muslims, and other minorities groups. Number four, bringing divisions. The British government wanted to solve the gap between the Briti Indian political functions and other committees too. Indian endromical independent was a significant momentum. And about the first round table conference. The first round table conference, also known as the Indian Round Table Conference, it was started at November 1930 and ended at January 1931. The largest political party at the time, the Congress, by heart at the conference. The conference resulted in the purposal of Indian government in 1935. In 1935, the largest political party decision invited only the limited member of should participated in the conference. The they aimed to uh, prevent the conference. In the conference, 146 members participated. From India, 74 delegates attended. They are Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, V. S. Srinivasa Shastri, and etc. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was an Indian leader who attended the conference. Labour government Prime Minister Ramsey MacDonald organized the conference in London. Mahatma Gandhi attended, uh, did not attend the conference. Beham Jawaharlal Saswik was the only woman who attended the conference. The, the Prime Minister of Brit British during the first round table conference is Ramsey MacDonald. He is also a Labour government Prime Minister too. Ramsey MacDonald is organized the conference on London. Sir Irwin was then Victorian during the first round table conference. Gandhi Ivan Pak was signed on the first round table conference. 
Samanish Commission was appointed by Stanley Bladwin, but they did not include any Indian delegators. Gandhi by hearted the first round table conference. It was not happy with the report of Samanish Commission, but he did not attend it. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and Tej Bahadu Sapur participated in the all three round table conference. But the third first round table conference was a failure. Overall, the first round table conference was a significant step towards Indi in Indian independent Andromical movement, but fell short of addressing all the issues and people conscripted. And about the second round table conference. The sec at the conference, the Congress and the Muslim leagues are the main parties at the conference and researched by the compassion of commonal questions. And the main demands of the Muslim people's foreign separate state, the, the Congress wanted a united India, which Muslim leagues wanted a separate Muslim state in the Northwest and the Northeast religion of India. Gandhi and Indian National Congress represented India in the second round table conference. The second round table conference started at 7 September on 1931. Mahatma Gandhi attended only the second round table conference. The delegators attended the second round table conferences are Mahatma Sarojini Naidu, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, and etc. Gandhi Ivan Pact was signed on 1931. Ramsey MacDonald organized the conference on London. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar participated in the second round table conference on behalf of delegates. Nobody paid attention to the demands of Gandhiji's demands and full responsibility for them, uh, for them it. Untouchable Hindus should not treat as and minorities and they should not have a separate election for Muslims and minorities groups or and demands of Gandhiji too. There are many demands for Gandhiji. Commonal questions and the representation of minorities and the legislative, both the dissenter as well as prevented. Baham Jawaharlal Saswik and Sarojini Naidu participated in the round table conference. Jawaharlal Nehru did not attend at the second round table conference. The main demands of Gandhi ji is changing the radio between the rupee and the string, reducing the uploading of land revenue, uploading of salt tax, reducing the melting expert expreontive, reducing the civil on administration, imposing custom duty on far region cloth. And these are the demands of Gandhi Jito. The Poonam Pact was signed on 1931 in behalf of Gandhi Ji and Ambedkar. And the second round table conference was a failure. Overall, the second round table conference highlights the complex and other row. How about the third round table conference? The third round table conference signed by Poonam Pact on September 24, 1932. This Poonam dress up for classes for legislative prevented and this opposed by British government. This, this was an achievement packed too. And the Lord Winglingdon was in Victorian during the third round table conference. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar attended all three round table conference, including third round table conference. The third round table conference is organized on England. Ramsay MacDonald was a British PM also in the third round table conference. 
Beham Jawaharlal Sastrik only attended the third round table conference. The third round table conference discussion served as a conclusion. Both INC and the Labour government also decided to participate on the conference, but they did not participate. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and Tej Bahadur Sapur participated, and behalf of delegates, Ambedkar attended. The third round table conference. Third round table conference by by hearted by British. The Lucknow Pact was signed on third round table conference. The Dr. B. R. Ambedkar as and demands was to separate election for backward classes. The Samunish Commission group appointed by November on 1927 by British government under Stanley Bladwin to report on working of Indian constitutional establish the government. The leaders of Congress did not attend at the conference. The Samunish Commission did not have an in have an Indian single Indian delegator, so they rejected Samunish Commission in India. The main object of Samunish Commission is to inquire the, into the work of uh, or to struggle future reforms on system of administration. The Indian strategy was a father of Samunish Commission too. February, March and October 1928, uh, April 1929, Samunish Commission came to India. Sharojini Naidu did not participate in the third round table conference representing Indian National Congress, but the third round table conference was also a failure. This made the mountain pattern of uh, this made the mountain pattern of uh, which proposed by the British government and. Uh, this made the rift between that. And next we are going to talk about Monkit uh, Chemis uh, fought reforms. It is also known as the Government of Indian Art in 1919. Uh, it, 1919, it was uh, the turning point of significant step. They, they, these were also known as then named after and Secretary of State, na his name is Ed, Edwin Monkett, and this prevented some degrees too. And both INC and the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi and other uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru participated. And and next we are going to talk about the main causes of holding these conference. Number one, Indian Nationalities Movement. Number two, the Samunish Commission. Number three, the Commonwealth Tensions. And number four, the rights for constitutional reforms. And number five, International Persia. Number one, Indian Nationalities Movement. The Indian Nationalities Movement also led by the leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, and Subhash Chandra Bose gaining strength and others. This makes the growing round table conferences too. Number two, the Samunash Commission. The Samunash Commission also led by the leaders like, uh, it is also known as the Indian Strategy Committee on 1928. This make this was by hearted by Indian National Congress, and this made the rift and tension between in Indian nationalities movement and commonal tensions. Number three, commonal tensions. The com the India was a derived country. It has various religious and committees. The roundtable conferences wanted to represented the committees and religious. And number four the rise for constitutional reforms. The British government recognized the need for constitutional reforms in India. This made that too. And, uh, the, and this made the group team of British government and Indian political leaders. And number five, international pressure. The British government faces the international pressure and made it overall the Overall, the main causes of holding these conferences were in, uh, Indian political, Indian nationalities movement, the, the Simonish Commission, commonal tensions, and 
derives for constitutional reforms and international posture. This promotes the British government to inquire it. In conclusion, the roundtable conferences were a series of meetings held between 1930 and 1932 in London, United Kingdom. These were organized by the British government. Here are the main reasons why the roundtable conference is organized, aimed to discuss and find solution to it. The, in the first roundtable conference, Gandhi did not participate, uh, Gandhi and Sarojini Naidu did not participate and represented Indian National Congress. Ambedkar and Tej Bahadur Sapur only participated. Uh, only women who participated from India is Beham Javaganar Saswek. And uh, there are three types of Victorian during the three types of uh, round table conference. The first Victorian during the first round table conference is Sir Irwin. The Prime Minister of uh, first round table conference is uh, Ramsay MacDonald. About the second round table conference, the in the second round table conference, Gandhi, uh, Gandhi represented Indian National Congress. Gandhi and Sarojini Naidu participated. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and Tej Bahadur Sapur participated too. From, uh, from India, uh, Beham Javaganar Saswik also participated. The, the second Victorian during the second round table conference is also Sir Irwin. And the Prime Minister of Second Round Table Conference is uh, uh, Ramsay MacDonald. And the third Second Round Table Conference, they signed many packs too. And about the third Round Table Conference, the third, in the third Round Table Conference, uh, as first Round Table Conference, only Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, uh, Sir Mohammed, uh, Sir Beham Javaganar Saswik and Beham Javaganar Saswik only participated. And uh, uh, they did not sign more packs in the third round table conference. The, in the third round table conference, the Victorian is Lord Winglingdon. And the third round table conference, the Prime Minister of third round table conference is Ramsay MacDonald. The, the main causes of holding these conferences were to incur many demands and to find sign many pacts and to engage with an Indian delegators. And overall, this made the tension and a rift tension between this. Thank you. Daga. Today, we are going to embark on an excited linguistic journey called Time Travel with Tensors. Tensors, tensors, tensors. The word tensors creates a lot of tensions among the students. Among the students. Today, we are going to give a brief explanation about tensors. So, ha have you ever language can travel through time? Well, today we are going to give an explore the fascinating connection between tensors and time travel. So what is tensors? The word tensors is derived from Latin word tempus, which means time. Have you uh, tensors are form of verb? It gives <laughs> tensors are form of verb. It gives brief explanation about time, and uh, uh, they help us to express different time-related ideas and even in our ten in our sentence. So these are the contents we are going to go through: introduction, classification based on time frame classification based on aspect, block diagram of tenses, list of rules, past tense, present tense, and last list of examples. So what is tenses? Based on time frame, the verb tenses may be categorized according to the time frame, past tense, present tense, and future tense. Let me give a brief explanation about past tense, present tense, and future tense. So what is past tense? Past tense expresses an an unchanging repeated or reoccurring action or event that exists only now, it can also represent a widespread truth. F uh, future tense. Future tense expresses an action or situation that will occur in the future. Present tense. Present tense expresses an action or situation 
that uh, exist one day now, it can also represent a widespread truth. Like the verb tenses may be categorized according to the aspect. Aspect refers to the nature of the action described by the verb. There are four aspects, Pres uh, indefinite or simple, continuous or progressive, perfect or complete, and last, perfect continuous tense. So what is indefinite tenses? There are three types of indefinite tenses or simple tenses used to describe an action, but do not state whether the action is finished. Continuous tenses. There are three types of continuous tenses or progressive tenses or incomplete tenses used to describe an action, describe an unfinished action. Perfect tenses. There are three types of perfect tenses or complete tenses used to describe an finished action and last perfect continuous tenses. To combine a complete tenses or incomplete tenses used to describe an action which was in progress and then finished. Tenses have its own aspects. Present tense aspects are present indefinite, present continuous, present perfect and last present perfect continuous. Fu uh, past tense aspects are past continuous, past indefinite, past perfect and last past perfect continuous. Future tense aspects are future indefinite, future perfect, future continuous and last future perfect continuous. List of rules. Present tense in simple form, first form plus yes or es. Progressive form is am or plus first form plus ing. Perfect form have or has plus third form. Perfect progressive form have or has been plus first form plus ing. Past tense. Simple form, second form. Progressive form was, where plus first form plus ing. Perfect form had plus third form. Perfect progressive form had been plus first form plus ing. Future tense. Simple form will or shall plus first form. Will be plus first form plus ing. Perfect form will have plus third form. Perfect progressive form will have been plus first form plus ing. And let's give me a brief explanation of, of present tense and its aspects. Present tense aspects are present indefinite tenses, present continuous tenses, present perfect tenses, and last present perfect continuous tenses. There are uh, present indefinite tenses. The simple present tense is used to describe an action, event, or condition that exists only now. That exists only now, at the moment of writing or speaking. For example, I play, he or she plays. Now, I have added few more examples to make you understand better. I write articles on different topic. I is an subject. Write is an verb. Articles on different topic is an object. He reads various kind of book. He is an subject. Reads is an verb. Various kind of book is an object. They love to play football. They is an subject. Love is an verb. Play uh, love to is an object. She prefers coffee to tea. She is an subject. Prefers is an verb. Coffee to tea is an object. And last, he goes to the library every day. He is an subject. Goes is an verb to the library every day is an object. In these sentence, they have used present indefinite tenses and the formula is first form plus yes or es. Now let's get into present continuous tense. The present continuous tense emphasize the continuing nature of an act, event or condition. For example, I am playing, he or she is playing and they are playing. Now I have added few more examples to make you understand better. Children are going to school. Children is a plural form of child, so they have used are, go is an verb, ing is a clue word of continuous tense, to school is an object. Second, the boys are playing in the park. The boys is a plural form and subject, so they have used are, boy is an verb, ing is a clue word of continuous tense, to in the park is an object. Now. The baby is crying out loud. 
the baby is in singular form, so they have used is. Crying is an verb. Out loud is an object. It is raining now. It is an subject, so uh, in singular form, so they have used is. Rain is an verb. ING is a clue word of continuous tense. Now is an object. I am cooking pasta for lunch. I is a singular form. If I came, we should must use am. So cooking is an verb. Pasta for lunch is an object. Now at last, Mr. Peter is teaching the class. Miss Peter is an verb. Subject is teaching is an verb. The class is an object. Now let's get into present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is used to describe an action that begins in the past and continues into the present or just have been completed. For example, I have played, he or she has played. Now, I have added few more examples to make you understand better. We have not found it yet. We is an subject, have not found is a negative form of present perfect tense, yet it, it is an object. Vinu and Parvati invited all their friends for today's party. Vinu and Parvati is an subject, in have invited is an verb. All their friends for party is an object. Shashi has not slept all night. Shashi is an verb. Has not is an negative form of present perfect tense. Slept is an past a present word of sleep. All night is an object. Has he finished his homework? He is an subject, has finished is an interrogative form of present perfect tense. His work is an object. And last, it has not been the same since ever you left. It is an subject, have not been is a negative form of present perfect tense. The same ever since you left is an object. Now let's get into pre the present perfect continuous tense. The present perfect continuous tense is used to describe an action that begin in the past and continues into the present. For example, I or you have been playing, he or she has been playing. Now, I have added few more examples to make you understand better. I have been watching this movie for two hours. I is an subject, have been as a clue word of pre per uh, perfect continuous. Watching is an verb, the movie for two hours is an object. Sham has been asking for you. Sham is an subject. Have been has been asking is an verb. For you is an object. Indrajit have been dancing all day. Indrajit is an subject. Have been dancing is an verb. All day is an object. Joji and Saji have been planning to go to Hyderabad next week. Joji and Saji is subject. Have been planning is an verb. To go to Hyderabad next week is an object. And last, have you been looking for this back? You is an subject. Have been looking is an interrogative form of present perfect continuous. For this back is an object. And now let's get into past tense and its aspects. Past tense aspects are past indefinite, past continuous, past perfect, and last past perfect continuous. Past indefinite tense. The simple past is used to describe an action, event, or condition. Uh, action, event, or condition that occurred in the past. For example, I played, he or she played. Now, I have added few more examples to make you understand better. He is an subject, played is an verb, and yesterday is an clue word of past tense. He went to school. He is an subject, went is an past word of go. To school is an object. She did not wash her car. She is an subject. Did not wash is a negative form of present indefinite tense. Her car is an object. Rohan left the college two years ago. Rohan is an subject. Left is a past word of sleep. The college two years ago is an object. He did not wait for the bus. He is an subject. Did not wait is a negative form of present indefinite tense. For the bus is an object. Now let's get into past continuous tense. The past continuous tense is used to refer to an action that took place and were completed in the past. For example, I was playing, he or she was playing. Now I have added 
few more examples to make you understand better. We were watching the match. We is an subject, where is an clue word of past continuous tense, wa watching is an verb, the match is an object. I was studying at the library yesterday. I is an subject, was is an clue word of a past continuous tense, studying is an verb, at the library yesterday is an object. It was raining heavily on Wednesday. It is an subject. Have was is an clue word of past continuous tense. Raining is an verb. Heavily on Wednesday is an object. The child was crying all night. The child is in singular form, so they have used was. Crying is an verb. All night is an object. And they were driving all day long. They is an plural word, so they have used where. Driving is an verb, all day long is an object. And last, my friends were waiting for the bus. My friends is in plural form, so they have used where. Waiting is an verb, for the bus is an object. Now, let's get into past perfect tense. The past perfect tense is used to describe an action that ongoing in the past. For example, I had played, he or she had played. Now I have added few more examples to make you understand better. She had met back him in college. She is an subject, had met is an verb, back in the college is an object. The plane had left by the time I got to the airport. The plane is an sub subject, had left is an verb, time I got to airport is an object. And next I had written the email letter before he apologized. I is an subject, had is an clue word of past perfect tense, written is an verb, the email before he apologized is an object. And last, Kate had wanted to see the movie, but she arrived too late. Kate is an subject, had wanted is an verb, to see the movie, but she arrived too late is an object. Now let's get into past perfect continuous tense. The past perfect continuous tense is used to describe an action before another action begin or interrupting the first action. Now I have had few more examples to make you understand better. I had been playing, he or she had been playing. Eric had been working at the hospital for over two years before he went, uh, before he left for Spain. Derek is an subject, have been uh, working as an verb at the hospital for over two years before he left for Spain as an object. I do not think the place had been functioning well for a, for a very long time before it shut down. I is an subject, have been as an clue word of past perfect continuous, functioning as an verb well for a very long time before it shut down as an object. And Tina had been singing for an hour before her mother arrived. Tina is an subject, have been is an clue word of past perfect continuous, singing is an verb for an hour before her mother arrived is an object. Had not you been waiting at the railway station for over two hours when the train finally arrived? Have not you is an subject, have not been waiting is an interrogative form of past perfect continuous at the railway station for over two hours when the train finally arrived is an object. And let's get into future tense and its aspect. Future tense aspects are future indefinite, future continuous, future perfect and last future perfect continuous. What is future indefinite tenses? The simple future is used to describe an action that refer to the action after the act of speaking or writing. For example, I shall play, he or she will play. Now I have added few more examples to make you understand better. She will accept me as her loyal husband. She is an subject, will is an clue word of future indefinite tense, accept is an verb, me as her loyal husband is an object. I will catch in this pond I will catch fish in this pond tomorrow. I is an subject, will is an clue word of future indefinite tense, catch is an verb, 
fish in the in this pond is an object tomorrow is an clue word of future indefinite tense tanisha will add me to her friend zone soon tanisha is an subject will is an clue word of future indefinite tense add is an verb me to her friend zone soon is an object i will adjust adjust to this new apartment i is an subject will is an verb is a clue word of future indefinite tense adjust is an verb to this new apartment is an object now future continuous tense the future continuous tense is used to describe an action that is ongoing or future progressive tense that will occur in the future for example i shall be playing he or she will be playing now i have added few more examples to make you understand better it will be raining from tomorrow it is an subject will be is an clue word of future continuous tense raining is an verb from tomorrow is an object i will be watching the series today i is an subject will be is an clue word of future continuous tense watching is an verb the series today is an object they will be staying at my place they is an subject will be is an clue word of future continuous tense staying is an verb at my place is an object the parcel will be arriving soon the is an subject will be is an clue word of future continuous tense arriving is an verb soon is an object and last the few, uh, the doctor will be coming tomorrow the doctor is an subject will be is an verb is a clue word of future continuous tense coming is an verb tomorrow is an object now let's get into future perfect tense the future perfect tense is used to describe an action that refer to action or that will be completed in the future before another action takes place for example i shall have played he or she will have played now i have added few more examples to make you understand better mom will have cooked our favorite meal since we are going home after a very long time mom is an subject will have is an clue word of future perfect tense cooked is an verb our favorite meal since we are going home after a really long time is an object i think all the plants will have grown before i return i is an subject will have is an future clue word of future perfect tense grown is an verb object verb before i return is an object sindhu will not have forgotten anything by now sindhu is an subject will not have is an negative form of future perfect tense forgotten is an past particles of forget anything by now is an object and last will you have completed the invitation before 7 pm will is an clue word of future perfect tense you is an subject have completed is an verb the invitation before 7 pm is an object now let's get into future perfect continuous the future perfect continuous is used to describe an action that will complete uh, will complete at some specific time for example i shall have been playing he or she will have been playing now i have added few more examples to make you understand better he will be tired when he gets here or he will have been traveling all day he is an subject will have been is an clue word of future perfect continuous traveling is an verb all day is an object how long will joe have been working when he retires joe is an subject will have been is an interrogative form of future perfect continuous working is an verb when he retires is an object next month i will have been studying chinese for 2 years next i is an subject will have been is an uh, clue word of future perfect continuous studying is an verb chinese for 2 years is an object he won't have been studying uh, long enough to qualify 
he is an subject won't have been as a negative form of future perfect continuous studying as an verb long enough to qualify as an object and last list of examples present tense in simple form i play in progressive form i am playing in perfect form i have played in perfect progressive form i have been playing past tense in simple form i played in uh, progressive form i was playing in perfect form i had played in perfect progressive form i had been playing future tense in simple form i shall play in progressive form i shall be playing in perfect form i shall have played in perfect progressive form i shall have been playing so thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity thank you a yeah, warm greeting to one and all present here here selvestri of grade 11 from the frontline academy matriculation high secondary school i'm thrilled to be here today as part of this incredible lecture marathon it is honored to share my knowledge with you all once i'm going to take a lecture about the topic survival secret mastering safety measures during natural disaster survival secret when it come to survival there are several important secrets and principle that can greatly improve the chance of staying safe during an emergency situation here one of the key of survival secret are mastering safety measures during natural disaster natural disaster what is natural disaster a natural disaster is an extreme event caused by a natural force that result with a significant loss of damage destruction and loss of wildlife these events are not occurs naturally and or occurs naturally by a human activities although human activities have a bad influence due to their impacts the natural disaster have a severe consequences on both the environmental and a human population although they can occur suddenly or develop over a period of time Pre example for natural disaster there are many different types of natural disaster here some of the example for natural disaster are earthquake hurricanes and flood preparing for natural disaster preparing for natural disaster is essential to minimize the potential risk and increase the chance of staying safe this is here some of the example that you can be prepared during natural disaster stay in form create an emergency plan build an emergency kit secure your house know your walk way route communication and practice prepare for power outages secure important documents consider special needs stay connected stay informed stay updated with a potential natural disaster in your area uh, sign up with local emergency alert and follow more reliable sources for information such as natural weather service and local authorities create an emergency plan creating an emergency plan for yourself and your house call is essential identify the escape route and establish a meeting point and determine how you will communicate during natural emergency assign your role and responsibility for each of your family members build an emergency kit assembling an emergency kit that sustain your and your family members for at least 3 days with an essential items including non perishable food water flashlight medicines batteries personal hygiene items cash important documents battery power and cranking radios secure your house take step to secure your house to prevent them from potential hazards make sure all the heavy objects are secure fixedly example heavy furniture applications water heater during earthquake to prevent them from slewing out during earthquake and a heavy storm storm shelters and rainforest doors and windows are protect against hurricanes and strong wind no evacuate route 
familiarize yourself with an evacuation route in your area. Plan optional if some case some routes are blocked. Plan if you are in an area open to flood, then find out if you are in a flood zone. Know the highest ground in your vicinity. Communication and practice. Share an emergency plan within your family members, friends, and neighbors. For practice drilling in authorities, for example, earthquake, fire, and tornado. Prepare for power outage. Have an alternate source of power availability such as generator, solar panels. Keep extra batteries and portable handy mobile chargers. Stock up non-perishable food that does not require any kinds of cooking and refrigerator. Secure important document. Make a copies of all the essential documents including identification card, insurance policy, birth certificate and medicinal record. Store them in a waterproof and fireproof condition. Make a digital copy of all of these documents and store them in a cloud secure service. Provide a checklist of essential items. Provide a checklist of all the essential items that will help you during a natural emergency. Essential items including emergency kit, food, first aid supplies, flashlight and batteries. Different types of natural disaster. There are many different types of natural disaster. Here, some of the examples for natural disaster are earthquake, flood, tsunami, hurricanes, tornado, wildfire, and landslide. Earthquake. Earthquake are a natural disaster that causes by unshaking or troubling of ground movement causes by tectonic activities that beneath the earth's surface. Tsunami. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves um, uh, which are triggered by an underwater earthquake, volcanic eruption, and landslide. Tornado. A tornado is a large, violent rotating of storm uh, that have contact on both the surface of the earth and the cluminous cloud, which is referred as a twice earth cyclone on based on the area. Hurricanes. A hurricane is a large rotating storm that are characteristic by a strong wind, heavy rainfall, and it is known as a traplon or cyclone on based on the regions. Flood. A flood is a natural disaster, which means a overflow of water normally on a dry land and causes by a heavy rainfall, rapid melting of snow, and dam failure. Wildfire. A wildfire is a uncontrolled fire that spread quickly and consume vegetation. Landslide. A landslide is a downward movement and moves of solid and rocks along with the slope and is mostly triggered by an earthquake, heavy rainfall and volcanic activities. The above picture is a best example for landslide. Earthquake safety measures. Earthquake are a natural disaster that strikes suddenly and causes a significant damage on building, infrastructure, and human life. Therefore, it is crucial for everyone to be well prepared and organize how to stay safe during earthquake. First and foremost, preparedness is a key. Creating an emergency plan for yourself and your family members is essential. Identify the safest spot within your house where you can cover yourself during an earthquake. These places must be away from windows, doors, and heavy objects. They may fall on you and cause injury. Additionally, destinating a meeting point outside your building where you can meet your family members and others after shaking. Crucial to secure your surrounding. It is crucial to secure your surrounding. Make a thorough inspection around your living area and workspace to identify the potential hazards. Make sure all the heavy objects such as cabinet are secure fixedly to the wall. Attach latches on the cabinet door to avoid them from slewing out during earthquake. 
it is also important to secure water heater and glass appliances to avoid leaking and explosion during earthquake familiar with emergency procedure in your area educate yourself your family members and your neighbors about the warning sign of immeridial earthquake such as shaking or troubling sound pay attention and stay informed through our local authorities news outlet and Right, you can provide a real-time earthquake alerts and determine how to react during earthquake. Drop, cover, and hold on. This significantly increases the chance of staying safe and decreases the causes of injury during earthquake. Preparedness extends beyond personal safety. Assembling, consider assembling an emergency kit that sustains you and your family member for at least three days. Essential items including food, water, medicines, flashlight, power, pa battery power radios. These kit will help to sustain for at least three days when the access may utility and the service may disturb. Community involvement is crucial. Encourage your neighbors, family. friends and colleagues to be well prepared for earthquake as well and preparing for earthquake in organized drilling and excess of practice in an evacuation procedure by working together and sharing knowledge we can build a residential community which is well equipped to face any kinds of natural disaster in conclusion in conclusion the tsunami the earthquake safety precautions are prioritizely important by taking an appropriate step we can migrate the causes of tsunami so earthquake preparations are well important points to remember time is limited during earthquake act quick but also calm Consi make an emergency supplies assemble an emergency kit and secure your surrounding thoroughly then now let us see about the tsunami safety precautions tsunami are a natural disaster that causes a significant damage on building infrastructure and human lives and which is triggered by an underwater earthquake volcanic eruption and landslide that it is a crucial for everyone and it is crucial for your peoples and your community pe coastal community people to be well prepared and educate how to stay safe during tsunami first and foremost awareness is a key notice a rapid withdrawal of ocean water familiarize yourself with an extreme warning sign of tsunami such as notice a rapid withdrawal of ocean water and shaking of ground pay attention and stay informed through a local warning alerts issued by an local authorities tsunami monitoring centers and weather agencies stay tuned with an radio television and smartphones where you can provide a real time uh, tsunami alerts education is the primary objective when you when the you are when the tsunami warning is issued evacuation is the primary objective follow all the instruction issued by a local authorities emergency management official and be aware of evacuation routes and shelters in your area these uh, signals are connected with signals and leave you in a safer zone these place must be higher zone and safest they must be away from sea important to remember it is important to remember that time is limited during tsunami act quick but also calm gather all the emergency supplies including food water medicines important documents if you are unable to evacuate seek an high ground immediately this place must be multi concrete building hills or stored buildings where you can be safe during the tsunami community preparedness in the cases you find yourself in shoreline and are not, not able to evacuate seek and vertical shelter immediately move to a multi stored concrete building go to an upper floor be aware of slept away from oceanic waves this place if you are able to evacuate in an interior room if possible this place must be away from windows community preparedness is essential 
encourage your community to be well prepared for a, a tsunami as well. Practice evacuations and drillings to ensure your community people to be safe during a tsunami. Establish a system that your community people receive a timely warning about a tsunami and uh, ensure all the individuals, including elders, children, and disabled people, to be safe uh, during tsunami. Uh, education is a key. Educate yourself and your community people about your tsunami safety precautions. Raising awareness within your own community by information campaigning and workshop. By taking and knowledge, acknowledge ourselves and your community people is essential to be safe, yeah, safest decision and to be safe during tsunami safety measures. In conclusion, in conclusion, the tsunami safety precautions are prioritizedly important. Safety precaution for tsunami is well important to save our life and our community people's points to remember. The time is limited during tsunami. Act with but also calm. Gather all the emergency supplies. Pay attention to an information issued by and local authorities and, and tsunami monitoring centers. Gather emergency supplies that sustain your and your family member for at least three days. And by taking an appropriate safety precautions, we can migrate the causes of tsunami and save our life. Hurricane safety measures. Hurricanes are a powerful and destructive to tropical cyclone that result with a strong wind, heavy rainfall, storm sugars, and flooding. Therefore, it is crucial for people and your community to be well prepared and educate how to stay safe during hurricanes. First and foremost, preparedness is a key. Stay informed about a hurricane warning signs through monitoring weather reports and official announcement issued by a local authority, emergency management official. Establish an emergency plan for yourself and your family members is essential. Additionally, destinate a meeting points where you can meet your family members and others after hurricanes. Next, well prepare for hurricanes. Ensure your houses to be well prepared for to face any kinds of hurricanes. Trim all the trees and scrubs around your property to ensure your houses to prevent them from falling on it and ensure your house is very safe during hurricanes. Reinforced doors and windows are to be storm shelters. Clear guts and down spots to prevent them from water build up. Secure outdoor furniture and garden tools to be safe and, and to prevent them from high speed wind causes during hurricanes. Essential items. If you are in an area open to hurricanes, then find out if you are in an evacuation location and in a house, mobile house. If you are in an evacuation location, be aware of evacuation preparation and have a go on back with an essential items including food, water, medicines and important documents. Secure your pet is as well as important to secure as human during the hurricanes. During the hurricanes, the personal safety is prioritized. Stay indoor and away from windows and doors. Take shelters in your down lower windowless interior room on your shorters in your house home. In the, if the situation may be wrong or the floating may be occurs, move to hand high ground or roof if necessary. Do not vanish out during hurricanes. If you are if you are moving out during hurricanes, it may cause damage on yourself. After the hurricanes, after the hurricanes, be aware of potential hazards such as falling power lines. We can structure flood water and be alerted with an information issued by an local authorities and emergency management official. They ensure until they ensure your area is safe to stay. Do not drink tap water until the local authority ensure it is safe to drink and does not cause any injury to your humans and your individuals. In conclusion, in conclusion, the hurricane safety precautions are prioritizedly important. By preparing for hurricanes, we can save our life. Points to remember, clear all the guts and stubs around your property. Do not vanish out during hurricanes. 
pay attention to the information issued by and local authorities and emergency management official and secure your house do not vanish out during hurricanes by taking an appropriate step we can mitigate the causes of hurricanes and save our life flood safety measures flood are a natural disaster that result with an heavy rainfall river overflow storm sugars and dam failure and it causes a significant damage on human life infrastructure and human life therefore it is crucial for peoples and individual and community to be well prepared and organize how to stay safe during hurricanes first and foremost preparedness is a key stay informed about your weather reports and your flood water rising in your area pay attention to a flood warning issued by an advisors and be aware of evacuation routes have your community plan will ensure to be stay connected within your family members and community stay updated about your flood event in your area when flood warning is issued when the flood warning is issued follow all the evacuation route issued by an local authorities and have a gather an emergency supplies including food water medicines and first aid kit if you are live in an area open to flood then if you are find if you are in a flood zone and find the highest ground in your vicinity during and flood a uh, during a flood personal safety is prioritized avoid walking or driving during outside during flood in if some case just a 6 feet of flood water may slip to yourself and even a 2 inch of slip water may slip to a small vehicle if you are encountered by a flood water and find an alternate route instead of going on flood water zone avoid basements if you are live in an area in ground floor move to an high ground avoid basements and listen to an radio on where you can receive a timely warning about bright colored cloths and using flashlight is ensure that you need any kinds of help during flood after the flood water radios after the flood water is radios be aware of weakened structure in your area such as fundamental water electric hazards protect clothing and clear up dust by taking an appropriate step we can mitigate the causes of flood uh, safe slip safety precautions are prioritizedly important to save ourselves by points to remember do not go out or travel during flood stay informed about your local authorities and emergency management official even a just a 6 feet of flood water may slip to you and causes injury by taking an appropriate step we can mitigate the causes of flood and save our life and your community in conclusion in conclusion the flood we have discussed about several types of natural disaster disaster such as earthquake flood tsunami hurricanes tornado landslide and flood for each of these natural disaster have a different types of safety precaution for example earth have a when we uh, earth have when the earthquake occurs we must be aware of local authorities and secure your surrounding thoroughly creating an emergency plan building an emergency kit and for tsunami we should be not go out during tsunami and follow all the instruction issued by an tsunami monitoring center the time is limited we should act quick but also calm when a tsunami warning is issued the shifting is your primary objective and evacuation is is essential and during hurricanes the hurricanes is a more prioritizedly most dangerous natural disaster comparative to other uh, hurricanes are not occurs in all location it may be occurs in us and other country sites while during hurricanes we must be aware of all the hurricanes warning signs issued by and local authorities and we should not vanish out we should secure your house and clear all the dust 
flood. A flood is an yeah, unbeneavable natural disaster that causes yeah, significant damage on environmental and human population. By discussing all of these safety precautions, we can migrate all the causes issued by a natural disaster and save our community. Thank you for your memorable time for spending with me. Thank you. Greetings all. I am Dakshinya from Great 12 from the Frontline Academy Matriculation High Secondary School. Today I am here to take the lecture on the topic of life of molecules exploring the basics of biochemistry. Today we are going to see about life of molecules, major types of biomolecules, biochemistry, field of biochemistry, biochemist, metabolism, structural biology and conclusion. First, let us see about life of molecules. What is meant by molecules? Molecule is a group of two or more atoms that are bonded, to, bonded together by an attractive force known as chemical bonds. Molecules are composed of atoms that form certain shapes. But not all combinations of atoms are equally possible. Atoms adopt certain shapes or forms due to their different valencies. For instance, oxygen atoms always forms two bonds with other atoms. Nitrogen forms three bonds with other atoms and carbon forms four bonds with other atoms. In the kinetic theory of gases, the term molecule is often used for any gaseous particle regardless to its composition. According to the definition, the term noble gas is considered as molecule as they were in fact monatomic molecule. In gases like air, the molecules are just flying around. In liquid like water, the molecules are just stuck together but they can still move. In solid like sugar, the molecules can only vibrate. In the fourth state of matter known as plasma, the atoms are ionized and cannot form the molecules. And with the help of a molecular formula, we can able to write down the number of atoms in the molecules. For example, molecular formula of glucose is C6H12O6. This formula indicates that one molecule of glucose consists of 6 carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and 6 oxygen atoms. And now let us see about biomolecules. Biomolecules are also called as biological molecules. Any of numerous substances that are produced by the living cells and the living organisms. Biomolecules have the wide range of structures and sizes that perform the vast array of functions in the human body. It is classified into four major types. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Among biomolecules, nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA have the unique functions of storing an organism's genetic code. The sequence of nucleotides can be determined by the amino acid sequence of proteins, which is critical importance to life on Earth. Proteins themselves are called as major structural elements of cells. And proteins themselves can act as a transport, moving nutrition, absorbing vitamins, and other molecules such as enzymes and catalysts, which can perform the vast majority of chemical reactions in the living organisms. And now let us see about the chemical properties of uh, biomolecules. Uh, most of the biomolecules are organic compounds. Uh, building block molecules have simpler configurations. Uh, biomolecules have certain shapes and dimensions. Uh, most of the chemical attributes of the biomolecules can be determined by the associated functional group. Uh, now let us see about carbohydrates. What is meant by carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are the one of the three main nutritions that are found in the foods and drinks. Carbohydrate is converted into the glucose in your body and glucose is an essential source of energy that your tissues, bodies uh, and bones are required. Now let us see about the advantages of carbohydrate. Carbohydrate provides uh, energy to the body, uplift the mood, helps to sleep better, helps to prevent from diseases, prevent blood clots and uh, improve the digestive system and does not harm the healthy kidneys and can help to control the weight gain. And now let us see about the disadvantages of carbohydrates. Too many intake of carbohydrates can contribute to weight gain and put up you in the risk of uh, high medical conditions like diabetes, cholesterol and even heart diseases. Now let us uh, see about nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are large biomolecules uh, that play an essential role in cells and viruses. Uh, nucleic acid, the main objective of nucleic acid stores the 
expression of the gen genomic information and uh, nucleic acid stores the genetic information of an organism. So, genetic information stored by the nucleic acid is used by the cells to direct synthesis of protein. Now let us see about the advantages of nucleic acid vaccines. Nucleic acid vaccines are often referred to the third generation vaccines which uh, induce an immunological response in the host against bacteria, viruses uh, and uh, potentially cancer and the disadvantages of nucleic acid vaccines. Uh, one limitations of DNA vaccines uh, is re relatively low immunogenicity profiles which impede the desired clinical applications. And then now let us see about the lipids. Uh, lipids are fatty compounds that are present in the body and perform the variety of functions. Uh, they are part of your cell membrane uh, which controls moving nutrition, absorbing vitamins and making hormones. Uh, and the uh, functions of uh, lipids, uh, they are part of the cell membrane that helps to control moving nutrition and absorbing energy and advantages of the lipids are, uh, lipids are essential in the diet as energy source but having too many of lipids can put up you in the risk of uh, heart disease and liver disease and a build up of LDL cholesterol can clog your artery and the clog can narrow the opening of the artery and can lead to the heart attack and food rich in lipids, uh, egg, cheese and fatty cheese are some examples for the lipids. Uh. Now let us see about the proteins. Uh. Proteins are the, pr proteins are derived from the Greek word, from the word proteos meaning the first rank. It is invented in 1838 by the Swedish scientist uh, to reflect the importance of this group of molecules. Uh. A stretch of DNA called a gene carries information to build a block of protein. Protein is the building block of life. Every cell in the body containing proteins. And uh, protein is important in the development and growth of children, adult, and in the pregnant women. So, now let us see about the advantages of the proteins. It reduces the appetite and hunger levels, reduces the desire and carvings of the late night snacking, good for bones, and uh, does not harm the healthy kidneys, helps to weight loss, and helps in digestion. Now, let us see about the disadvantages of protein. Now, extra protein may impose a metabolic burden on liver, kidneys, and uh, heart, and uh, it can impose a, it can put up you in the risk of coronary heart disease due to the intake of saturated fat and saturated uh, with fatty acids, uh, and also cancer. Now, let us move into the biochemistry. Biochemistry is a discipline of chemistry that deals with the chemical compositions of living organisms. It studies the important chemical process and the living organic cells. It, biochemistry is a subdivision of biology and chemistry that can be further divided into three segments. They are structural biology, enzymology, and metabolism. By the end of the 20th century, these three variants have been together able to together able to explain the process of living. And uh, biochemistry is a study of uh, structures of the human organisms uh, and the living cells. Uh, it also investigates the human body's muscles and the bones. Uh, in a biochemistry class, a student can learn how cells are made and how blood works. Uh, it also looks at the how living things are made, how cells are made, and uh, what chemicals they have. And biochemistry helps us in understanding the biological process which undergoes the chemical basis uh, that leads to the understanding of tissues, organs uh, and uh, bones. However, biochemistry can be alternatively be defined as the biological uh, molecular biology of the molecular biological phenomena. And then uh, biochemistry is uh, study of structure of living organisms and this interactions of molecular macromolecules. Uh, Macromolecules include of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid, which we have discussed already that is present in your body. Biochemistry is utilized in the research of uh, botany, and research in the field of botany, medicine, and pathological research, gene enhancement, etc. Biochemistry is currently uh, working, in, working on the secret to find out the secret of life secret of life and uh, it helps us to understand the whole working organisms and then um, 
Now let us see about the scope of a biochemistry. The evolution of life that took us from the microorganisms to the apes and to the human beings which we have now become. This all falls under the one of the branches of chemistry. And all the tools that you see under the field of uh, medical sciences uh, refer to the biochemical. The evolution, uh, biochemical. Biochemistry, see, uh, biochemistry is highly uh, vital role in the vital role in the world and uh, biochemistry students can aspire for bigger roles in uh, industries uh, as well as in academia. Biotechnology is using the engineering, engineering DNA which is the most sophisticated branches of chemistry. And um, lastly one more branch I would like to explain is the medical biochemistry which deals with both the diseases and the health. Every body conditions that the human body faces is the medical uh, Human body basis. Human body faces is the biochemical, because every form of illness due to the molecules that are present in your body. Now let us discuss about the various uh, scope present in the different fields. First, uh, medical science. In order to understand the various aspects of medical science, uh, like drug development, immunology, pathology and pharmacy, vaccine development, etc. It is important to have the detailed knowledge about uh, biochemistry. After completing the bachelor's in this subject, one can look out for a marketing executive uh, to the uh, lab assistant in the government or private organizations uh, or medical coordinator in big pathological chains uh, or various transcriptioners in different healthcare fields. Uh, the clinical test done in the clinical laboratory was the main application of main application area of the biochemistry. Thus one can become as a pathologist related to related to monitoring and screening the patients. And another advanced level of biochemistry is DNA recombinant technology. Thus one can join as a researcher in the research field of research and development field of uh, big pathological chains and uh, pharmaceutical industries. Now let's uh, come to the food industry. To describe the, uh, to describe the food nutrients, uh, uh, nutrients in the food uh, can be determined by the biochemist who, who performs the biochemical test in the laboratory. And then uh, biochemists perform the various uh, studies to calculate the perfect uh, calculation of uh, carbohydrates, lipids and uh, proteins that are found in the food. Uh, Next, uh, let us talk about agriculture. In order to understand the various aspects of uh, medical, uh, medical crops and uh, chemistry in the plant, uh, it is very important to have the need, detailed knowledge about uh, biochemistry. The uh, plant biochemist, a student who pursue for a plant biochemistry can become as a plant scientist and can become, uh, and the main job of the plant scientist is to produce the high yield crops as well as the disease resistant crops. After gaining to the knowledge about uh, biochemistry, one can uh, own their uh, nursery in their homes or in the gardens. Now let us see about the father of biochemistry. Carl Alexander Newberg was an early pioneer in biochemistry and he has sometimes referred to the father of uh, modern biochemistry. His notable contri contribution to science was the discovery of carboxylase and elucidation of alcoholic fermentation which he showed to be the successive step of enzymatic steps. And, um, and uh, Carl, uh, Claude Bernard, uh, who have proved that uh, biochemical process can be reversible, that is conversion of glucose into glycogen and glycogen into glucose. And then um, let's see about uh, importance of biochemistry. Importance of biochemistry in medicine. Undoubtedly, biochemistry is interdisciplinary science uh, uh, which is which makes the bigger role uh, in everyday life and it is important in medical uh, medical science which uh, explains the process of uh, metabolism in the human body and digestion and also muscle construction and relaxation uh, biochemistry explains the role of uh, hormones in the body hormones are often referred to the chemical messenger in your body which uh, carries the information by traveling to these organs and the tissues. And it also helps, with, helps how metabolism works in the human body. Metabolism works uh, in the human body. Metabolism is a set of chemical reactions uh, that are occurring in the living cells and human organisms uh, that converts the 
food into energy that we intake as a food uh, and uh, it is important to understand the disease and developing the treatment uh, now let us uh, see about importance of uh, biochemistry in daily life biochemistry has the major role uh, in the development and uh, development and uh, development in many products of many products used in daily life such as medical products cleaning products and dna recombinant technology which is used to make the food food and uh, food additives and insulins and then uh, let's see about the field of biochemistry biochemistry is a subdivision of biology and chemistry and that can be further divided into three segments that is structural biology enzymology and metabolism by the end of the 20th century these three segments have been together been able to successfully explain the process of living first let's see about structural biology structural biology is a study of uh, how biological molecules are built and in the various uh, imaging techniques uh, scientists can view that uh, view that how molecule how molecules are uh, built how they assembled and um, how they interact with uh, each other and it helps us to understand that uh, how thousands of molecules in the body makes us makes us healthy and also it makes us to understand that misshapen molecules can make us sick now let us see about enzymology uh, it is the enzymology is a protein um, which the, uh, which is the chemical uh, which speed up the chemical reaction that occurs in the cells and the living cells in the uh, living organisms it also uh, it, it is necessary in the functioning of liver and uh, functioning of liver digestion and so on having too many of uh, enzymology or having too less of enzymology uh, can cause the health diseases and then uh, the most important digestive enzymes are amylase maltase lactase lipase protease and sucrase and also enzymology helps us with the breathing uh, nerve function nerve function building of muscles and riding a body of uh, toxins and now let us uh, see about metabolism metabolism refers to the chemical reactions that are occurring in the living organisms it leads to growth and uh, reproduction and also the it allows the uh, human it allows the living organisms uh, to maintain their structures and respond to the surrounding environment uh, and it helps in uh, digestion as converting the food into energy and facilitate the transport of substance between the cells and then principles of metabolism chemical reactions that are occurring within and within the living organism is classified into two types there are anabolism and catabolism anabolism refers to the building of polymers and catabolism refers to the breaking down of polymers to release the energy and then now let's see about uh, biochemist biochemist uh, can perform the research project and perform some uh, laboratory treatments and conducting uh, experiments analyzing data writing scholarly articles uh, and collaborating with other departments and they also uh, use some instruments uh, to find the effect of um, drugs and food in food present in our uh, daily life and then uh, famous biochemist in india radha krishnan was a famous biochemist in india he got several awards in 1981 he got young scientist medal in 1988 he got ias young associate medal and in 1988 he got young scientist award in 1994 he got shanti swarup prize and in 1995 ramo rao ram rao award and advantages of biochemistry we can uh, five important reasons to study biochemistry specialization career opportunities transferable skills innovation understand the molecular basis of life and why biochemistry is important first of all biochemistry can be classified into some branches of chemistry they are physical chemistry general chemistry organic chemistry and analytical chemistry which makes the science important and then uh, second of all biochemistry can be uh, biochemistry can connect the biochemistry with the sub, uh, biochemistry with the organic chemistry which makes the science more essential and then um, 
and then uh, biomolecule is the discipline of uh, chemistry that deals with the chemical compositions of living organism and the surrounding matters uh, it also looks at the human body's uh, muscles uh, and the bones uh, and in a biochemistry class a student can learn how uh, blood works and how uh, cells are made <coughs> and uh, carbohydrates uh, lipids pro lipids proteins and nucleic acids are the essential uh, molecules that uh, our, uh, our body is our body required and um, biochemistry can be uh, alternatively be defined as the molecular biology which can be uh, which can be referred to the molecular macromolism of the biological uh, phenomena and then uh, biochemistry can be uh, used in the utilized in the research field research related to the field of uh, botany medicine and also uh, gene enhancement and pathological research etc and uh, one of the sophisticated branches of biochemistry is the biotechnology which uses the engineered dna technology and uh, every field that you see under the medical science is said to be the uh, biochemical and then uh, and then uh, and uh, in as we came to the conclusion uh, in conclusion biochemistry is the essential part of the science and uh, it gives the foundation of the biological process that are occurring in the life thank you so to one and all present here i am bibin surya a student in grade 11 i am going to take a lecture on the topic of multinational corporation First, let's see about history and evolution of multinational cooperation. History and evolution of multinational cooperation is a fascinating topic that spans several years. MNC have played a significant role in shaping global economy and have undergone significant changes over time. Here is an overview of their history and evolution. Origins and early expansion, early 20th century and the rise of American MNCs, post World War II and the globalization. Technological advantages and changing in business model. Origins and early expansion. The origins and early expansion of MNC can be traced back to era of European colonialism. When European countries established trading companies to facilitate international trade and exploit the resources in its colonies. One of the best examples is Dutch East India Company, founded in 1602. It was granted a monopoly on Dutch trade with Asia and become one of the world's first multinational corporation. During industrial revolution in 18th and 19th centuries, MNCs expanded further, driven by advancement in transportation and communication technologies. Companies like British East India Company and Hudson Bay Company emerged as influential MNCs. Early expansion and the rise of American MNCs. In the early 20th century, witnesses the rise of American MNCs fueled by rapid industrialization of U.S. economy. The companies like Ford, U.S. Steel, General Motors become influential MNCs, employing mass production techniques and expanding their operations globally. American MNCs become dominant in many industries such as electronics, automotive, and industries. MNC American MNCs played a crucial role in the post World War II reconstruction. Post World War II and the globalization. The era of globalization provided MNCs to, to expand their operations globally. Establishment of Indian Monetary Front and the World Bank facilitated the international trade and the growth of MNCs. In 1970s and 1980s, witnessed the surge in foreign direct investment. The various countries like Japan and Germany and later emerging economies like India and China began to challenge the dominance of European MNCs, technological advancement and changing in business models. In the late 20th century and the early 21st century, bought a significant technological advancement, particularly in informational technology and telecommunications. MNC star started to focus on knowledge-based industries rather than 
physical production. MNCs began to adopt new organizational structure like virtual teams. Definition of MNCs. MNC is defined to be an organization operating in several countries but managed from one country. Neil H. Jacobi was a university professor, said that a multinational company owns and manages the business in two or more countries. Example of MNCs are Amazon, Google, Apple. Amazon is an American company, Apple is a Cal Californian company, but it operates in several countries. MNCs produce the uh, new products in its home country and manufacture or market them in foreign countries. Types of multinational companies. Decentralized multinational company, global centralized multinational company, international companies, transnational enterprises, regional MNCs, vertical MNCs, and manufacturing MNCs. Decentralized MNCs. The, the term decentralization means there is no centralized head office. The decentralization in business means where the daily operation and activities were deleted by top management to lower and middle level managers. It allows for rapid expansion as new entities and can be set up quickly throughout the nation. One of the best examples of decentralized multinational corporation is McDonald's store, global centralized corporation. They have central administrative office in its home country. They may outsource the production to developing countries to save time and production cost while making use of ideal resources of host country. Example, Apple is a global centralized corporation that may outsource the production of iPhone components like China, Mongolia, and Korea, international companies. It utilizes the resources from parent country to develop new products their future that will help them to gain a competitive edge in local markets. For example, each Coca-Cola brand can develop its own product design and marketing campaigns to attract local customers. Transnational enterprises. The transnational enterprises have decentralized organizational structure with branches in several countries. The parent country has little control over the foreign branches. Nestle is an example of transnational enterprises with decentralized organizational structure. Examples of transnational companies are Nike, Panasonic, Ford, and etc. Regional MNCs. Regional MNCs operate in specific regions or continents and have significant presence within the geographical area. For example, Tata Group of Industries from India is a type of regional MNCs. Vertical MNCs. Vertical MNCs are involved in the various stages of production from raw material extraction to final product distribution. They often have subsidiaries or operation in different countries to leverage cost and access to resources. Example, companies in oil and gas Mining. Manufacturing MNCs. Manufacturing MNCs are primarily engaged in producing physical goods. Production facilities in multiple countries to take advantage of the resources. Companies like Toyota, Samsung, and Nestle fall into this category. And one more type of MNC is called service MNCs. M service MNC provide services like informational technology and finance. Features of multinational companies. Large volume of sales, unity of control, economic power, aggressive marketing, high quality product. Aggressive marketing. MNC spend a lot of money on marketing their products in both parent and host countries. High quality product. MNCs enjoy the worldwide rep reputation and maintain the superior quality of the product. Unity of control. Multinational companies often have their headquarters in its home country, while international brands operating separately, it must follow the general framework of multinational corporations. Economic power. MNCs have high economic power due to their vast 
turnovers, large volume of sales. The customers, MNCs have customers worldwide, so it generates a lot of revenue each year. Multinational companies strategies. It means standardization. It means offering the same products and services with little variation in order to save cost and achieve economics of scale. Adaptation. It is the opposite strategy in which firms adapt their products, offering to match the taste and preference of local customers. This way, the product, products and services have higher chance of acceptance. Logos of some MNCs. Logos play an important role in MNCs to keep, uh, it is the identity for the multinational corporation. Challenges of multinational corporation. Cultural difference, different political and legislative environment, long supply chain, competition in global market, currency fluctuation. Different political and legislative environment. MNCs should understand that each company have its own import and export policy, long supply chain. MNC should also the steady supply of goods and services from one country to another country. It may be complex and time consuming. Competition in global market. It is more competitive to competitive with other global MNCs. Advantages. Low-cost labor, high-quality product, technical development, proper use of ideal resources. Improvement of standard in living, end of local monopolies, improvement in balance of payment position. Promotion of international brotherhood and culture. Low-cost labor. MNCs often set up facilities in low-cost countries and produces goods and services at lower cost. It, it gains cost advantages and sells its products and services of good quality at low cost. China, Taiwan, and India are the, some of the countries low cost ava labor available, quality product. The resources and experience empathize of MNCs of, in the sphere of research development enables the host country to Establish its research and development, which helps it producing quality goods. Technical development. MNC carried advantage of technical development of 10 host countries. MNC are a vehicle for the transference of technical development from one country to another country. It may be direct transfer from parent company's head office to local subsidiaries of host country. Proper use of ideal resources. MNCs are in the position to properly utilize the ideal physical and human resources of host country. This results in increase in the national income of the host country. The uh, resources which are not in use is called ideal resources. Improvement in standard of living by providing superior quality products and services, MNCs help to maintain the standard of living of people of host country. It decreases the power, increases the purchasing power worldwide. It also increases the per capita income. Promotion of international brotherhood. Through their international dealings, MNCs promote international brotherhood and culture and pave a way for world peace and prosperity by imports and export, end of local monopolies. The entry of MNCs leads to competition in host countries, local monopolies, either state start improving their products or reduce their prices. That's MNCs put an end to exploitative trade practices of local monopolies. Improvement of balance of payment position. MNCs help the host country to increase their exports such as they help the host country to improve upon its balance of payment position. Disadvantages of multinational company. Danger for domestic industries, careless exploitation, danger to independence, transfer of outdated technology, no benefit to poor people, 
deprivation of job opportunity, selfish promotion of alien culture, danger for domestic industries. MNCs, because of their vast economic power, pose a danger to domestic industries which are still in process of development. Domestic industries cannot face the challenges possessed by multinational cooperation. Many industries have to wind up as a result of threat from multinational cooperation. Transfer of outdated technology. When MNCs transfer outdated technology to the host and it serves no purpose at all. No benefit to poor people. MNCs produce only the things which are used by the rich people. Therefore, poor people do not get any benefit generally out of multinational corporations. Danger to independence. Initially, MNCs help the government of host country people to in the number of ways and then gradually start in interfering in political affairs of host country. There is an implicit danger to independence of host country in the long run. And deprivation of job opportunity. MNCs may not generate the job opportunities to the people of home countries. It may be migrate to the another country where the low cost labor is available. Misuse the migratory status. MNCs are powerful economic entities. They can afford to bear losses for long while in the hope of earning huge profit. They have entered local competition and achieved the monopoly. Careless exploitation. MNCs tend to use resources of host country carelessly. They cause rapid depletion of some non-renewable natural resources of host country, MNCs cause permanent damage to the economic development of the host country, selfish promotion of alien culture. MNCs tend to promote alien culture to sell their products. They make the people to forget about their own cultural heritage. Promotion of Foreign culture by MNCs is injurious to health of the people. These are the list of in Indian subsidiaries companies of foreign MNCs. F for example, foreign MNCs, Bada Corporation operates in India, Colgate, Sony, Suzuki, and Timex. List of multinational companies and their logos. Micromax, headquarters is in Gugargaon. Hero Motocrop, New Delhi, Bajaj, Pune, Britannia, Bangalore, TVS, Chennai, Tata, Mumbai, Infosys, Bangalore. In conclusion, MNC developed their products in its home country and market and manufacture them in host country. Host country. It generates at least 25 percent of its revenue from other than its parent country. In conclusion, the MNCs generally provide several advantages to the host nation. We cannot deny. It may be useful to the host nation. In managing our business internationally, we, ha we have to take a note on pros and cons of managing international business. Thank you. Greetings and a warm welcome to one and all present here. My name is A. Thirimeni because of grade 12 BME, studying in Frontline Academy, Matriculation, Higher Secondary School, Thirupu. I am here to take a lecture about handloom and give a awareness about the handloom. Nowadays, handlooms are decreasing faster because of modern technology developments. After the introductions of the power loom and uh, technological developments, handlooms are more even decreasing faster. My topic is handloom for today and legacy for tomorrow. Summary of my contents are introductions of a handloom, history of a handloom, 
importance of a handloom, advantages of a handloom, and disadvantages of a handloom, legit handloom fabrics, dis, uh, power loom, importance of a power loom, comparisons of a handloom and power loom. First of all, what is handloom? A fabric should be woven with a weaver by using their hands without using an energy. It is called a handloom. Introductions of a handloom. Handloom refers to the traditional methods of weaving fabrics, which involves interlocking of threads, horizontal threads, and vertical threads to create various patterns and designs. Horizontal threads. Horizontal threads is used to weave left and right or side to side. This is also called as a weft thread. Horizontal threads is most important thread used in a handloom weaving because they weave a single thread to weave left and right. Vertical thread. Vertical thread is used to weave up and down or front and back. This is also called as a warp thread. Vertical thread can be rotated. If the warp thread or warp thread, horizontal thread and vertical thread can attain a certain distance, Vertical th uh, weavers use it to rotate the vertical thread and make further works. A handloom of fabric that can be woven with the aid of using loom or with the aid of using hand. Handloom is a name given to the fabric that is woven by a machine operator, weaving machine, or loom. It is also referred as a hand woven. Hand woven refers to only hand is used to woven a fabric, then the fabric is known as a hand woven fabric. Handloom is came into existence in the 19th century after the British started cultivating their cotton yarns in their factories by using automatic machines, by dumping our weavers to make a fabrics in their sectors. Further introductions about the handloom. Handloom weaving should be practiced for their centuries and known for its craftsmanship, culture significance, and sustainability. Craftsmanship refers to a quality product should be woven with the weavers, uh, then the workmanship is known as a craftsmanship. Uh, also, culture significance. Culture significance refers to handloom always rooted with their culture and it's known as a culture significance. Sustainability. Handloom always gives 100% surety in their quality. So, handloom product is also called as a sustainability product. Textiles occupies a unique place in our country. It is the oldest and traditional works done by Indians. Handloom is the one of the earliest to came into existence. Total industrial productions, handloom consists of 14% of a total production and 30% of a total exports from India to worldwide. Handloom is the second largest employment generation after agriculture. Handloom gives value for their quality and assurance for their durability because skilled workers only use it to create a handloom fabrics. Semi-skilled worker doesn't use it to create a handloom fabrics. Indian sector consists of four important segments. Modern textile mills, independent power loom, handloom and garments. Nowadays, modern textile mills and garments are mostly prefer to make a fabrics faster. Here, we can see about a basic steps involved in a handloom weaving. In a handloom weaving, the weavers using the um, weavers used to weave up fabrics by using a manually and controlling each step of the weaving process, which involves interlocking of threads, horizontal threads, and vertical threads. Setting up of the warp thread, setting up of the warp thread. A loom holds the warp thread under a tensile pressure. Uh, a weft thread interweaving over the warp thread and above the warp thread. It is done repeatedly to create a fabric by using a weaving shuttle. In a horizontal or weft yarn preparation, traditionally chakras has been used. By using their hands to hold the yarns under a slow tensile pressure and medium tensile pressure is given to the yarn by using a hand. A hank of yarn is used to woven a fabric. Hank of yarn is 
wounded onto a bobbin, then the bobbin is known as a pin. A bobbin is inserted into a shuttle. A shuttle is interweaving over the warp thread and above the warp thread. This is done repeatedly to create a strong and long-lastic fabrics. Passing the weft thread through the warp. This weft thread and warp thread, horizontal thread and vertical thread, is used to create patterns by manipulating the threads continuously. It, it, it controls the each step of the weaving process. It also stepping up of the warp thread. Here we can see about what is handloom weaving. Handloom weaving refers to uh, only hand is used to woven a fabric, then it's called a handloom weaving. Handloom weaving involves intricate designs, textures, color combination, and each piece gets a unique quality. We can divide the intricate designs into two subdivisions, culture identities and aesthetic apparel. Handloom always rooted with their culture and connected with their tradition. So this culture tradition has specific motifs, various symbols, and different patterns. These patterns, motifs, and symbols always connected, uh, always shown their heritage of a community and always shown their individuality of their community and always shown their individuality of their tribe. E Next, uh, after the intricate designs, color combination is the most important thing in handloom weaving because a consumer first prefer a cost of a material, color combination of the material, and a quality of the material. Handloom gives a higher, quality, higher cost because it is a complicated work. They use it to weave a single thread also. A cost is higher rate in a handloom weaving. It's a quality. Handloom provides 100% quality consistently. So next, color combination is the most important thing used in a handloom weaving. Uh, if a color combination is good in a handloom weaving, it results in the mass production of a textiles and it results in the huge production of the sector. A handloom fabric should be seen neatly, beautifully, decently before a customer's view. Each piece gets a unique quality in a handloom weaving. How each piece gets a unique quality? Because they're using their hands to weave, and they take utmost care to weave a single thread also. Handloom weaving plays a vital role in livelihood of many artisans and weavers' community. How handloom plays a vital role? A handloom machine needs two weavers to weave a fabrics. It provides a workmanship for the weavers, and it results in the livelihood of many artisans and weavers' communities. Handloom supports local economy. How handloom supports local economy? Handloom doesn't need any machine, doesn't need any power, doesn't need any electricity, and doesn't need any energy to work. Handloom supports local economy. Handloom is the timeless art of Indians. Here we can see about handloom weaving. Handloom weaving preserves culture tradition uh, because handloom weaving always rooted with their tradition or connected with their culture, so it preserves cultural tradition. Promotes sustainable practices. Handloom is a complicated work, so it should be practiced for the centuries. It gives a sustainable practices. Why handloom fabrics always give 100% quality in their durability and a quality? Because they are using natural fibers to weave a single thread also. Then uh, only dyeing, they use chemicals to change the color of the fabrics. Uh, uh, natural fibers is give a hundred percentage quality for uh, handloom fabrics. Uh, compared to mass production textiles, handloom brings uh, less energy consumption. Uh, a labor of love as much as it's the so source of livelihood. Ladies and gentlemen, today I would be like to share your kind attention for the timeless art of handloom weaving and the profound role in preserving a cultural tradition. Handloom is not just a craft, it is an living heritage. Here we can see about history of a handloom. The first handloom machine was created in a country, China. It is also named as earliest loom. With the invention of the sericulture, a lady, Hisling Xing, uh, wife of Yellow Emperor, 3000 BC, still debated. The earliest loom is emerged across South Asian countries worldwide. Uh, that are Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, Leo, Burnie, Malaysia, and more countries are separated, emerged across South Asian countries. 
here we can see about further history about a hand loom. A first hand loom machine was a first hand loom machine was invented in the year 1801 by Joseph Mario Jacquard. The, and this machine has named his name uh, Jacquard machine. In olden days, the earliest loom used punch holes to create uh, complicated patterns and designs. Uh, in that days, there is no technology to weave. Only hand to weave a complicated and intricate design should be weaved by a weaver. Uh, hand loom fabric should be a softer quality. It gets a softer quality and a long elastic quality. In olden days, earliest weaving machine have get affordable higher valued pattern cloth. This also separated over many countries like Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, Leo, Burney, Malaysia, and etc. Here we can see about importance of a hand loom. Hand loom plays a significant role in several aspects ranging from cultural heritage, craftsmanship, to sustainable and economic empowerment. Here are some key reasons why handloom is most important. Cultural heritage, craftsmanship and artistics. Third, sustainable and eco-friendly. Fourth, economic empowerment. Fifth, social impact. Sixth, fashion and designing. Let's see brief note about the importance of a handloom in a cultural heritage. Handloom always deeply rooted with their culture and connected with their tradition. So in every region around the world, handloom represents the unique artistic expressions, weaving techniques, and designs that are made by passing down through generation. Handloom is a complicated work done by Indians. Uh, it reflects the cultural identities, symbolisms, uh, stories, for a specific communities, contributing uh, to the preservation of promotion, preservation of promotion to the cultural heritage. Importance of a handloom, craftsmanship art and artistics. Handloom provides a labor-intensive craft. Uh, it requires skills, dexterity, and craft artistic flair. This uh, handloom is a complicated work and a complex work done by a weavers. So it passed down through generation. It should be practiced for the centuries. Uh, while seeing the fabric, we can identify their color combination and their culture identities. Testament to the cra craftsmanship uh, the cre and creativity of the weavers. Uh, it's showcasing their expertise and uh, individuality and experience of the weavers. Craftsmanship refers to a quality product should be produced by a weavers, uh, produced by a weavers, by a quality product is known as craftsmanship. Importance of a handloom, sustainability and eco-friendly. Handloom is typically made for natural fibers like cotton, silk, wool and linen. Handloom, compared to mass production industries, Handloom provides a less energy consumption because it is a manually working device. Has lower carbon footprints. Uh, handloom should be practices for the centuries and known for its craftsmanship. So it using organic or locally sourced materials and natural rice, contributing to the promotion and the preservation of eco-friendly and sustainable materials. Sustainability refers to a handloom gives 100% surety in their quality constant, constantly and eco-friendly. Handloom is a uh, non-pollutional device. It doesn't need any electricity to weave, so it also called as an eco-friendly. Importance of a handloom, economic empowerment. Ha handloom provides livelihood opportunity for many artisans and weavers communities, especially in the rural areas. How it provides a livelihood, then uh, handloom machine needs two workers. Compared to power loom, handloom gets uh, more workers and it provides a workmanship and artistic flair for the workers. Source of income generation of the economic empowerment, particularly for women uh, who are involved in handloom weaving, who have significant role in handloom weaving, supporting while the cooperatives and the, some communities have supports for the handloom weaving, the growth of sustainable and it results in the growth of sustainable and rural economy. Importance of a handloom, social impact. Handloom gives a foster a sense of communities and a social cohesion. It brings together weavers, 
dyers, spinners, and other artisans. They collaborate and share knowledge by, the, by other weavers, contributing to the preservation and promotion of the intergenerational learning. Clusters and cooperatives always support to the artist, artistics and weavers communities. It gives a fair trade practices. Importance of a handloom in fashion and designing. Handloom gives higher value for their fashion and designing industries for aesthetic apparel, craftsmanship, and authenticity. Handloom gives unique, unique artistic expressions, weaving techniques, and designs that are passed down through generation, unique and sustainable clothing. It results in accessories and home furniture and recognized globally to the embodiment of ethical fashion and conscious consumption. Fashion and designing, it also plays an important role in a handloom weaving. Advantages of a handloom fabrics. Uh, here are some summary of advantages of a handloom fabric. First, uniqueness. Second, variety. Third, quality. Fourth, comfort. Fifth, skills preservation. Fifth, important source of livelihood. Sixth, eco-friendly. Advantages of a handloom uniqueness. No two handloom fabrics are the same. It is the importance of the fabrics, and each item gets a work of art. Unique display craftsmanship. Each, ha each weavers have get a each tail to weave a fabrics, and it gets a unique display craftsmanship. Intricate handloom fabrics. Compared to power loom, hand loom gets a small and a short type of intricate designs, but the weavers can use intricate designs by manipulating the threads continuously. Beyond the scope of machine-made weavers, advantages of a hand loom variety. There are many designs, but while seeing the fabric, we can identify the, which culture of the fabric is sustainable. Variety of designs that are made, mostly they preferred peacock, mango, and uh, culture-oriented designs. Control of the creative process. Each process should be controlled in a handloom weaving and stepping up of the warp thread. The process of, process of handloom weaving is a loom holds the warp thread under the tensile pressure with a strong. The weft thread interweaving over the warp thread and above the warp thread. This is done repeatedly to create a fabric by using a shuttle. In the horizontal or Viftian preparation, traditionally, chakras has been used. By using their hands to weave a fabric, which is given to the yarn to the fabric. Uh, encourages to explore new ideas, uh, innovation, weaving patterns, and designs. Advantages of a handloom, quality. While most of the, weaver, while most of the customers preserving hand handloom weaving first because handloom weaving gives 100% charity uh, consistently made with higher quality natural fiber here natural fibers plays a more important role in a handloom weaving it gives a quality for their fabrics resilient and last for their long time innovation weaving patterns and designs are also made by a handloom weaving close attention to the detail Advantages of a handloom, comfort and skill preferred. Handloom weaving, uh, in the earliest loom, they preferred handloom for their comfortable. It gets a softer quality to weave a fabrics uh, and skill preservation. Handloom weaving does not easily to learn easily. It is a complicated work done by and weavers. It gets comfort, feel better against the skin. And uh, second point, ab absorbent and breathable. Go fabrics, especially for summer. It involves the sweats and waters, and it get a comfortable clothing in a handloom weaving. Skill preservations, passed down through generation. Handloom, handloom is the hardest work done by Indians. It is passed down to generations, creating a sense of purpose. Advantages of a handloom, important source of livelihood. Handloom plays a 77 percentage of weavers are women. It is a, uh, especially for women, it plays a who plays a significant role in their handloom weavings. Advantages of a handloom, eco-friendly. Handloom weaving is not just made by any power, 
a handloom doesn't need any electricity to make a pollution. It is an eco-friendly device. Uh, without using any pollution, they can make a sustainable products. Natural fibers using biodegradable. Uh, fiber dyes sourced from a natural algae. Less wasters. Disadvantages of a handloom. There are four types of disadvantages in a handloom. Uh, imperfection, limit quantities, expensive, time consumption. Handloom takes more time to weave a fabric. Minimum handloom takes two days to complete a one sari to complete a one fabric. Uh, and expensive. Uh, uh, weavers using their hands to weave a single thread also. And they take utmost care to weave a single thread also. So it gets uh, ex expensive. Limit qualities. Handloom made for uh, several days, so in one week they covered only three fabrics, so it gets a limit quantities. Imperfection. While uh, power loom get a perfection because they are machined. Handloom is weaving by a hand, so it is an imperfection. Disadvantages of a handloom: imperfection, limit quantities. Imperfection. Limit quantities, handloom products should be made of 5.12 meters per day. Power loom pro product can be made 50 meters per day. So it gets uh, limit qualities. Uh, disadvantages of a handloom, expensive and time consumption. Uh, expensive, bit or a precious side. Focus on the delivering high quality products. Uh, so it takes uh, expensive cost for the weavers. In any functions, they for mostly preferred handloom fabrics only because it get uh, long elastic fabrics with the whole, with a long time of period. Time consumption, take a lot longer and to create a fabric. Yeah, in horizontal thread weaving, they make a more time. Uh, lefty, uh, they move, need to weave a single thread to left and right and right to left. This is done repeatedly. It takes more time consumption. Power loom. Uh, power loom is a machined loom. It is the key development after industrialization. The first power loom machine was created in the year 1784 by Rudyard Cartwright. And this machine was refined over next 47 years. After the Hogwood and Bullock Company had created the machine as fully automated um, in the year 1836, in the year 1836, and named the machine as Lakshadip Beam. Power Loom is a machined weaving machine. It is the it works uh, mechanical power to automate the process of weaving fabrics. It revolutionized the industrial sector to the industrial revolution. Significantly placed the wider, significantly placed the uh, significantly placed the huge role in the handloom weaving and reduces the and reduces the uh, power. Uh, handloom is uh, a power loom should be. Same principles as a handloom, works as same principles as a handloom, but power loom needs powered by steam engines, electric motors, or other sources of energy. Power, power loom can weave at much faster rate than a handloom. It results in the higher production in a co communities and a company. Ha power loom should be designed to handle a large scale manufacturing for a higher volume rates and lower cost. It gives consistent quality for the it gives consistent quality for the power looms and uniform fabrics. Importance of the power loom. Here are seven important types of a power loom that are increased production efficiency, cost efficiency, consistency and uniformity, technological advancement, scalability and flexibility, employment opportunities, and innovation and design possibilities. Importance of the power loom, production efficiency. In power loom, a power loom get a higher production efficiency compared to hand loom. How a power loom get a higher production efficiency? Power loom works by a machined. It needs electricity, powered, and steam engine to work a fabrics. Power loom get reduces the time. If the time has reduces in the power loom, it results in the higher production. A higher, if a higher production is if a higher production is get to a company, if a higher production is involved in a company, uh, higher product volumes and a lower cost. Uh, in uh, introductions of a handloom, I would say it, uh, power loom plays a power loom plays a key development after the industrialization. Same here, power loom plays a crucial role in the industrialization and mass production in the textiles. Uh, 
power loom have seen here and there and everywhere. So it is uh, availability in everywhere. Affordable clothing. Power loom get a softer quality, so it's easy to wear. Uh, customers mostly preferred power loom fabrics to weave, so it is affordable clothing. Importance of the power loom, cost efficiency. Uh, a company, if a company had produces the more amount of uh, power loom fabrics, uh, the power loom fabric should be sold in the market. Sold in the market. It it results in the uh, huge amount of money transaction. It also results in the uh, it also results in the huge production for the company. If a huge production occurs in the company, the weavers use it to weave a long period of time, a more machine needers, and a more shift to weave fabrics. Le reduce less labor's cost. Compared to power loom, hand loom needs less labor's. Hand loom needs uh, two weavers for one machine, but power loom needs one weavers for uh, four machines. A power loom can weave fabrics per day. Two, weave, two fabrics can made by a power loom. So labor cost has reduced. Large scale manufacturing. Power loom is a machined loom, so it is this works like a work by electricity, so it produces the large-scale large manufacturing and for a wide customer's base. Importance of the power loom, consistency and uniformity. Ensuring consistent quality. Only a weavers used to fix a design and monitor the machine. A semi-skilled operator can also weave the power loom fabrics. Power loom fabrics, previous control over weaving parametrics, standardized fabrics with minimum variations. Importance of the power loom, technological advancement. After the technological advancement, if the company had produced more amount of fabrics, they need the technological advancement. Automate loom control systems, uh, computerized designs, advanced monitoring machines, quick fabric color changes. Nowadays, CNC machines are mostly preferred in other countries. They need to put a coding for the CNC machines. The, the machine have give a uh, quick fabric color changes, automated error detection, uh, reducing production time, optimizing output. Importance of the power loom, scalability and flexibility. It gives flexibility in terms of fabric types, widths, and designs. Customized and versatility in the production. Importance of the power loom, employment opportunity. A, a company had get a higher production, they need more weavers to weave a fabrics. Semi-skilled operator can give a opportunity for their livelihood of many artisans and weavers communities. Job opportunity is associated sector. Machine manufacturing, textile engineering, and technological developments also include in employment opportunities. Importance of the power loom, innovation, and design possibilities. Creations of interlag in Intricate designs. Compared to hand loom, power loom can create more intricate designs because they are machined. Complex patterns and various fabric textile. Detailed and precious motifs. Hand loom and power loom comparisons. Uh, hand loom is operation, opera, operations. Hand loom is a manually used device. Power loom is a powered by e engines or motors. Uh, speed and production, operators at a slow pace, operates at a much faster rate, uh, used for small scale production, used for large scale manufacturing, requires less energy consumption, may raise concern about environmental impact. Uh, in conclusion, I have said about the quotes, a long life, a long journey will start with a single step. Handloom should be, handloom should be Handlooms should be give importance uh, like a power loom. Nowadays, handlooms are decreasing faster. Uh, uh, thank you. A warm greetings to one and all present here, and welcome you all to this wonderful occasion. Let me introduce myself. I am Siddharth from Grade NC in the Frontline Academy, Matriculation, Higher Secondary School, Tirupur. Today, I am here to give a lecture on the topic: the wired body, brain to body connection, and secrets of neural communication. Today's lecture, I divided it into three sessions. The first session is consists of introduction part, types of nervous system, brain, parts of the brain, and spinal cord. Now, we can see about the introduction part. Before entering to the introduction part, that some of them will be having a confusion, that is, what is a wired body? 
a wired body is nothing but the nervous system. Now, we can see about the introduction part. One of the characteristic features of all living organisms is to respond to stimuli. Stimulus refers to the changes in the environmental condition that are detected by the receptors present in our body. All living organisms show their response to the different kinds of stimulus like light, heat, cold, smell, touch, etc. For example, withdrawal of eyes. When we touch a heat object or closing the eyes when flashed with the bright light, in the condition of heat or light is the stimulus to which the body shows its response. To provide a correct response, it is necessary that various cells and organs should be worked together in a proper coordinated manner. In animals, including human beings, the coordination between various cells and organs is essential for their diverse activities and to maintain physiological balance called homostatuses, powers of connectivity, nervous system enables the communication between different parts of our body, master mind of control. Nervous system coordinate and regulate our body functions. Gateway to precipitation. Nervous system is allowing us to experience the world through our senses. Now, we can see about the types of nervous system. In human beings, the nervous system are classified into three types. They are central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and autonomous nervous system. Central nervous system. The central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. Central nervous system takes the sensory information and process that information and send it out to the motor signal, which involves all the nerve outside that carries the messages to the central nervous system. Now, we can see about the very important part of the central nervous system, that is brain. A brain is covered with meninges. The three types of meninges are dura matter, arachnoid membrane, and pia matter. Dura matter. Dura matter is the outermost thick fibrous membrane and arachnoid membrane. Arachnoid membrane is the middle thin vascular membrane that provides web-like cushions. And pia matter. Pia matter is the innermost thin delicate membrane that richly supplied with blood. Now, we can see about the three parts of the brain. They are forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain. The forebrain is made up of two parts, namely cerebrum and diacephalon. Cerebrum. Cerebrum is the largest part that presents in our human brain. It's forming nearly two-thirds of the brain. And the cerebrum is responsible for the thinking, intelligence, consciousness, willpower, and etc. Diacephalon. Diacephalon acts as a primary relax and processing center for autonomic control and sensory information. Midbrain. The midbrain is located between thalamus and hindbrain. The Midbrain control visual and auditory reflexes. Hindbrain. The hindbrain is forming nearly three, three distinct components, namely cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata. Cerebellum. Cerebellum is the second largest part that presents in our human brain. And it coordinates voluntary movement and also maintains body balance. Pons. Pons is a Latin word meaning bridge. Its layer neurons signals between cerebellum, spinal cord, mid, midbrain, and cerebrum. It controls respiration and sleep cycles. Medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is responsible for the control of heartbeat, respiration, and contracts of, contraction of blood vessels, respectively. And it is also controlled vomiting and salivation. Now, we can see about the spinal cord. Spinal cord is a cylindrical canal that lying in a vertebral column and it is also covered by meninges. It extends from the lower end of medulla oblongata to the first lumbar wall. Now, we can see about the functions of spinal cord. There are three primary roles of spinal cord. First, it to send motor signals from brain to the body and to send sensory information from body to the brain and also coordinate reflexes. Here are pictures of central nervous system. It is the pituitary gland and corpus callosum and cerebellum vertebral column and spinal cord. Now, we can see about the peripheral nervous system. The organs of the peripheral nervous system are nerves and ganglia. Nerves are the bundles of nerve fiber 
much like muscles are the bundles of muscle fiber. Spinal nerve extends from the central nervous system to the peripheral organs such as muscles or glands. The, the peripheral nervous system are in the form of nerve, nerve arising from the brain and spinal cord. The nerve arising from the brain are called spine, cranial nerves and the nerve arising from the spinal cord are called spinal nerves. In men, there are 33 pairs of cranial nerves and 12 pairs of spinal nerves. Here is the picture of peripheral nervous system. It is the ganglion nerves and there is the upside of central nervous system pictures. Now, we can see about the autonomous nervous system. The autonomous nervous system is a part of peripheral nervous system. The autonomous nervous system is otherwise called as visceral nervous system. It regulates the internal visceral organs such as muscles or glands with the help of its two distinct components, namely muscles or glands. It is responsible for the body functions such as heartbeat, blood flow, breathing and digestion. And the autonomous nervous system is made up of two components, namely sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Now we are entering to the second session. The second session is consists of how is the nervous system is made up of the three types of nervous tissues and structure of neurons. Now we can see about the how is the nervous system is made up of. The nervous system is made up of nervous tissues. The ner three types of nervous tissue are neuron, neuroglia and nerve fiber, a neuron. A neuron are otherwise called as nerve cell. They are non-existing and supporting cell of the nervous system. It is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. It is the longest cell that presents in a body, its length about 100 micrometer. Now, we can see about the neuroglia. Neuroglia are otherwise called as clear cell. It is the, it, they are non-existing and supporting cell of the nervous system. They do not initiate or conduct nerve impulses. Now, we can see about the nerve fiber. Nerve fiber are a numerous branch process of the nervous system. A number of nerve fiber are bundled up together to form nerves. Now, we are going to see about the very important cell of the nervous system, that is a neuron. A neuron typically consists of three basic parts, namely cyton, dendrons, and axon. Cyton. A cyton are otherwise called a cell body, or pericardian. It has a central nucleus with abundant cytoplasm called neuroplasm and the cytoplasm has large granule body called nestle cell granules and other cell organs like ribosomes, isosomes, endoplasmic reticulum and etc. The neuron do not have ability to divide themselves. Dendrons. The dendrons project from the surface of the cell body. They conduct nerve impulse towards the cell body and it receives the input from the other, other neuron and carry those signals to the cell body. Now we can see about the axon. Axon are the single elongated slender projection. At the end of axon terminates as a fine branches which terminates into knob like swellings called synaptic knob. And the cytoplasm of the axon are called axoplasm and plasma membrane of the axon are called axolemma. Now, we can see about the types of neuron. There are, the neurons are classified into two types based on their structure and function. Structurally, the neurons are classified into three types. They are unipolar neuron, bipolar neuron, and multipolar neuron. Unipolar neuron, the only one no process that arises from the cyton which act as a both axon and dendron. Bipolar neuron, the two nerve process that arise from the cyton, which one act as an axon while another one act as a dendron. Multipolar neuron, the cyton give many axons and dendrons. The unipolar neuron located in the early embryos but not in adult. Bipolar neuron located in the retina of eye. And the Multipolar neuron located in the cerebral cortex of the brain. Now, we can see about the functions of neuron. Functionally, the neurons are classified into three types. 
they are sensory neuron, motor neuron, and association neuron. Sensory neuron. Sensory neuron carry the impulse from the sense organ to the central nervous system. It is responsible for the transmitting the information. It transmits the information from receptors, receptors in the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. And motor neuron. Motor neuron carry the command from the central nervous system to the effector organs such as muscles or glands. Overall, motor neuron comprise the various various information controlled. And association neuron. Association neuron carry the information from the and association neuron conduct nerve impulse in the middle of sensory neuron and motor neuron. Now we can see a very small example on functions of neuron. When we touch a very hot band, the stimulus is here, which is detected by the receptor called heat receptor or thermoreceptor in our arm. The stimulus is transferred to the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron carry the command to the spinal cord. The spinal cord interprets the sensory information and convert it to the relay neuron. Relay neuron in turn and trigger it to the motor neuron. Motor neuron convey the message to the muscles. A muscle in our arm is contract each other and we withdraw our hands immediately from the hot pan. In this example, the muscle is an effector organ which is detect, which is respondent to the heat. Now we can see the third session. The third session consists of reflex action, neurons communication, types of nerve fiber, and disorders of nervous system. Now, we can see about the reflex action. The reflex action are classified into two types. They are simple reflexes and acute reflexes. Simple reflexes. These reflexes are inbuilt and unlearned response. Many of the action, action we perform in our day-to-day -day life are called simple reflexes. For example, winking our eyes when dust particle enters, coughing, sneezing, walking, are the examples of simple reflexes. And the simple reflexes is otherwise called as basic reflexes. Now, we can see about the acquired reflexes. These reflexes are in the results of practice and learning. For example, playing an harmonium by striking a particular key and seeing a music note. Now, you can think also more examples for conditioned reflexes. And now we can see about the neural communication. Now, sir, that is neuron communicate via combinations of electrical or unchemical signals. With the neuron, electrical signals driven by the charged particles also rapid conduction. These neurons are communicated, communicate each other with a special junction called synaptic junction. A synapse is a junction between synaptic hub of axon of one neuron to the dendrites of another neuron. Information is from, passed from one neuron to the another neuron through these junctions. These junctions are called synaptic junction. Now, we can see about the types of nervous, nerve fiber. The nerve fiber are classified into two types based on their absence and presence of nerve fiber. Myelinated nerve fiber. The axon is covered with the myelin sheet or called myelinated nerve fiber. This myelinated nerve fiber protects the axon from mechanical injury. Non-myelinated nerve fiber. The axon do not cover with the myelin sheet or called non-myelinated nerve fiber. And this non-myelinated nerve fiber do not protect the axon from the mechanical injury. Myelinated nerve fiber or non-myelinated nerve fiber forms white matter and gray matter of the brain. This is the, this is the picture of neural communication. This is the synaptic junction through where the one neuron and another neuron is communicate each other. Now, we can see a small recap, recap on our lecture. Before seeing a recap, now we can see a disorders of nervous system. There are Many, many disorders in the nervous system, more than 400 disorders. 
Now I can say a, sm a small common disorders, for example, headaches, strokes, migraines, pericardians, and etc. is examples for disorders of nervous system. Now we can see a small recap on our lecture. The 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 nervous system are classified into three types. They are TNS, PNS, and ANS. A CNS is is called as central nervous system, and PNS called as peripheral nervous system, and the ANS is called as autonomous nervous system. The central nervous system is consists of brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system are in the form of nerve arising from the brain and spinal cord are called cranial nerves and spinal nerves. And the autonomous nervous system is a part of peripheral nervous system and it is also called as visceral nervous system. It regulates the internal visceral organs such as muscles or glands and brain. The brain is covered with the meninges. The three types of meninges are dura mater, arachnoid membrane and pia mater. There are three parts of the brain. They are forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain is made up of cerebrum and diacephalon. Cerebrum is the largest part that presents in our human brain and diacephalon acts as a primary layer. And midbrain is located between thalamus and hindbrain. And the hindbrain is formed of three parts, namely cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata. And cerebellum is the second largest part that presents in our human brain. And pons relay a signal between relay a signal between medulla oblongata, spinal cord, cerebellum, and cerebrum. And medulla oblongata control visual and auditory reflexes. Now and the, there are three types of nervous tissues. There are neuron, neuroglia, and nerve fiber. A neuron are otherwise called as nerve cell, and it is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. A neuroglia, otherwise called as glial cell, they are non-existing and supporting cell of the nervous system. A nerve fiber is a numerous branch process of the nervous system. And the site on the Neuron are typic, typically consist of three basic parts. They are cyton, dendron, and axon. A cyton are always called a cell body or pericardium. It has a internal cell organs. Dendrites, dendrites carry the impulse towards the cell body and it's project from the surface of the cell body. And axon are the single elongated cylinder projection. At the end of axon, terminates as a fine branches which terminate into knob-like swellings called synaptic knob. A neuron are classified into two types based on their structure and function. Structurally, the neurons are classified into three types. They are unipolar neuron, bipolar neuron, and multipolar neuron. Unipolar neuron located in the early embryos, but not in adult. And the bipolar neuron located in the retina of eye. And the multipolar neuron located in the cerebral cortex of the brain. And functionally, the neurons are classified into three types. They are sensory neuron, motor neuron, and association neuron. And the types of nerve fibers. There are two types of nerve fiber based on their presence and absence of myelin sheet. They are myelinated nerve fiber and non-myelinated nerve fiber. These both the nerve fibers are forming gray matter and white matter of the brain. And a spinal cord is a cylindrical canal lying in the vertebral column. It extends from the lower end of the middle oblongata to the first lumbar wall. And now, and, and now we can see about the conclusion. The nervous system is a complete and important system in our body. The system controls and coordinates all the functions in our body. And this has neurons, it, which is the longest cell that presents in our human brain. And thanking for, thanking for spending your golden time to listen my lecture. Thank you. Greetings to all gathered here. I am SK Sairish of Great 10C. I am studying in the Frontline Academy, Matriculation I Secondary School in Tirpur. 
Today, I am here to give a long lecture on a connector world, a closer look at globalization, its impact, benefits, and risk. Today, let us see the agent of the globalization. What is globalization? History of globalization. Factors that are rising for globalization. Types of globalization. Globalization India. Effects of globalization. And advantages and disadvantages of globalization. Let us see what is globalization. Increasing interconnectedness and interdependence among people, business, and countries all over the world. Exchange of goods, service, ideas, and culture across the national boundary by advertisement in technology and communication. World is becoming so interacted and interdependent and barriers to trade, such as barriers to trade and communication as being reduced. Today is a modern era of globalization. There is no such issues between the same state of the same nation. The process of spreading goods, service, ideas, and technology around the global level is termed as globalization. Globalization is a major contribution to the country's economic. It ref globalization refers to the living standard of the people on the country. Under the impact of globalization, uh, new technologies and new in informations have made our life better. Culture, political, and economic are the three types of globalization. Globalization opens new job opportunities for the people and uh, Rich are more profitable and poor are affected due to this globalization. Nowadays, almost everyone is aware of the process of globalization. Now, let us see what uh, the meaning of globalization. The meaning of globalization has been derived from the word globalize, which means the image of an international trade, image of an international trade network system and its economic. It simply means that being an act of globalized. Definition of globalization. The term globalization was de de defined as the process of give and take where new technologies and new informations are being reduced. Now let us see what uh, history of globalization. The, the term globalization has been derived from the professor Theoden Levy. This has been classified into three types, namely archaic globalization, proto-globalization, and modern globalization. Achai globalization. The, pro the early form of globalization, there is a commercial link between the Roman Empire, Parthian Empire, and Han Dynasty made a commercial link between these powers as inspired by the Kingdom of Silk Roads. The Islamic age group was also an important stage of globalization. Proto-globalization. This is the second phase, namely proto-globalization. In the 17th century, Globalization has made as a private company, phenomenally like British East India Company, was discovered as the first multinational company around the world. Modern globalization. This is the third phase, namely modern globalization. Between the 19th century and 20th century, there is a huge scientific difference among the people of the many countries. People have been trading goods and services for thousands of years by Silk Road. This is an example for an earlier trade. After the World War II, there is a huge uh, comment between the 19th century and the 20th century. In the modern era of globalization, globalization had started the late 19th century and earlier the 20th century. Now let us see, the, in the 5th AD, the discovery of Silk Road. In 7th to 15th AD, discovery of Silk Road. In 15th to 18th AD, age of discover. In 1930, first wave of globalization. In 1950, second and third wave of globalization. In 1990, third wave of globalization 4.0. There are three routes, namely Silk Road, Trade Road, and Industrial Road. In Trade Road, they were selling only the spices from China, India, and Indonesia, the three countries who are trading in the Trade Road. Now let us see the factories that are rising for advertisement. Technological advance. Advertisement technology have made easier for people to communicate among the people from the different countries and to have a transportation among the people. Example, shippings, airplanes, the internet, and the social media are the best examples for technological advance. Liberalization of trade. 
Countries have gradually reduced barriers to trade, such as traps and quiets through agreements. Example, WTO, WBG, and IMF. WTO stands for World Trade Organization, and WBG stands for World Bank Group, and IMF stands for International Mobility Fund. Investment and capital flow. In this, there are two groups, namely FDI and FFI. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investment, and FFI stands for Foreign Institutional Investment. This has led to increase foreign direct investment, and also this has led to increase foreign institutional investment. Multinational companies. Multinational companies are the companies that have operations in the multi countries, at least in the one country, other than its home country. Example, Walmart, Toyota, Honda, Amazon are the best examples for multi corporations. Economical growth and development. By 2050, China, India, and Indonesia are to be take three out of five spots in the GDP. GDP means cross domestic product. Cross domestic products is the total value of goods and services produced by a factory within a geographical boundary of a country. It's economic. Globalization of culture. Advance in media and communication technology have made easier to, for people to consume culture products around the world, leading to globalization cultures. Now, now let us see about the trade and traders in South India. There are five traders, namely the Portuguese, the Dutch, the British, the Danes, and the French. Now let us see about the Portuguese. The Portuguese won under the leadership of Vasco da Gama and landed at Calcutta in May 1439. The Dutch, the Dutch captured several walks in 1502 and formed a Dutch East India Company in 1532. The British. On 31st December, Queen Elizabeth granted a character to East India Company. To East India, the Sultan of Golconda was granted an English name, Golden Fireman, which in this, which they were allowing them to freely trade in their kingdom of ports. The Danes. The Danes formed an East India Company and arrived in India at 1660s. The the French. The, French, the first French factory in India was established in 1632 with the permission of the Sultan of Golconda. In, in 1640, the Dutch captured Pondicherry and handed back over to the French. In 1701, Pondicherry became an headquarters of French. Now let us see the impacts and challenges of globalization. Positive impact. This has led in the environmental introduced rapid development, rapid development in the capital market. Living standard has been increased. Due to globalization, more, uh, GDP of the country has been introduced. These introduced new technologies and scientific patterns among this. Challenges of globalization. This has led to, this has led to increase global imbalance Due to globalization, there is a huge work named Child Salvary and Child Library. People have started eating more junk foods, so this caused the degradation of health and spread of disease. Due to this globalization, there is a huge de environmental degradation. Now, let us see the types of globalization. There are five types, namely economic globalization, culture globalization, and political globalization, environmental globalization, and technological globalization. Now let us see about the economic globalization. This type of globalization has been derived by the growth of multinational cooperation and trade agreements and advertisement. For example, free trade agreements, North America trade, uh, trade and Trans-Pacific Partnership. Culture globalization. This has led to increase popular such as music, movies, and profession around the world. Example of culture globalization is Beatles and the BTS are the best example for culture globalization. Political globalization. This type of globalization, the, the development of growing influence on the international organizations such as UN or WHO means government action takes place at the international level. Example, UN, NATO and UN, WTO are the best examples of political globalization. 
environmental globalization. This refers to the increasing interconnectedness of global en environmental issues such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution are the best examples for environmental globalization. Technological globalization. This can include the spread of digital technologies such as international internet and social media as well as advertisement in fields such as medicine and transport. For example, free trade agreements make it easier for people to understand. Causes of globalization. There are five causes, namely technology, MNCS, tra improved transport facilities and improved transport facilities and MNCS and the internet. Now let us see about the the technology. The improved technology have made easier for people to communicate within a, within a global level. This has led to share and information around the global level. The improved transport facilities. The improved transport facilities have made easier for people to help for carrying heavy loads in the heavy loads across the world. MNCs. The MNCs includes the exchange of technologies, investments, uh, and keeping interconnected of many countries. Uh, labor mobility. The people are very much interested, and they are also willing to move to the other countries in the search of job. Now, internet. The internet makes uh, uh, communication possible in the global level. If there could have been no internet, it have been very difficult to communicate within a with, for people to communicate in a geographical boundary of the country. Now let us see about the globalization in India. Now let us, uh, it's a payment criss in 1919. Imports were greater than exports. Current account deflects with high. Lack of rocks and receive with the good have lasted for three weeks. Investors withdraw their money for, from India markets. Step price in informational, informational rates, high financial debits, high rise in the international debates. Until 1991, India was largely and internationally isolated from the world markets. Foreign, direct, foreign trade was subjected as resentments like technologies, transfer, and goods approvals. In June 30, 1991, there are $21.14 in India. Now, at June 30, 2016, there is a $67.62 in India. Foreign currency received in May 2023 is $578.73 billion. Fifth largest economy in the world is $3.7 trillion. Foreign investments has increased 316.9 percentage and India's gross domestic product grew from dollar 266 billion in 1991 to dollar 3.7 trillion in 19 in 2023 effects of globalization in india economic liberalization there are five sector three sectors namely industrial sector financial sector and agriculture sector now let us see about industrial sector. Foreign capital investments and companies expert to offer share in India. Example, like financial, financial sector or market, comp market competition supported on invection create a much more dynamic function in the service sector. Impacts of globalization in the outsourcing. India has become a major destination for outsourcing reserve, particularly in IT and BPO. The best examples for IT companies are TCS, CTS, and Cognos, and Google are the best examples for IT companies. TCS stands for Tata Consultancy Service, and CTS stands for uh, Cognizant Consumers. Create it creates a new uh, market to the consumers, goods and services, which has led to the growth of industries such as retail, entertainment, and hospitality. Culture exchange. 
greater exchange of culture between India and the rest of the other world. Indian music, movies and fusion have become popular in other countries. Western culture has also become more visible in India. Advantages of globalization. There are three types of advantage, namely increasing in employment and increasing in compensation and high standard of living. Disadvantages of globalization are six points, namely unequal economic growth, lack of uh, local business, increasing politicianal global receipts, and explores cheaper labor mobility, cost, job, discipline, environmental loots. Future of globalization. There are four points, namely reserve of globalization, religious, technological advance, climate change are the four types of future of globalization. Greater inclusive, it can become more inclusive also with a greater focus on suitable and equal growth. In summary, I said about what is globalization, history of globalization, types of globalization, factors that are rising for globalization, advertisement technology and uh, advertisement technology, effects of globalization and globalization in India are the seven contents I said in this, uh, I said in this lecture. Thank you for this, giving me this wonderful opportunity. A warm welcome one and all who are present here, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges and our fellow students. So I'm here to give a lecture about a topic, uh, historical, uh, historical enigmas, the fascinating world, and the nature. What is the nature? Nature is also been a nature is also been a mystery, and it is uh, nature is also been a mystery. And uh, for example, the um, uh, for example, lakes, oceans, trees, etc. And here are the some contents uh, which I have given. And first, it's Kailash Mountain at Bang, uh, Kailash Mountain at Debate, and the uh, human evolution, Sphinx of Giza at Egypt, Darwasa Grass Kirir at Karakam, Turkmenistan, Uta Lake, and uh, Uta Lake at America, and uh, Kawaijan Volcano at Indonesia, Mammoth Bones, Atlantis. Madurai Meenakshi Amman Temple, and Spotted Lake at British Columbia, Canada, and uh, Malay Temple at Bangalore. So here is, here is the Kailash Mountain. Kailash Mountain is in the height of 6,638 meters from, from ground, and it is located at southwest corner of Tibet. Uh, even though there was, uh, even though there was many, many even though there was a many broken in that, some researchers have said that it is in pyramid shape, and it is two kilometers less than the Mount Everest height. Even though there was excessive oxygen to be, people can't able to it after crossing some meters, and their nails, uh, and nails and hairs are getting overgrown. For a small age to older, they feel the same health condition like fast heartbeat. And the, comp, uh, and the people also get older and older. And the compass also won't work there because of the directional disease. And now it is a restricted area, and people won't go there because of these reasons. And in between, in between there, there, there was the Brahmaksa and the Rakshata Lake. And the Brahmaksa Lake is a positive lake, which vibrates to the right side of the mountain. And the Rakshata Lake is a negative lake, which vibrates to the left side of the mountain. So the mountain will always be neutral because of these two lakes. And the Rakshata Lake is a salty lake, and it is in moon shape. And the Brahmastra Lake is a sweetie lake, and it is in sun shape. And there was a theory which was tells all these things. It's called Debatia Theory. And it's also a center of the earth, and also called as world's pillar, world's tree, and as a special name called heaven from earth. Next, next we are going to going to about human evolution. There are many human evolution theory, but, but it is the main two theories. The first theory, 
many million years ago, there was only nature, nature, nature like uh, uh, oceans, ponds, lakes, trees. And on one day, the stone fall from the space, and it stone fall from the space, and it and it into the sea. After nine to ten months, it forms a protein formation, and the egg bursts, and the human also evaluated. And second theory, before six lakh years, it. It, uh, there's a found of retrovirus in Earth. There is no other chemicals in Earth, and it is found in female uterus of a human. And after nine to ten months, the and it developed to an egg, and the human also evaluated. Next, it is in Sphinx of Giza. Sphinx of Giza is located at Sphinx of Giza, Al Giza, Egypt. The Pharaoh Caliph King was constructed in one place, and it shifted from one place to another place. And in between the two legs of the statue, there was a 25 steps. And it is the path for library. And in the library, there are many Tamil literatures like Tolkapiyam, Mani Megalai, Puranadura, etc. And there are also a hidden path, which was hidden by Pero Karif King. And it is the path for Atlantica. And the statue is fully, ma fully made up of a uh, single stone, and it is of limestone. And the face of the statue is of pyrography, and the body of the statue is of lion body. And the architecture is of ancient Egypt architecture. And its dimension is about 20 into 19 into 73 meters. And it was about 240 feet from the ground. Broken. While the while the fight between the cannon bulls and the Napoleon Bonaparte, they were attacked each other with their guns. And the bullet was attacked to the nose of the Sphinx statue. So it was broken. And the, it is the most recognition statue in the world. And it is built at the time of 2532 to 2558 BC. Next it is Darwasa Grass Crater. Darwasa Grass Crater is located at Dar uh, Karakam. And Turkmenistan, and it's also known as Door to Hell. And many, uh, many years before, Russian peoples used to burrow the soil for uptaking the fuel. And they uptake the fuel in 240, uh, 240 steps. But in 1971, they drowned the soil, but they found the methane gas in steps of 98. And it is also known as 100 crater. There are hundreds of natural gases in that. And it polluted to air in a very fast manner. So they planned to fight the, fight the area. But it was a failure attempt. Because in January 2022, Bedi Mohamadev announced that still it was firing. It's eating negative effects. And now it is a restricted area. People also own go there. Next, it is an Utah Lake. Utah Lake is located at America. And it is about 55,000 square feet. And it is in the center of the United States. And in between that, there was an eastern, eastern zone and a western range. And it's surrounded by Pro or a metropolitan. And its lake, lake outflow is about 45 percent. Elevation of, elevation, of, elevation of street level is about 4,489 feet. And there are 13 species of animals in, sea, in the lake. And it's also called several lake or risk lake. And it is in pink color. And it is the only, only lake which has highly salt content in the world. And people will float in the lake because of this highly salt content. And in between, the, in be, and in between that, there was a railway track, which is the America's sub-railway track. And there are three falls in the lake. And the, that the lake contains small birds island. While the, fl while the flood or earthwork happens, the island may submerge completely into the lake. And it's also called Lake Bonneville. Next, it is an hostile fall. Hostile fall is located at California. And it's also called Red Orange Fall, Angel Fall, Fire Fall. And it is homage to Yosemite Fire Fall. And it's also called Yosemite National Park. And it is about 970 feet from the ground. For the two weeks in February, it is in deep red orange color. And the other months are, it is in setting striker. And the sunset rays, due to the sunset rays, the rays appears to the fall and it changes to the deep red orange color. And it is the natural as per the scientist's research. 
Next, it is an Kava Agent Volcano. Kava Agent Volcano, also known as Blue Water Crater, and it is located in Indonesia. And some, some it refers as Apibiru. There are 10 volcanoes in Indonesia, but it is the one volcano which is in neon blue color. And it is also has, it's also called largest blue flame in the world, and its flame is up to 5 meters. And it's, it's, it is about 16 feet height from the ground and it is about 20 kilometers range. And the sulfur melts, it, it pours slowly and changes to the color of yellow and keeps the, keeps the area in a very cool manner. And it is sulfur mixture and it is a highly acidic in the world. So it is also a chemical source for many industries, uh, resources and uh, chemical labs. And near to this, there was a Bani Prahit River. And the Bani Prahit River is uh, highly acidic due to this volcano. Next, we are going to talk about mammoth bones. Mammoth bones found in Russia. And it is a type of elephant bone. And in, it is always found in Rush, uh, ice areas. So its only are covered, covered, covered its whole body to keep it in warm temperature. And it has lived before 25,000 years. And it is also used as constructing works. And it has more than 70 dwellings. And it has lived before 25,000 years. Now it is an extinct species. And it's relative to ancient elephants, but it is in the size, size of African elephants. And there was, an, uh, there was also a science of classification. And the classification is Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cardata, Class Mammalia, Order Proboscidae, Elephant ED. And the binomial name of this elephant is Mammothus primogenes. And there is a very difference between the male and the female's elephant. The male shoulder of the elephant is up to 8.5 feet to 11.5 feet. But the female shoulders of the elephant is up to 8.5 feet to 9.5 feet. And the male's weight of the elephant is 8.2 metric tons. But the female weight of the elephant is 4 metric tons. And the newborn kg is about 90. And its curve can replace about six, about six times in its lifetime. And its curve tracks and the molars are also used by both Netherlands and the modern humans the, during the time of ice ages. Next, we are going to talk about Atlantis. Before 2,400 years, Plato has identified this Atlantis. And it is located in between the Mediterranean Sea. And it is a very big kingdom, and it has 10,000 soldiers and 10,000 elephants. Before 20,000 years, they, are, they were in familiar in technology, but the technology also destroyed while the place has destroyed. And the place has destroyed before 9,000 years, and it's destroyed due to the earthquake and flood. And the last king of this this uh, this dynasty was at, uh, Aquaman, and the last queen of this dynasty was Atlantide, and uh, Aquaman was a very famous king and was a legend king. And as like this, the Utopian island also destroyed due to the, due to, due to some, uh, due to some mysticals, but still now scientists have researching, but they can't able to find how it was destroyed. And the Atlant Atlantis was derived from the Greek word. And it's also called Island of Atlas. And it is a giant city in the world. But it was destroyed. And the golden statue, uh, and there was also a golden statue. And it is the king of Poseidon. And it's also called God of Sea. Next, it is a Meenakshi temple. Meenakshi temple is located at Madurai. And it's also a capital for the Meenakshi Madurai. And it is on the banks of Vaige River and it is 2,500 years old, and its acres is about 14. And the, Davidian, and the architecture style was Davidian South Indian architecture, and it has 12 towers of 147 to 170 feet tall, and there was, a, and, and there was looted and destroyed by an infamous Muslim invader called Malik Kafur in 1310. But it was rebuilt in the 13th century by Hindu Nair, Hindu Nayak. And, and the Meenakshi temple, Meenakshi temple's Meenakshi was towards, was towards the sunrise. 
and its annual revenue is about 60 million and it's also called Tadage Angir Kani and it's listed in the seven wonders of India, also the 10 richest temples in India. And uh, in a daily time, it draws about 20,000 20, visitors. But for the annual festival, it draws about 1 million visitors. For every 12 years, the Meenakshi temple was renewed and cleaned. And, it's, and there was a Thirumeni Salai, and uh, it is fully made of uh, emerald stone. And the, and the temple contains twin temple, and there are 1,008 lamps. And, we can also hear the people's prayer after closing of this temple because of the positive vibration around this temple. And there was also an unity of Saivam and Vainavan. And the corridor's paintings were painted in the time of Vijayanayaka period. And there was also a huge Nadrajar sculpture. And there are thousand pillars in that. And it, there is a cluster of musical pillars, which is fully made of a single stone. And it is, and each, pill, each pillar has a different tone when tapped. And there are also 33,000 sculptures. And it has golden lotus, also called, also called, uh, <coughs> it was the golden lotus, also called holy site. Next, we are going to talk about Spotted Lake. Spotted Lake is located at British Columbia, Canada. And in the time of summer days, the, dry, the lake will be dried fully, and it seems in the spotted colors. And in, uh, it is in the colors of blue, green, red, yellow, etc. Due to the presence of sulfates called sodium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, and calcium sulfate. And in the time of ancient, ancients, the soldiers and the king was buried the soil for uptaking the weapons, uh, for uptaking the irons for making the weapons. So after many months, it changed into the color of blue, green, red, yellow, or like of spotted colors. And its length is about 0.7 kilometer, and its width is about 0.25 kilometer, and its elevation is about 573 meters, and its range is about 1,880 feet. Next, it is an Maleshwara Temple. Maleshwara Temple is located at Bangalore. In 1997, the Bangalore people has buried the soil for constructing the houses and industries and factories also. So they drowned the soil. They found the tower of the temple. They were surprised, and they, invest, and they called upon the police, and they were investigated, but they, uh, and they found the temple with pond. And there was a surprise that was an, uh, the linga was present above the, Nandi was present above the linga. And the scientists have still researching that in which time it was built, but they can't able to find. And in the mouth of Nandi, the water comes out and it passed through a linga's head and it go to into a pond. It is all, and always it is in a wet form of linga. And after many research, after many research, also they can't able to find where the waters come from, and is it the cyclic method? And next, let's recap our points. First, we saw about Kailash Mountain. Kailash Mountain is in the uh, Kailash Mountain is located at Tibet, and we can uh, we can can't able to breathe after crossing some meters, and uh, nails and hairs are getting overgrowth, and yeah, and we feel so older and older. And the human evolution. Human evolution, uh, uh, human evolution forms a protein formation, and it bursts out after 90 to 10 months. And it is an, it is an uh, retrovirus. Retrovirus found in, uh, retrovirus found in uh, human, human female uterus. After 9 to 10 months, it bursts out, bursts out into a new baby. And it's a sphinx of Giza. Sphinx of Giza. In between the this, in between the legs of the statue, we can found the uh, library and also the path for Atlantica. And the nose of the king, Pharaoh Kharif king, was broken, and it is fully made of single stone, half limestone. And next, it's a dar was a grass cutter. It is of methane gas. It is of methane gas, and it is full. It is of me. 
it is of methane gas in the 90s steps, and it was failure attempt by fire in January 2022 by Mohammed is announced. And next, Uta Lake. Uta Lake is of uh, at America, and it also seems in pink color, and it is highly salty content in the world, so people will float in the lake. Next, it is an hard fall. flood. Hard fall, fall is an at California, and it seems a deep red orange color in the weeks of February. But other months are it is in settings like. Next, it is in Kauai Jain Volcano. Kauai Jain Volcano, we, uh, Kauai Jain Volcano, it is in neon blue color, and it is highly acidic in the world, and near to the Sabani Pahit River also, highly acidic. And next, it is a mammoth, mammoth, mammoth bones. And mammoth bones is also has classification and has binomial names. And it's only are covered to keep it has warm temperature. And, and the curved tusks and the molars can replace six times in its lifetime. There was a very difference between the male and the female soldiers. And next, it is an Atlantis. Atlantis was destroyed before 9,000 years. Uh, from the Plato's time, and also as like this, a utopian island also destroyed. The Atlantis was destroyed uh, due to the earthquake and flood, but the island was, uh, but the utopian island was destroyed by war, how, which we don't know. And next it is in Meenakshi Temple. Meenakshi Temple, Meenakshi Temple has thousand pillars and fly clusters of uh, musical pillars, and it is in, and it has thousand eight lamps, and the corridor paintings has in the time of a Vizenakar period, and the, it was looted and destroyed by the infamous Malik Kafur in the 1310. Next, it is in Spotted Lake. Spotted Lake seems in spotted colors like blue, green, red, etc. And it is in, uh, and due to the presence of sodium, sulfate, magnesium, etc. Next, it is in Maleshwara Temple. Maleshwara Temple, Malaysian speciality is it is drowned into the soil, and it has a speciality has the Nandi was present above the linga. And next, I would like to continue points of points. And the whole world has been filled with mystery. And and thank you to the judges, and thank you to the judges, school management. Warm welcome. Thank you. In World Record Festival. I am Mayerson of Great Well, belongs to the Friendline Academy Matriculation Higher Secondary School. Today, I am going to give a lecture on topic medicinal plants, exploring the healing power of nature for mankind. Let me start my lecture. Medicinal herbs are also called as medicinal herbs. Every medicinal herb synthesizes a chemical compound that's used to cure wounds and diseases. It's mostly used by our ancient people to cure wounds and diseases. On, because on that time, medicinal herbs are available in large numbers. But now, many medicinal herbs became rare and few are dead. These are due to human activities. Let me share you the medicinal plants which I am going to talk about. They are Mexican mint, holy basil, beetle, wild grape, false daisy, green cardiospermum, gale of wind, wild eggplant, puncture wine, thyme, uh, aloe vera, rosemary, sweet flag, ashwagandha, then uh, lavender, sage, king of bitters, Indian bale, henna, guava leaves, and tannus cassica. Let me start uh, first with Mexican mint. Mexican mint is, uh, in Tamil name, it's known as carpurovalli. In botanical name, it's uh, Coleus ambonicus. Mexican mint is a perennial herbaceous plant that's native to Mexico and Central America. It is, belongs to Asterius family, and Mexican mint is closely related to sunflower and marigold. It has a long traditional of medicinal and culinary uses in its native region. Then, it uh, typically grows two to three feet. That means. 60 to 90 meters tall. It's used as a culinary herb, and its leaves are added in soups and stews. It because it gives a rich, unique, and distinct flavor to the dish. Then, Mexican mint is used to cure diseases like uh, 
long hiccups, mouth ulcers, skin infections, and uh, colic asthma. Mexican mint is used extremely on scorpion bites and centipede. Then the following plant, which I am going to talk about, is holy basil. Tamil name, Tulasi, botanical name, Octimum thuni florum. Holy basil is an aromatic plant which holds cultural and religious importance in various parts of the world, especially in India. Holy basil is highly reserved in Hinduism and it's, it also contains oil content on it. Holy basil helps our body to adapt to stress and it has compatibilities so that it may defend against diseases in our body. Then, holy basil is uh, rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron, and zinc. Uh, holy basil is a natural immune booster and it's used to reduce stress uh, and it reduces uh, blood pressure level in our body. And uh, holy basil is good for diabetes patients and it also contains anti-cancer properties. So, it is mostly consumed by cancer patients to cure cancer. Then, uh, so eat one tulasi leaf a day, keep a cancer away. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is beetle, Tamil name, vitrile, botanical name, piper beetle. Beetle is a vine that's native to Southeast Asia, but it's commonly cultivated in India, Sri Lanka and Thailand. Beetle has a slender stem with glossy green heart-shaped leaves. Then it's a stimulant, antiseptic, natural breath freshener. And beetle leaves are good for digestion also. So we should, after eating a heavy meal, we can eat a beetle. By eating a beetle leaf a day, uh, we can prevent cardiovascular disease away. But overeating of beetle also leads to oral cancer. Then, beetle leaves is used to cure um, infections and it fight against uh, it, uh, bacterial and fung fungal infections uh, in our body. Then, it's a uh, in control of our skin. Then, the following plant is Veldigrave, Tamil name, Pirandai, botanical name, Caesus quadrangularis. It's a perennial plant that's native to India. It's a succulent plant and its shape is in quadrangularis. It is a well grape, it's rich in PHG chemicals and it contributes therapeutic properties. It is considered as an potent adaptogen. Then, it, uh, holy well uh, grape uh, will enhance calcium absorption level in our body and it promotes bone health, alleviates joint pain and broken bone and etc. Wild grape is mostly used uh, to treat arthritis, politics for sprains, digestion disorders, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. It's used in Ayurveda to prepare Ayurvedic medicines. Its leaves are very useful in curing wounds and burns in our skin. The following plant is false daisy or bring her arts. In Tamil, it's known as Karisa Alai. Botanical name is Eclipta prostrata. It's a herb that belongs to Aster Ace family and it's used for centuries. It, uh, it typically grows 50 centimeter per year. That means it has a long and land-shaped leaves. Then it, it has a small white flowers. Uh, false disease used to get relief from hair problems and it prevents premature graying of our hair. Then it is considered as a rejuvenating herb. It's uh, safe for external use and uh, it's safe for external use and it's, uh, it, uh, it helps us to gain skin. Uh, it removes wrinkles, dullness dark spots in our skin. Uh, so then uh, by making uh, false daisy as a fine powder and mix it with honey, uh, then we drink it, it will relieve throat infection in our body. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is green cardiosperm. Tamil name, Mudakattan, 
botanical name Halika Kabam. This is a perennial climber vine with heart shaped leaves and green cardiospermum has a small white flower. It's known for its anti spasmodic properties and this plant is native to India and Asia. It is it is a it has strong inflammatory property so that it can be used in uh, treatment of novice diseases, dandruff, itchy scalp, hypothermia, and it gets relief from stomach pain and abdomen pain in our body. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is a uh, gale of wind. Tamil name, Keela Nelli, botanical name, Planthus niriuri. Gale of wind is commonly known as stone breaker and it's a herbaceous plant that belongs to plant ace family. It's a uh, it has positive effects on overall body health. Then it's known for its potential medicinal property. Gale of wind is native to North America, parts of Brazil and China. Gale of wind uh, promotes liver detoxification level in our body. Then it's used to cure diseases and uh, diseases of liver. And Gale of wind uh, is uh, used to treat Hepatitis. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is wild egg plant. Its, it's Tamil name is uh, Thuduvalai, botanical name, Solanum procumbus. It's a herbaceous plant that belongs to Solanus family. And it, uh, it's known for its distinct low place, which produces small purple or green color fruit. It's Parts like leaf, fruit is used to prepare a herbal decoction or infusion. It's believed to have an expert around dilatory or antimicrobial infusions. A wild egg plant is used to cure lung cancer, oral cancer, uh, tuberculosis, malaria, asthma, cold and cough. It is rich in anti-tumor property and anti-inflammatory property also. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is Punctia wine, Tamil name, Nerinjimul, botanical name, Tribulus terrestris. Punctia wine is native to Zygo, uh, native to warm and tropical regions of the world. This plant is, belongs to Zygophiles family. Punctia wine is a natural athletic performance enhancer. So, and it uh, balances hormone level in our body. Puncture wine is mostly consumed by athletes, bodybuilders because this will increase their performance level, stamina, muscle strength, endurance and it's believed to increase in muscles, muscle and bodybuilding and it uh, reduces cholesterol level in our body. This uh, puncture wine will uh, contains more bioactive compounds so that it may be used to get relief from urinary difficulties of our body. Then the following plant is thyme, Tamil name, Thirinichru Pattiri, botanical name, Thymus vulgaris. It's a plant, this is a plant uh, known uh, native to, mean, uh, native to India and this is a belongs to mint family lames. This plant is known for its aromatic fragrance and the oil can be extracted from thyme stem so that it can be used in inhalation therapy and aroma therapy. Thyme leaves contains uh, antioxidant and antimicrobial property so that it may be used in cooking. Then it supports respiratory health and soothes cough of our body. Then Time is a time is a, time is a repel inf, uh, uh, insects because it has an aromatic foliage. So we can plant it in a outdoor of our homes. Then time is used to get relief from cough, patchy hair loss, and it will uh, get relief from get uh, relief from. Uh, rash, uh, get relief from rashes. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is uh, 
ஆலோவேரா தமிழ் நேம் கற்றாலை பொட்டானிக்கல் நேம் ஆலோ பார்பன் திஸ் இஸ் திஸ் இஸ் அ சக்லு அண்ட் பிளான்ட் ஸ்பீசிஸ் நோன் ஃபார் இட்ஸ் ஜெல் ஃபில் லீவ்ஸ் இட்ஸ் அலோவேரா இஸ் நேட்டிவ் டு அரேபியன் பெனின்சுலா பட் இட்ஸ் கல்டிவேட்டட் அண்ட் க்ரோ இன் வேரியஸ் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் வேர்ல்ட் இட் இஸ் ரிச் இன் நியூமரஸ் விட்டமின்ஸ் மினரல்ஸ் ஆன்டி ஆக்சிடன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆன்டி மைக்ரோபியல் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் தென் ஆலோவேரா இஸ் கன் யூஸ் டு யூஸ்ட் ஃபார் மெடிசினல் அண்ட் கெமிக்கல் காஸ்மெட்டிக் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி இன் மெடிசினல் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி ஆலோவேரா இஸ் யூஸ்ட் டு கியூர் டைஜஸ்டிவ் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் இட் லோஸ் பிளட் சுகர் லெவல் அண்ட் இட் ட்ரீட்ஸ் கென் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன்ஸ் பேர்ன்ஸ் இன்சைட் பைட்ஸ் தென் இன் காஸ்மெட்டிக் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி ஆலோவேரா இஸ் யூஸ் டு கெட் ரிலீஃப் ஃப்ரம் பிம்பிள்ஸ் and dullness of our body then it will reduce heat temperature in our body by applying it on face then aloe vera can be used to make many lotions uh, for and other beauty products to face then the plant which i am going to talk about is rosemary tamil name also rosemary botanical name sylvia rosemarinus it's a it's a plant that's native to that's native to south east asia and it's known for its needle like leaves and small blue flowers rosemary is uh, used for used for uh, medicinal culinary and ornamental property in medicinal property rosemary will increase our memory power and concentration and hair growth it will boost the immune and circulatory system of our body and it also treats digestive problems then in a uh, culinary uses it's it can be used to make uh, some gravies then uh, in ornamental purpose uh, it can be used as a decorative shrubs in some uh, dry sands then rosemary is uh, used to make perfumes and soaps so it's mostly used in perfume industry then uh, rosemary contains a uh, many many aromatic fragrances on it then the plant which i am going to talk about is sweet plant tamil name vasambu botanical name acros calamus sweet plant is a plant that belong, that's native to native to a uh, wetland areas of europe asia and china because and uh, it's a traditional chinese medicine and it's a uh, it's a traditional chinese medicine it's it uh, sweet flag is used to extract oil from it that can be used to treat gastritis and we can use to uh, we, we can use sweet flag to alleviate gastritis it stimulates appetite relieves congestion of adrenal glands and it provides mental clarity the rhizomes of sweet flag contains spicy warm and uh, uh, spicy warm and distinct fragrance and it also contains toxic element so rose uh, sweet flag is not recommended to use without an healthcare professional's advice and it uh, it can be used in cooking uh, the oil which is used to uh, cure uh, gastritis uh, is in the form of uh, infusion and it's calmative it possesses emetic and anti spasmodic properties on it the following plant is ashwaga danta tamil name amukura Botan- botanical name vitamnia somnifera ashwaga danta is native to indian subcontinent but it's cultivated and grow in various parts of world it's known for its adaptogenic properties it enhances cognitive functions in our body and it's believed to support adrenal gland problems then ashwagandha it will ca- helps to calms the brain and uh, helps to calms the brain relieves from uh, stress and it has a uh, positive effects on our body it supports overall well being of our body also then ashwagandha can be uh, used can be used to relieve stress so it it is mostly used in ayurveda of uh, inhalation therapy then the plant which i am going to talk about is lavender tamil name suganthi botanical name lavendula it's an aromatic plant which 
is uh, native to Mediterranean region, but it's cultivated, it also cultivated worldwide. This plant is considered as safe to eat, then we can use lavender for uh, making soap, perfume, lotion, and other beauty products. Lavender has uh, aroma, aromatic foliage, so it's used to make uh, oil from it. Then it can be used in inhalation therapy to treat headache and exhaustion in our body. Then it also contains some toxic elements. So we should not use uh, more, more, uh, more value of uh, lavender. Then the plant which I'm going to talk about is um, sage, Tamil name, Karupatti Ilai, botanical name, Salvia officinals. This plant is, belongs to sa Salvia genus, and this is, a, this is a shrub which grows 10, meter, 10 meters tall. This plant is uh, used in uh, cooking because it also contains aromatic flavorings. The, uh, the leaves of sage have a wrinkled texture that may you see in this picture. Then uh, it's, uh, it can be grown in our gardens. Then we can use it as a decorative shrub in our home. As, uh, sage will relieve us from oxidative stress and it reduces swelling in our body. And it, uh, it also treats uh, digestive problems. Then the plant which I'm going to talk about is um, King of Bitters. Tamil name, Siriya Nangai, botanical name, Andrographis panticolata. It's a, Siriya Nangai is a native to Indian subcontinent and it's a small annual shrub that grows uh, 60, 30 to 60 meters. It and it uh, it has uh, leaves that are land shaped, and it uh, the leaves are um, leaves can be used to make uh, medicine in Ayurveda. Then it uh, it's uh, it also used to get relief from stress and nerve issue diseases of our body. Then um, king of bitters is. Uh, rich in potassium and uh, other elements and it's used to treat fever in our body. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is Indian bed. In Tamil, it's known as Vilvam. Botanical name is uh, Egli Marmolesis. It's a plant that uh, it, uh, it grows about 10 meters tall. Then it, uh, it's it's also known as Bengal quince, woody apple, or um, woody apple, or uh, simply bell. It has important uh, culture and religious importance in India, and this used to, to treat ulcer in our body. Then uh, this uh, Indian bell contains more digestive pro uh, properties, so it stimulates uh, appetite and it will uh, get relief from gastrointestinal disorders also. Then the uh, Indian bell is a uh, fruit, uh, it produces a fruit that is round and with woody hard structure. Then the plant which I am going to talk about is henna. Its Tamil name is Marutani, botanical name Lusania inermis. This henna is also called as a natural dye uh, and it's known for its leaves. We can use to make a natural dye on it. We can apply a henna dye in our hands and uh, on hairs. It gives a maroon color. Then it's a it's a small shrub or plant, tree that grows up grows up to seven meters top. Then this is um, highly renowned for its leaves. Henna is a henna leaves can uh, leaves can be directly applied on a dandruff, uh, itchy, dandruff, itchy scalp, enzyma, uh, and uh, fungal infections in our hair, our body. It's good for uh, hair growth, and it's known for its uh, hair, pro hair health property. Then the plant which I'm going to talk about is guava leaves, Tamil name. Uh, 
கொய்ய இலை பொட்டானிக்கல் லேம் ஸ்வீடைனம் குஜி ஜாவா திஸ் 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 தி லீவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி லீவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் குவா குவா லீவ்ஸ் கண்டெயின்ஸ் விரிங்கிள் டெக்ஸ்டர் அண்ட் இட் ப்ரொடியூஸ் அ ஒயிட் ஃப்ரேக்ரன்ஸ் ஆல்சோ தென் இட் ஒயிட் ஃப்ரேக்ரன்ஸ் ஆல்சோ இட்ஸ் பை மேக்கிங் குவா லீவ்ஸ் ஆஸ் அ டீ வி மே ரெடியூஸ் சுகர் லெவல் இன் அவர் பாடி தென் இட் ரெடியூசஸ் கொலஸ்ட்ரால் லெவல் ஆல்சோ தென் குவா லீவ்ஸ் ஆர் குவா லீவ்ஸ் ப்ரொடியூஸ் அ ஸ்மால் ஒயிட் ஃப்ளார் இட் ஸோ இட் ஹேஸ் அ ஸ்ட்ராங் ஒயிட் ஃப்ரேக்ரன்ட் ஆன் இட் தி லீவ்ஸ் ஆர் எலிப்டிக்கல் அண்ட் ஸ்ட்ராங் இன் இட் தென் தி பிளான் விச் ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு டாக் அபவுட் இஸ் டேனஸ் கசிகா தமிழ் நேம் ஆவாரம் பூ பொட்டானிக்கல் நேம் சென்னா ஆர்ச்சிகோலேட்டா இட்ஸ் அ ஸ்ட்ராப் தட் க்ரோஸ் டூ மீட்டர்ஸ் டால் தென் இட்ஸ் சப்போர்ட்ஸ் கிட்னி ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் இட் இட் ஹேஸ் சம் பிட்டர்னஸ் ஆன் இட் பை மேக்கிங் இட் ஹேஸ் சட்னி தென் டேனஸ் கசிகா produce a small flower that's in a yellow color yellow color in it will produce only in winter seasons then it is it supports uh, it supports uh, it supports adrenal functions and it uh, get relief from uh, psoriasis uh, in our skin then let's we come to recall the plant which i am talk i like this uh, i like uh, mexican mint henna and um, mexican mint henna uh, gua leaves and uh, beetle because these are our uh, traditional plants of uh, india and i like most of it then in conclusion we have learned our, we have learned in the about the history significance of uh, medicinal plants then uh, by uh, combining this medicinal plants in uh, with modern medicines and technology we can create a new thing for our generation so we may combine this and create a new uh, new product to our genera- f- uh, upcoming generation so i request you all to don't distract the medicinal herbs and by using medicinal herbs it uh, it does not give side effects but overeating of medicinal herbs give a side effects so use this medicinal herbs with a health care professional advice then thank you i am concluding my slide everyone it's my pleasure to speak to you about one of the most revolutionary technology of time blockchain just imagine a world where you can send money directly without a bank in seconds instead of days or imagine where you store money in a online wallet that is not tied to a bank and you have the full freedom to access it and never have to worry about the third party taking away or government economic policy manipulating it this is not the world of future this is the world of blockchain adapters blockchain is a innovative technology that powers thousands of cryptocurrencies and real life applications it has a potential to change the way we pay for goods and services and stores critical information blockchain is a distributed database where the data is distributed to various number of computers around the world in a secure manner it has a potential to enable the trust between the people who don't each other there are two major properties of blockchain or immutability and distributed the immutability in blockchain ensures the data is stored permanent and unchangeable once the data is added to the chain distributed the distributed nature of blockchain ensures the data is not controlled by a central authority but rather by a multiple number of participants providing benefits such as transparency speed accuracy and many more history of blockchain the history of blockchain begins in 2008 when an individual or group of people operating under satoshi nakamoto published a white paper titled bitcoin a peer to peer electronic cash system the white paper published in the concept of decentralized digital currency which utilizes a new technology called blockchain in 2009 satoshi nakamoto implements blockchain as public ledger for transaction made on bitcoin in 2015 the developers around the world started to use programming languages running on blockchain ethereum platforms and smart contract applications 
In 2020, the central banks around the world started to explore central bank digital currency payment system built on blockchain. And China became the first country to lead the digital currency payment system. Distributed ledger. The distributed ledger is a digital database that records and stores information across multiple number of computers in a transparent and secure manner. It is called ledger because it maintains transparent and immutable record of data. In simple terms, just imagine a shared spreadsheet that is duplicated and stores on many computers. Each computer has a separate spreadsheet and updates regularly with new entries. So what happens here? When a new entry occurs, a new line is added in the spreadsheet on each computer. Likewise, the distributed ledger in blockchain enables multiple participants to maintain the record without central authority. Why it is called blockchain? The word blockchain is derived from the way the technology is structured. Each block contains collection of data, which can vary depending on specific blockchain applications. For example, in case of Bitcoin, a block contains information such as sender, receiver, and amount of Bitcoin transfer. These blocks are linked to the previous blocks, forms a chain. The chain connection between the blocks is called blockchain. Each block has data, hash, hash of the previous block. In simple terms, a hash is a unique password given to a block. Consider the following example where you have a chain of three blocks. The block one is a predecessor, which means it does not contain hash of previous block. And block two contains hash of block one, and block three contains hash of block two. All the following blocks contains hash of previous blocks and forms a chain. Let's see why it is so secure. Assume a hacker is able to change the data present in block two. The hash of the block two changes, but the block three still contains old hash of the block two. That makes block three and other following blocks invalid, as they do not contain correct hash value of the previous blocks. Therefore, changing a single block can quickly make other following blocks invalid. And this is why blockchain is so secure. How blockchain works? In the first, someone requests a transaction. The requested transaction is broadcasted to a P2P network consisting of computers known as nodes. The network of nodes validates a transaction using algorithms. After validating, it is combined with other transaction data to create a new block. After creating a new block, it is added to the existing blockchain, and then the transaction is completed. Types of blockchain. Public blockchain, private blockchain, and consortium blockchain. Public blockchains. Public blockchains are open network of computers accessible to anyone who wants to initiate or validate the transaction. Those who validate the transaction get some rewards. The two common types of public ledger are Bitcoin and Ethereum platforms. Private blockchains. Private blockchains are not open. They have certain restrictions. People who want to join in the network need to get permission from the central authority or entity. In this type of blockchain, it is owned by a single entity. Consortium blockchain. Consortium blockchain are the combination of public and private blockchains, in which contains centralized and decentralized features. Consortiums can be used in real estate to create transparent and trusted platform. Multiple participants like buyers, sellers, and real estate agents can participate in this blockchain network. Decentralization. The decentralization blockchain refers to the distribution of decision-making power and control across multiple number of computers in a transparent manner. In a, block, in a decentralized blockchain network, it is, con it is not controlled by a central authority, but rather by a group of computers. The decentralized blockchain network are designed to be unalterable, and once the data is entered, it cannot be changed. Centralized framework. The centralized framework refers to the distribution of decision-making power and control are concentrated in a central authority or entity. In this type of framework, a single entity or small group of entities hold the power of decision-making and enforce rules. Decentralized framework. The decentralized framework refers to the Distribution of decision-making power and control across multiple number of computers among users. It ensures the data is not controlled by a single entity, but rather by multiple entities. Transaction procedure versus banks versus blockchain. 
Banks provide wide range of services like loans, credit cards, debit cards, and many more. Banks act as an intermediaries between individuals, business, and overall economy. They are regulated entities that holds and manages customer funds and provides various financial services. On the other hand, blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger that records and stores information in a transparent and secure manner. Transaction procedure. In the banking system, the bank acts as an intermediary between sender and receiver. When a transaction occurs, the bank verifies and authorizes the transaction before transferring from one account to another account. But in blockchain, it eliminates the need of intermediaries like banks. Users can directly transfer from money from one account to another account. Smart contract. Smart contract is a self-executing agreement with predefined rules and conditions written into code. In simple terms, a smart contract is a digital agreement between two people or entities in the form of computer programmed code to execute automatically. Let's see, the transaction, let's see a smart contract between manager and employee in the completion of project before the end of the month in the exchange of 20,000 rupees as a reward. In the first, the, the smart contract includes the details like employee's bank account details, reward amount, and the project deadline. In the first, the manager deposits the re reward amount in the contract. Once the funds are locked in the contract, it cannot be changed. And then the employee works on the project and completes it before the end of the month. After completing the project, it is reviewed by the manager. Once it is reviewed by the manager, he confirms the smart contract. After confirmation from the manager, the smart contract executes the reward amount automatically to the employee. Use case of blockchain in different fields. Banking, healthcare, supply chain, and real estate. Banking. Banks, pro banks, blockchain can transform the financial sector by providing transparent and immutable record of transactions. Smart contract on blockchain can automate the complex financial services like insurance claims and loan settlements. Healthcare. Blockchain enables a secure sharing of medical data between healthcare providers and patients. Blockchain distributed ledger can record and store information such as healthcare records, medical records, and manages medical supply chain. Supply chain management. Blockchain enhances supply chain transparency and traceability. Each transaction is recorded in the supply chain. Can track the movement of goods. This improves the better streamlined logistics. Real estate. Blockchain-based property transactions can be more secure and immutable record of ownership history. Smart contracts can automate the terms of agreement in real estate. Blockchain election. In late 90s, we used polling booth for voting. But now we use electronic voting machine, where we need to submit our other proof voter ID to cast a vote. But in future, the election will be conducted through online by using blockchain technology. Voting with blockchain technology could be easier, faster, and more secure than how we vote today. Election process. In the first, the voter should open the voting application. Then they should verify their identity. After verifying their identity, the vote, the vote should be cached in the blockchain, blockchain application. After voting, the vote is broadcasted to a network to verify. After verification, it is added to the existing blockchain. And then it is added to the blockchain application. Voters can directly view the results after voting. Advantages of blockchain action. Transparency, security, immutable and verifiable. Accessibility, efficiency, and cost reduction. Access, increased accessibility. The accessibility in the sense of users can directly vote, they vote their vote from anywhere in the world. So this increases the voting percentage. Blockchain in business. Blockchain technology has the potential to transform various aspects of business operations, like they can enhance transparency, security, improve streamlined logistics, and many more operations. Businesses like logistics, e-commerce, consumers, finance, customs, marketing, 
gaming and advertising are the businesses that use blockchain technology. Programming languages for blockchain technology. Python, Rust, Go, JavaScript, and Solidity are the top programming languages that use blockchain. Python. Blockchain programming in Python has not only ruled the world of app development, but it also provides blockchain as service. It is used it is used for building smart contract and decentralized applications because it offers various new features. It is used to build core blockchain development. Rust. Rust is renewable programming languages in blockchain ecosystem. It is considered for building immutable, innovative, and secure solutions. Rust enables use developers to create efficient and quick blockchain frameworks. Go. Go is one of the top programming languages in blockchain. It is hard to learn, but it offers various features like user friendliness, immutability, scalability, usability, and speed. JavaScript is uh, one of the best programming languages in blockchain. It offers benefits like scalability and usability. It is in the form of frameworks like nodes. JavaScript is used to build front-end applications. Solidity. Solidity is the first programming language in blockchain that one must learn, especially when you want to develop decentralized applications. It offers numerous number of benefits like usability and precise accuracy. It is used to build apps on Ethereum blockchain. Blockchain versions. Blockchain version 1.0, blockchain version 2.0, and blockchain version 3.0 are the three versions that we used till now. Blockchain version 1.0, currency. Blockchain version 1.0 refers to the initial generation of blockchain technology. The implementation of distributed ledger as its first application. It used currency and payments. The creation of Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. Blockchain version 2.0, smart contract. Blockchain is not only limited with the cryptocurrencies, but it will extend up to smart contract. Smart contract is a decentralized digital agreement between two peoples or entities that is written into blockchain to execute automatically. Nowadays, the smart contract became the fundamental component in blockchain technology. Blockchain version 3.0, dApps. dApp is an abbreviation of decentralized application. In the context of dApps, blockchain 3.0 introduces new features to improve transparency, traceability, and usability. In the, decent, the decentralized blockchain network is a type of distributed peer-to-peer -peer network known as blockchain network. Top companies that use blockchain technology, IBM, Microsoft, Accenture, Walmart, Binance. IBM. IBM, IBM is actually exploring blockchain technology, and they have built their own blockchain technology known as IBM blockchain. And they have partnered with various organizations to create new blockchain solutions like supply chain management, healthcare, and finance. Microsoft. Microsoft has introduced cloud Accenture as a cloud-based platform that enables businesses to develop, build, test, and deploy blockchain applications. They have collaborated with multiple organizations to create blockchain in various sectors. Accenture. Accenture is a global consulting firm. They have partnered with various organizations to create new blockchain solutions in financial sector, identity management, and supply chain management. Accenture has worked with financial, financial institutions to create cross-border payments and trade finance. Blockchain enables trans, transparent, secure, and immutable record of transactions. Walmart. Walmart has been exploring the supply chain management. They track and trace the movement of goods by using blockchain. They implemented blockchain to improve efficiency, transparency of these supply chain products. 
Binance. Binance is one of the top company that use blockchain, and they have built a blockchain application that is used to trade cryptocurrencies. Advantages of blockchain. Transparency, reduced transaction cost, faster transaction efficiency, security, worldwide adoption, open network of computers, flexibility, automated operations. The automated operations is like anyone, anywhere in the world, you can, you can use the blockchain technology. Disadvantages of blockchain. Technology cost, speed inefficiency, illegal activity, regulation. The illegal activity is in the sense of the transparency in blockchain. The transparency in blockchain is enables illegal activity that encourages illegal activity. Potential of blockchain. The future of blockchain technology has not, is, is based on old promises to develop blockchain application in various fields. The potential of blockchain is endless. It is like internet. No one can own it, but anyone can use it. Let's see and recap from the beginning. In the first we saw about uh, blockchain introduction and then decentralized applications, blockchain programming languages, Python, Rust, Go, Solidity, and JavaScript. And let's and now and we saw about blockchain election, top companies that use blockchain technology. And these are the things we stop, we see in the block we see in the blockchain. Thank you. Hello everyone. A warm welcome to On and All present here. My name is Teja Shri and I'm a student in grade eleven from the Frontline Academy. Today I am delighted to present the lecture topic about Ayurvedic medicine. Ancient remedies, unlocking the secret of Indian tradition medicine, Ayurveda. Introduction. What is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is also called as Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurveda is one of the ancient system of medicine that originated in India before thousands of years ago and focused on balancing the body, mind and spirit through natural remedies and lifestyle practices. It is used as for both preventive and curative. It is widely participated in parts of Asia. Ayurvedic medicine is used in diet, yoga, meditation, etc. to promote overall well-being and to treat various alignment. Meaning of Ayurveda. The word Ayurveda is derived from the Sanskrit word Ayur. It means life. And Veda, it means science or knowledge. Thus the Ayurveda translates from knowledge of life. Ancient Ayurvedic medical system. The ancient Ayurvedic medical system is also known as Ayurveda that based on ancient writing. They rely on natural and hostelic approach to, uh, promote natural and, uh, to promote natural and physical health. The ancient Ayurvedic medical system is one of the world oldest medicine system. It is also known as completely cure system. Treatment options are varied and can include yoga, acupuncture, herbal massage, massage therapy, oil treatment, etc. Founder of Ayurveda. Charaka Samhita is known as founder of Ayurveda. In his Charaka Samhita, he has mentioned about 340 plant types and about 200 animal types. Charaka Samhita is also known as principal contributor of Ayurveda. It is also known for foundational text. Ayurveda include under Brahat tree. What are the aims of Ayurveda? There are two main aims of Ayurveda. Promotion of health and prevention of diseases. By adopting preventive lifestyle from childhood, which include seasonal regimen, daily regimen, blood purifactory product, food habit, etc. Curing of ailments. By taking medicine, diet, and other medicine, including restoration of health. Importance of Ayurveda. The word Ayurveda are widely used to treat several physical as well as psychological conditions. It includes arthritis, obesity, nerve disorder, heart disease, ulcer, thyroid disease, etc. Can also cure by Ayurveda. While taking other conventional medicine, we can also take Ayurvedic medicine. They are non-toxic and non-invasive. 
they keep our body and mind free. Of Ayurveda. The history of Ayurveda is derived from the school of Hindu philosophical teaching named Vaishishka and the school of logic named Nyaya. It is also related to the manifestation framework, well known as Samhaya. It is established in same period when the school of Vaishishka and Nyaya flourished. Principles of Ayurveda. There are basically five principles in Ayurveda. Now let us see one by one. Vayu, it means air. Jala, it deals with water. Akash, it means space. Prithvi, it refers to earth. And last teja, it means fire. These are the five principles in Ayurveda. These are also known as Panja Maha Buddha in Ayurveda. Doshas. The combination of three humorous is also known as doshas. The responsible of dosha are personal person, psychological, mental, and the emotional health. The benefits of dominion of one or two of these doshas responds who we are. There are three types of doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. Now let us see one by one. Vata, the word vata means to blow or to move like a wind. The combination of vata is air and space. The climate of vata is dry. If you are living in a dry climate, it snack like desert, it snack regular uh, crackers in our skin. The water control, blood flow, uh, breathing, evacuation of waste, movement of uh, thoughts across our brain. Causes of water is dryness of skin, lips, ears, and joints, blotting of gases, dehydration, and uh, constipation. The people of water body type are physically and generally undeveloped. Pitta. Pitta is known as associated with financial personality. The combination of Pitta are fire and water. It is described as light, hot, liquid, oily and sharp. The climate of Pitta is summer in its sunny hot days. It causes of Pitta is bad breath, body odor, thyroid disorder, excess of sleeping, etc. The Pitta people walk with grace and style. The body type of Pitta is shaped body and well-developed muscles. They, uh, the skin type of pitta is sometimes oily. They can also blush easily. Kappa. Kappa is described as cold, heavy, stable, steady, etc. The climate of kappa is spring and exits hibernation. The causes of kappa is weight gain, allergy and fatigue. It also gives diabetes, asthma and excess of sleeping. The main location in kappa are chest, lungs, head, connective tissues, fatty tissues, neck, throat and tendrons. Ten golden rules in Ayurveda. There are basically ten rules. Let us see one by one. Rule number one. Eat mindfully and take time to chew the food thoroughly. It means we want to eat our food slowly and mindfully. For uh, each uh, white, we want to chew for 32 times. It is good for health and digestive purpose. Rule number two, eat when truly hungry and at 2 by 3 capacity. It means we want to eat when we feel hungry. For 100 percentage, we want to eat 75 percentage. It gives healthy life. If we take a meal for one time, it takes three to six hours for digestion purpose. Otherwise, we can completely omit our meal if hunger is not present. Rule number three, choose mainly seasonal, local, and organic product. It means take time to know our different grocery shop in our area. It is decrease in price, bigger in chain, and these expand this section. Rule number four, be conscious of liquid consumption. It means try to avoid ice cold beverages and food consumed directly out in the fridge. Occasional smoothies and ice creams are not good for health if weather is not warm enough. Rule number five, sit and eat in stress-free environment. We want to sit and eat with good company and we want to complement our food if it is made by yourself also. Sit while sitting in calm, comfort and a cheerful atmosphere. It is good combination for eating. Be mindful of proper food combining principle. Uh, all the fruits are taken by itself for at least 30 minutes before the meal or at least 2 hours after the meal. It is good 
maintain for Ayurvedic purpose. Post meal walk. Uh, we want to uh, take post meal walk after eating our food for at least 15 minutes. It will improve our digestion purpose. Eat at approximate and regular time. We want to eat uh, our morning breakfast before 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And the dinner, the lightest meal in the day, should be eaten before 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. It is Ayurvedic rhythms in our daily life. Avoid eating before 2 to 3 hours uh, before bedtime. We should not eat approximately 2 to 3 hours before going to bed. It will decrease our digestion purpose and this excess ulcer problem also. Enjoy the food you eat. We want to essentially enjoy the food and eat it. If we smelling it, it will improve our digestion purpose. Next, we can see about Ayurvedic diet. Ayurvedic diet is one of the principle of Ayurvedic medicine. If we maintain Ayurvedic diet, it can improve our health. Unlike many other diet, Ayurvedic diet is most important in our life. It can provide personalized recommendation also. Next, golden methods of Ayurveda. There are basically seven methods in Ayurveda. Kaya Chikitsa, it deals with medicine. Shalya Tantra, it deals with surgery. Shalyaka Tantra, it deals with ENT and ophthalmology. Kaumar Britya, it deals with obesity. Agar Tantra, it deals with toxicology. Boot Vitya, it deals with psychiatry. And last, Rasayana, it deals with regimentation therapy. Now let us see one by one. Kaya Chikitsa, the word Kaya Chikitsa was divided into two parts. Kaya and Chikitsa. Kaya means body and Chikita means treatment. It is used for used to treat several physical as well as psychological conditions. It is also used to cure fever, Rakshapitra and Prameha. Shalya Tantra, it deals with surgery. It is also used for method for prevention and diagnosing the surgical problem. It is one of the most important golden method in Ayurveda. Shalika Tantra, the father of Shalika Tantra is Nimi. It means king of Veda. We got the knowledge of uh, science from Lord Sun. It is diagnosing and management of disease. Kaurmar Britya, it deals with obesity. Uh, the child to conceptation to chill the maturity, it include in this uh, golden method. It is also known for preventive and curative for the child care. Agar Tantra, it, uh, the, it also cure for food poisoning, snake bite, dog bite, insect bite, etc. The school of toxicology was found and expounded by Kashyapa, known as Vidya Kashpa, and a contemporary of Atreya Punarvasu. Wood Vidya, it is the disease for Rakash, Pitar, Pikash, and Nag. The treatment of this disease is Sandeep and Havan. Rasayana, the word Rasayana was divided into two parts, Rasa and Ayana. Rasa means nutrition fluid and Ayana means way. It is deals with defense mechanism stress and this does not invert to bacteria also. Now let us see about important medicinal plant used in Ayurveda. There are many important medicinal plants and herbs used in Ayurveda. Some of them are traditional plants also. Utilize the variety of ailments. Here are some common use of medicinal plants and their uses. Tulasi, it, me, it used for immunity boosting level and respiratory system. It also used to relieve the stress. Ashwagandha, it is used for adaptogenic properties and enhance vitality. If we are taking it regularly, it will improve our well-being and overall thinking also. Neem, it is used for basically three things. Antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. It is also used to cure blood purifier, skin condition, etc. Tripula. It is combination of three fruits. It is also known as general de detoxifier and digestive acid. While taking it, it will promote our bowel regulatory product also. Ginger. It is one of the ba basic digestive disorder. It is used to anti-inflammatory properties. Turmeric, it is basic medicine used in Ayurveda. It is also known as powerful anti-inflammatory properties. It is used to skin condition, general health tonic, and used for small ailments, etc. Brahmi, 
it will uh, while taking it it will enhance our memory power and it will improve our connective functions it will also promote our overall brain health also amla it means indian gooseberry while taking amla regularly it will improve our vitamin c and it is also known as antioxidant properties while taking it it also promote our hair and skin to glow and grow easily now let us see product used in daily life in ayurvedic medicines there are many product used in daily lives here are some uh, products herbal oil herbal oil are used for self massage it is uh, known as asbayanga it is also promote relaxation while taking warm herbal oil massage it will improve our circulation of blood and it will relieve the stress next herbal tea uh, ayurveda emphasizes the herbal tea to promote balance and well being it include many types like ginger tea mint tea clove tea and cardamom tea etc herbal tea are also known as calming and rejuvenation properties while taking it it will improve our thinking process also herbal supplements herbal supplements are also known as rasayana it is while uh, taking herbal supplements it support to various aspects of health ashwagandha brahmi and taikattu are the common use of herbal supplements it can manage stress support connective functions and aid digestive respectively herbal toothpaste herbal toothpaste is the formulation with natural ingredients such as neem clove cardamom tulsi salt lemon etc it can promote healthy teeth and does not give any dental problems it can also prevent our cavities strengthly neti pot neti pot is a vessel used for nasal irrigation pouring warm water in neti pot it does not flow out other nostril it also promotes sinusal health it uh, does not give any irritation to our nose now let us move to the topic ayurvedic therapies the ayurveda include many therapeutic treatment it involves herbal steam bath oil treatment oil massage herbal massage and enemies now let us see some therapies psychotherapy it is a uh, psychotherapy is used to treat a trained person uh, who is affected by the problem which can supportive and non judgmental environment through conversation and discussion process it include experience stress and challenges also it help to gain insights develop coping strategy and improve our thinking process occupational therapy occupational therapy is perform daily activities and task it will overcome physical connectives and environmental modification while taking occupational therapy it will does not give any stress problem it will improve our brain and health care it will improve our overall thinking function and well being function also physical therapy physical therapy is known for improve physical function it involves exercise yoga meditation movement of joints etc it helps to physical improve fitness and manage chronic condition etc panchakarma therapy panchakarma therapy is used for adapting for cleaning process it is used to treat polycyclic ovarian disease and polycyclic ovarian syndrome it is used for uh, women's menstrual problem to completely cure it there are five types of panchakarma therapy snehan swedan vaman vachran and baschi vedic dosage form there are many dosage forms in ayurveda here are some dosage form given here tailas tailas are known as oils it is prepared by boiling of drug the ingredients are used for warm hot water and other uh, liquid consumption while heating it it will remove uh, the, while heating the preparation of thylois it will remove the water it is used for external local application and it also used for internal application also for example are nilgiri thyla and til thyla girta 
medicated geese of girta is classified into geese or butters girta is heated on the fire to remove the water in the preparation of geese or butter it uh, well ingredients of uh, girta are add turmeric juice uh, it also uh, once again it also heated in copper pot or iron pot to remove the traces of water it is mixed with drug powder to come this consistency also vartika vartika is crude with drug is prepared from vartika also it in it forms pile mass the pile mass is compacted it con converted into pill pipes and pill churna churna is also known as mixed powder substance prepared in uh, mortar crystal are also known as minerals vegetables and uh, vitamins passed through cloth and linen equal quality of jaggery and double quantity of sugar is used to prepare churna it is uh, the ingredients of preparing churna are milk hot water and cow's urine it examples of churna are stopphaladi churna and ashwagandha churna benefits of yoga in ayurveda yoga is a holistic approach to promote overall well being in ayurveda the word yoga is derived from the sanskrit word yuj it means unite or joint the yoga aims to unite the body mind and spirit it reduces stress and promote the relaxation it include vinyasa ashtanga ragmir uh, and other also included in yoga it encompasses non violence self discipline and stress relief benefits of meditation in ayurveda uh, the med meditation uh, are different forms uh, like uh, walking meditation do nothing meditation breathing meditation inhaling meditation etc it is to achieve the state of mental clarity and emotional calm there are also many benefits of regular meditation quiet and comfort uh, we want to sit and uh, meditate our body in quiet and comfortable environment there are many scientific studies to uh, improve our meditation process connection between yoga and meditation similarly yoga and meditation are interconnected it is re releasing physical tension and promoting mental calmness also it is there are range of many benefits in yoga and meditation it leads to healthy and balance our lifestyle uh, and does not give any stress problem etc advantage of your ayurveda while taking ayurvedic medicine it does not give any side effects it will it is perfect harmony with alternative medicine it helps to reclaim health with balanced dietary and effective sleep patterns and does not give any stress problem also seasonal routines are yoga meditation exercise pattern etc some of them examples are given here improve digestion promote healthy digestion it is focused on dietary and lifestyle it can support digestive system and another example is stress relief it can help to reduce our stress and function focusing on relaxation techniques while taking it we does not give any another focusing also disadvantage of ayurveda while taking uh, toxic metals of herb for high level it leads to poisoning leads to poisoning high dosage of medicine leads to side effect also example vomiting allergies skin condi uh, skin disorders etc examples are lack of individualization personal uh, it is also improve our personalized approach it is not targeted treatment it is not balancing the health and well being it is related results it does not show noticeable effects does not require urgent medical authority attention also in we can recap our uh, ayurvedic medicines now uh, first we can see what is ayurveda next father of ayurveda father of ayurveda is called charaka samhita next we see about aims uh, there are two types aims of ayurveda next uh, golden rules in ayurveda there are basically 10 golden rules next we see about uh, ayurvedic diet and 10 golden rules in ayurveda we can also see 
advantage and disadvantage of Ayurveda. In conclusion, I could like to say, Ayurveda is one of the most important medicine used for person's life. Uh, it, is, uh, it is most important for women menstrual problem. It does not give any side effects and it, it is only medicine to cure, uh, completely cure it. It is also not give any side effects and uh, it will uh, improve our brain health and uh, keep person's body, body and mind free. Thank you for all your attention. Hello everybody, I am Sarma Raghav S of grade 12 and I am studying in the Frontline Academy Matriculation Higher Secondary School. Today I am glad to stand before you to present my lecture on the topic Empowering for Change, Education and Natural Resources Management. Now let me explain you about what are the contents of my topic, Natural Resources, Classification of Natural Resources, Understanding Natural Resources Management, Challenges in Natural Resources Management, the role of education in natural resources management, integrating natural resources education into school curriculum. Now let us discuss about what is meant by natural resources. A natural resources are the resources that are drawn from nature and used with few modifications. A natural resources are transformed by extractivist industries. And a natural resource consists of industrial value, commercial value, aesthetic value. And natural resources are the materials and components that can be found in the environment and every human made components consists of natural resources at its very fundamental level. A natural resource may exist as a separate entity such as fresh water like air or land etc. or it may exist as an organism such as a fish etc. Natural resource allocations can be at the center of many economical and political confrontations both within and beyond boundaries of a country. Now let us see how the natural resources can be classified. The natural resources can be classified and grouped under three major categories. They are the natural resources classified under the basis of its renewability or exhaustibility, the natural resources classified under the basis of its origin, the natural resources classified under the basis of its ownership. Now let us discuss about how the natural resources can be classified under the basis of its renewability or exhaustibility. Under the basis of the renewability or exhaustibility, natural resources can be broadly grouped under two major categories. They are renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Now let us discuss about what is meant by renewable resources. Renewable resources are the resources that are replenished naturally and available continuously for the human consumption. From the human perspective, resources are renewable when their rate of replenishment exceeds their rate of consumption. In other words, resources are renewable when they are not affected due to the human consumption. Examples for renewable resources include sunlight, water, air, etc. Now let us discuss about what is meant by non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources are the resources that are formed over a long geological time period and these resources are not renewed easily. From the human perspective, resources are non-renewable when their rate of consumption exceeds their rate of replenishment. And, and in other words, non-renewable resources are those resources that cannot be used after they are used. These resources take a millions of years to replenish once if they are completely used. Examples for non-renewable resources include petroleum products such as coal, diesel, petrol, kerosene, etc. And once if they are used completely, they, took over, they take over millions of years to replenish. So it is our prime duty to save these kind of non-renewable resources. Now let us discuss about how the natural resources can be classified under the basis of its origin. Under the basis of the origin, the natural resources can be broadly grouped under two major categories. They are biotic resources and abiotic resources. Now let me explain you about what is meant by biotic resources. Biotic resources are the resources that are drawn from the biosphere and living organisms. Examples for biotic resources include flora and fauna, fisheries, livestock and fossil fuels. I included fossil fuels under this category because fossil fuels and other petroleum products are formed due to decomposition of organic matters. Now let us discuss about what is meant by abiotic resources. 
Abiotic resources are the resources that are originated from non-living and inorganic materials. And examples for abiotic resources include land, fresh water, air, rare earth elements, and heavy metals such as gold, silver, iron, copper, etc. Now let us discuss about what is meant, how the natural resources can be classified under the basis of its ownership pattern. Under the basis of the ownership pattern, the natural resources can be broadly grouped under four major categories. They are individual resources, community resources, national resources, and international resources. Now let me explain you about what is meant by individual resources. Individual resources are the resources that are owned and managed completely by private individuals. And only the private individuals who owns the private resources has the right to acquire them to use them for their own benefit. And private examples for private resources include plots, houses, plantations, pastures, and ponds, etc. Now let us discuss about what is meant by community resources. Community resources are those resources that can be accessible by all members of a community. And examples for community resources include cemeteries, hospitals, etc. The laws of community resources are formed by the community of people. And only the community has the right to manage them and use them for their benefit of its own people. Now let us discuss about what is meant by national resources. National resources are those resources that belongs to a nation and only the nation has the right to acquire them to use them for the benefit of its people. Examples for national resources include forests, wildlife, minerals, and vegetation within the both geographical and economical boundaries of a nation. And only the government of the nation has the right to use them. Examples for national resources are petroleum products, etc. Now let us discuss about international resources. International resources are those resources that are regulated by international organizations. And it involves more than one or two governments in these international resources. And examples for international resources include international waterways, as it is managed by international organizations. Now let us see about what is meant by natural resources management. Natural resources management refers to sustainable utilization of natural resources. And sustainable utilization of natural resources refers to conservation and preservation of decomposed and depleted natural resources. Let us see the importance of natural resources. Availability for future generations, ecological balance, and it supports human well-being. The natural resources should be available for the consumption of the future generations for their own use. And natural resources promotes both ecological and zoological balance. And natural resource also supports human well-being in various ways. As I told before, every man-made product consists of natural resources at its very fundamental level. Now let us see the components of natural resources management. Conservation and preservation, sustainability, restoration, and rehabilitation. Conservation and preservation of natural resources refers to safeguarding the natural resources from degradation and depletion. It also refers to reviving the degraded and depleting resources from getting extinct. Sustainability. Sustainable utilization of natural resources refers to utilizing the natural resources without compromising future. And sustainable utilization's goals are using the natural resources at the right time and whenever they are demanded and to the people who, who are in need of the natural resources. Restoration and rehabilitation. Restoration and rehabilitation refers to reviving the degraded and depleted ecosystems. And it also refers to reviving the degraded ecosystems and already extinct ecosystems. Now let us see what are the challenges that are faced in natural resources management. Over-exploitation, habitat destruction, pollution and contamination, climatical changes, lack of awareness and understanding. Over-exploitation. Over-exploitation is caused due to excessive use of natural resources 
and over exploitation is also caused due to there is no time for the natural resources to replenish and non renewable resources like petroleum products and once if they are completely used they take over millions of years to replenish and it is our prime and foremost duty to conserve those kind of resources habitat destruction habitat destruction is caused due to loss of natural habitats and examples for habitat destruction are deforestation urbanization and industrialization deforestation refers to the process of cutting down of trees and urbanization refers to the process of movement of people from villages to cities and industrialization refers to springing up of industries both are in urban and rural areas habitat destruction is one of the major factor which affects the natural resources and causes them to deplete now let us see about pollution and contamination pollution and contamination is caused due to release of harmful and hazardous substances from the environment examples for is examples for pollution and contamination are release of hazardous gases from environment industries and the hazardous gases affects the natural resources such as air etc and pollution and contamination also impacts ecosystem and it also impacts human health and it also impacts the respiratory system of human beings now let us see about climatical changes climatical changes are caused due to altering weather patterns and changes in global temperatures climatical changes are also caused due to greenhouse gas emissions and as a result there is no stability in climate lack of awareness and understanding due to the insufficient knowledge about natural resources management the natural resources are over exploited and due to the lack of knowledge about the consequences the people would face in future if the natural resources are depleted the natural resources has also been depleted in a large number and public institutions should spread awareness about natural resources and now let us see about the role of education in natural resources management awareness and knowledge skill development behavior change policy formulation research and innovation now let us discuss about awareness and knowledge the public institutions such as schools and colleges should play a vital role in creating the awareness about natural resources management in every nook and corners and they should also explain the pros and cons of the natural resources management to their students for better and efficient learning and non governmental organization should also involve in activities which promotes natural resources management and with also and it also keeps in engaging the public to pursue activities which promote natural resources management skill development the public should acquire necessary skills such as environmental monitoring data analysis etc examples for environmental monitoring include the monitoring of air the monitoring of water level and monitoring of noise pollution and monitoring of radioactivity etc behavior change there should be a sense of responsibility among the private individuals and public individuals about natural resources management and they should adopt such sustainable practices about how the natural resources can be managed and there should also be reduced ecological footprint as a result the natural resources are depleted in a large number due to excessive ecological footprint and public should follow the instructions that are provided by the government about and regarding natural resources policy formulation the government should contribute to policy formulation and they should implement new policies and they should make changes in existing strategies and about natural resources management and the people should adopt to such sustainable practices and there should be a sense of responsibility among all the individuals about natural resources management research and innovation the scientists should promote scientific research about natural resources management and there should also be introduction of new research projects about natural resources management and the scientists should engage in activities to try to save the extincting natural resources and there should also be development of new technologies in the scientific field and there should be implementation of strategies 
among the government and the researchers. Integrating natural resources education into the curriculum. Formal education, experiential learning, interdisciplinary approach, community engagement. Formal education. Formal education about natural resources management should be included in core curriculum and topics like ecology, sustainable agriculture and renewable energy should also be included in the academic sites. And there should be a foster holistic understanding about the natural resources management and there should also be involvement of public and private individuals about natural resources management and topics like ecology, sustainable agriculture, renewable energy should also be included in natural resources management. It is our prime duty to conserve and protect natural resources and natural resources often future biodiversity and geodiversity in their respective ecosystems. So it is essential to be mindful of negative consequences that if natural resources are depleted. Experiential learning. There should be a practical knowledge about natural resources management and there should also be deeper understanding about natural resources management and activities like field trips, outdoor activities and hands-on experiences should also be conducted in schools and colleges in every public places for a foster holistic understanding about natural resources management among the private individuals. Interdisciplinary approach. The public and the people should integrate across disciplines about natural resources management and there should be a foster holistic understanding and clear learning about natural resources management among the individuals. And subjects like science, social science, economics, political studies should also include the topics of natural resources management, renewable energy, and etc. Community engagement. There should be involvement of local communities and there should also be creation of partnership among both public and private individuals for the welfare of natural resources management. Now, now let us discuss about what are the three major factors which affects natural resources management. Overpopulation. Due to an increase in the population, the demand for the natural resources has also been increased. As a result, natural resources are overexploited and overgrazing. Due to overgrazing of cattle like sheep and cows, the soil erosion is caused. As a result of soil erosion, many trees are felled down. Urbanization. As a result of movement of people from villages to cities, the village resources are unused and the city resources are used completely. So it is essential we should use every natural resources that will in a sustainable manner and there should also be engagement of communities and involvement of local communities and creation of partnerships about natural resources management. And Natural resources allocations can face confrontations within and beyond geographical and economical boundaries of countries. And it also maintains peace when it comes to international resources. Conclusion. For long-term well-being, the natural resources should be procured and saved in an efficient manner. And the natural resources should be available for future generations for their consumptions. And the public should play and the public and the government should play a critical role in addressing the challenges about the natural resources management and they should empower the young generation to procure and save the natural resources for future consumption. And now let us recall whatever I taught you in this lecture. We saw about what is meant by natural resources and we, asked, we saw about how the natural resources can be classified and we also saw about natural resources management and we discussed about the challenges that are faced in the natural resources management and we also discussed about the role of education in natural resources management and that's it. Thank you. All present here. I am today so excited to be in this stage. I am Niranjan of grade 8 studying in the Frontline Academy School. Today, I am going to lecture about the topic Legends Among Us, celebrating the heroes of India. Who are all legends? Legends are the superheroes who want to convert the earth a better place to live.
for one and all. These individuals have made their remarkable presence on the earth through their achievements and contributions. In this lecture, I am going to tell about a few of them. First, I am going to tell about the forest man of India, the man who single-handedly converted a washed out land into a 1360 acre forest. Before three decades, a teenager, after noticing the death of a large number of reptiles, started planting few bamboo saplings in the area which has been washed away by flood. Now that area is converted into a forest called Marai Forest named after him. The man who made it possible is called Payang. Now, in that forest, a large number of Bengal tigers, Indian rhinoceros, beside apes, hundreds of variety of birds, hundreds of deer, rabbits live. Bamboo consists of 300 hectares in that forest. A herd of 100 elephants visits that forest each year and stays six months in that forest. They have recently found that they have given birth to 10 calves in that forest. The education system should be always like this. Every child should be asked to plant few bamboos, few tree saplings at least. My friends have become engineers and went to cities. But I sacrificed everything and now this is my home. All the records, all the awards and recognition I get is my wealth which, which makes me the world's happiest man, says Payang. Payang was 16 when the flood hit Azam. A large number of animals started to disappear around him. This disturbed him. The villagers told that due to deforestation and decline of forest cover, many animals lost their home. So we should build them a new home or a new forest for them. After hearing this, Payang alerted the forest department, but they told himself to plant trees. So he selected a river line area near the Brahmaputra River and started planting few bamboo saplings per a day. This continued for three decades. Watering and growing plants is quite difficult for him because though he has the water source near him, he can't water for a large area. So he built bamboo platforms and placed earthen pots with small holes on the top of each bamboo sapling. This kept it moisture until it dries out. Next year, in 1980, he started up a scheme called Forest Scheme in which they are asked to plant many tree saplings. After the scheme finished, many workers left him, but he stayed back and continued to do his project. Payang belongs to a tribe called Mishing in Azam, India. He lives in a small hut with his wife and three children. He has a cattle and a buffalo which grazes in his field. He sells milk for his livelihood. This is the only income of him. He got many awards and recognition. Payang was once honored at a public function held at Nehru University at 2012. He says that this is one of his remarkable achievement. Is it amazing to see the willpower of a man who fought alone in a battle and won single-handedly? Next, I am going to tell about the man who is known as People's President and Missile Man of India. He is none other than AP Dr. APG Abdul Kalam. Now, I would like to talk about a true legend who lived among us. Dr. APG Abdul Kalam, known as renowned scientist and an extraordinary human being. Abdul Kalam started from humble beginnings. His parents played a significant role in his character and values, while his teacher played a virtual role in his learnings. Because of Abdul Kalam's 
Postulate of education, he led to Madras Institute of Technology, where he specialized aeronautic space. Because of his interest in studies and dedication to his subjects, this led to his foundation of his remarkable career. Dr. Kalam played a significant role in the field of defense research and development. He joined in India's defense research and development and played a significant role in launching India's first indigenous satellite. He all, because of Abdul Kalam's leadership, he also possibilized many strategic missiles like Agni and Prithvi. Abdul Kalam also gave many inspirations to kids about study. He often gave lectures and interaction with children uh, to, to tell them the importance of studies. Our daughter Kalam was once elected as the 11th president of India. While he was elected, he was clear about his intentions for empowering the marginalized societies and, imp and improving the nation building. Abdul Kalam got many awards and recognition throughout his life. He was once honored the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian record in 1997. He was also awarded Ramanujan Award in 2000. He was awarded the King Charles II Medal in 2006 from the Royal Society UK. He was also honored the Hoover Medal and Engineering Prize in 2007. He got many awards and recognition throughout his life. He, and, and he also, after his passing, he also stayed, a, he stayed as a remarkable presence in our mind. Next, I am going to tell about the youngest headmaster in the world. He is none other than Baba Ali. At age nine, he took up the responsibility of teaching less privileged kids and thought whatever he learned in his own school to them. He is like a dedicated teacher because he returned from the school straight back to the house and teach whatever he learned to them. At age nine, when most of the kids can't even do their homework, he started up a school. One day, while he was returning from the school, he saw that many kids were doing some odd part-time jobs. Next day too, he saw the same thing. I realized that they have never attended schools. Plus, our village does not have any good schools. Even I used to travel 10 kilometers up and down to get education. Due to some financial aids, they have didn't get any opportunity to get education. But I am lucky. My father is a Jew trader, says Baba. Baba did not recognize that his concern to the kids would not only change his life, but also change hundreds of other kids' life. This is how Baba's school started under a Goa tree with few village kids who wait for him to return from the school. I was classified then. I got up to the eight kids and thought whatever I've learned to them. I don't care about the syllabus. I just want to impart education. Even if they learned a small thing from me, that is my great achievement, says Baba. Baba would take broken pieces of chalk after classes and use terracotta tiles as blackboard. After his teacher knew about his school, she gave boxes of chalk, says Baba with a smile. Now, Baba would often buy sweets from his own pocket money and gives to the children to ensure that they visit the school regularly. He also buys rice from his relatives and gives to their parents to convince them to send their kids to the school. This is how a nine-year-old boy did many difficulties to teach less privileged kids. Today, Baba school has 300 students with an equal boys and girls ratio. Next, I am going to tell about 
83 year old librarian was been donating every single rupee he earned to the poor he is palam kalyan sundar nar how often we would go how often we would donate money to some in need would he help someone who asked you money for some financial aids maybe not or at least you might think twice even before giving a 100 rupees note we sometimes go to an ngo and donate few stuff or money and feel proud about ourselves we think that we have done our deeds and we move on to our life but there are few people very few who literally dedicate their life for helping the poor one of the person is palam kaliyana sundar nar this 73 year old 83 year old librarian has been donating every single rupee he earned to the poor for 30 years born at melkari velangulam tamil nadu kaliyana sundar nar took up some odd part time jobs for his daily bread and butter while he donated all of his savings to the poor kaliyana sundar nar donated all of his savings to the poor he is a he is a humble person he is, he is a librarian after he retired as a librarian he also donated his pension amount of rupees 10 lakhs to the poor we work so hard for a good and luxurious lifestyle but this man was different he worked so hard so that he can earn more money to donate he did not even get married as he wished to spend all of his earnings to the poor rather spending it to the family kalyana sundar na lost his father when he was one and his mother raised him all by herself she taught him to help the poor and underprivileged sections of the community as he moved to a higher education it was clear about his intentions to help the poor kalyana sundar na slept at railway platforms and payments to personally experience what the poor of the country go through kalyana sundar na wanted to do his masters in tamil but as for the only student in that subject college organization told him to opt to an another area but he was determined to do it in tamil uh, having a shrill pitched voice kalyana sundar na met many difficulties he once thought of suicide but then he met the advice of author tamil valan ne ne this gave him another life kali i went to chief minister kamaraj and gave my gold chain i think that i was the only student to do that says kalyana sundar nar kalyana sundar nar got many awards and recognition he is a gold medalist in library science and after his retirement he thought of extending his service to the poor he also donated his total prize amount of rupees 10 crores to the poor is it amazing to see the man who literally dedicated his life for helping the poor next i am going to tell about major sandeep munikrishnan don't come up i will handle them these are the last words told by him on the night of 26 november several buildings were attacked in south mumbai one of the buildings were hostages were iconic 100 year hotel taj mahal palace hotel kalyan sundar nar went to that hotel to save the hostages he was a team commander of 51 special action group f51 sag deployed to that hotel to save the hostages he thought he started to search for the terrorist from the 6th floor while descending to 6th and 5th he can't find any terrorist while he descended to 4th floor he uh, they found that the room was been locked inside so they broke up the door and they found that there are terrorist so there was a fire fight between the commandos and terrorist in this fire fight several commandos were attacked one of the commando sunil kumar was been severely attacked in this fire fight while sandeep krishnan uh, helping those commandos who have been attacked he lost the terrorist the terrorist 
threw a grenade and they disappeared. After this incident, they thought of uh, they started to search for the terrorist. In the next 15 hours, in the midnight of 27th November, they thought of using the central central staircase as it was the only way to reach the terrorist. While they are moving on in that staircase, the terrorists saw them. So they ambushed NSC team, where one of many commandos were attacked. There was again a firefight. In that firefight, Major Sandeep Munikrishan got an idea to chase all the terrorists all by himself and cornering them in a room. But this might be danger because he might, he, he, he might lose his life. But he didn't care about it and chased all the terrorists and cornered them in a room called Ballroom in the North Restaurant of Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. Later, the com uh, commandos killed, Sandeep Munik uh, killed the terrorists, including Sandeep Munikrishnan. Sandeep Munikrishnan sacrificed his own life for others. Don't come up. I will handle them. These are the last words told by him, according to the NSG officials. Is it amazing to see a man who literally, who, who dedicated, who sacrificed his own life to help others? Next, I am going to tell about Natan Tata. Natan Tata is an extraordinary human being and an inspiration in business world. He is an iconic figure in business world and India's most inspiration and respect industrialist. He's a humble person, born on December in 1931 from a common family known as Tata family. Ratan Tata didn't play a sing didn't, he uh, did only play a significant role in one changing Tata's company. He was humble to his workers and stakeholders. His, uh, his uh, ethics in business were concern, humanity, and others. Natan Tata is also famous for his corporate ethics and social responsibility. He donated crores and crores of money in the corona time. Tata Nano, the world's most affordable car being launched by him, makes every people a chance to experience the car. He also launched many schemes for the poor people. Yeah, Ratan Tata is important for changing the corporate world, for uh, empowering the social communities. So I conclude that Ratan Tata is an extraordinary human being who did many, uh, who uh, uh, dedicated his life to serve others. So I, uh, this is the last part of the lecture. I want to summary all of the legends I told. First, Payang, the man who single-handedly converted a washed out land into a 1360 acre forest. He was 16, let it as a, many animals started to disappear around him. This disturbed him. So he asked the forest department help, but they didn't help him. So he single-handedly converted a washed out land into a 1,360 acre forest. The next person is Dr. APG Abdul Kalam. He is an extraordinary human being. He is a renowned scientist who, who always gave inspirations to the generations. His lectures and interaction with students uh, changed many of the lives. The next person is Palam Kalyana Sundarnar. This 83 years as a librarian has been donating every single rupee he earned to the poor. He, uh, he did not uh, keep any savings in his pocket. He, uh, he donated everything to the poor for 30 years. He also donated his main, uh, total price amount of rupees 10 crores to the poor. The next person is Major Sandeep Munikrishnan. Don't come up. I will handle them. These are the last words told by him. He sacrificed his own life for others. He sacrificed his own life for others. He, he, say, he cornered all the terrorists all by himself and locked them in a room. The next legend is Baba Ali, the youngest headmaster in the world. He, he taught less privileged kids 
after returning from the school he thought what have we learned to them he is a extraordinary human being who led for helping others now barber school has 300 students the equal boys and girls ratio and the last person is ratan tata he is a who extraordinary human being who, who uh, say uh, throughout his life he served for others he launched many schemes for helping others so overall i conclude that these legends have done their deeds they serve, they literally dedicate or sacrifice their life for us so we should take them as a role model and we should inspire the next generation and became a legend celebrating heroes of india thank you thank you everyone i am sahana from grade 12 from the frontline academy matriculation higher secondary school today i am here to present a lecture on the topic unleashing the power of heat and temperature a guide to thermodynamics concepts and laws i am going to start my lecture with an amazing saying of albert einstein he said that classical thermodynamics is the only physical theory of the universal content which i am convinced will never be overthrown by this we can understand how interesting and vast topic thermodynamics is from my lecture you can understand what is thermodynamics difference between heat and temperature thermal properties of matter various laws of thermodynamics system and surrounding types and properties of system thermodynamic processes thermal expansion change of state heat transfer underlying principle behind heat tension and few other concepts related to thermodynamics first let me say what is thermodynamics Thermodynamics is a branch of physics that explains the phenomena of heat, temperature, energy, etc. By understanding the concept of thermodynamics, we can understand the terms like hot and cold and we can differentiate heat from temperature. Though heat and temperature are the parameters, they are totally different. heat and temperature play a very important role in one's life life is sustained on earth because the sun is maintained at particular temperature a human body functions properly because our body is maintained at some particular temperature so by understanding thermodynamics we can understand nature the word thermodynamics is word thermis which means heat and dynamics which means flow so thermodynamics is nothing but flow of heat thermodynamics make many useful predictions for many useful reactions like burning of fuel to produce heat energy flow of electrons through circuit to produce electrical energy and etc in the 19th century the scientists tried to predict the underlying principles behind heat tension to increase its efficiency and that is how various laws theories and concepts for thermodynamics was introduced it helps us to evaluate macroscopic properties and their interrelationship so this is the basic concept of thermodynamics now let me say the difference between heat and temperature when an object at higher temperature is kept in contact with another object which is at lower temperature there is a spontaneous flow of energy from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object this energy transfer is called as heat the process of energy transfer from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object is called as heating when work is done some object may increase and sometimes it may not it depends on the nature of the object and the process it will involve the temperature is the degree of hotness or coolness of a body temperature is measured using thermometer the si unit of temperature is kelvin in day to day applications we use other terms like celsius and fahrenheit we can convert celsius to fahrenheit fahrenheit to kelvin and vice versa there is a general misconception that heat is a quantity of energy no heat is not a quantity of energy it is just an energy in transit from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object once the heating process is done we should not call it as heat we should call it as hot this is the difference between heat and the temperature let me say a general example for heat temperature and work 
If we rub our hands for a minute, we will feel some hotness in our hands. This is because we have done some work by rubbing of our hands. And now if we keep our hands in our chin, we will feel some hotness in our chin also. This is because some heat is transferred to our hands. That is the higher temperature object to our chin, which is in lower temperature object. This is called as, uh, so this is the general example between uh, heat, temperature and work. Now thermal properties of matter. We can understand this concept by four main laws. They are Boyle's law, Charles law, Avogadro's law and idle gas equation. Boyle's law. This law is invented by a scientist named Robert Boyle. This law states that when the temperature of the gas is kept constant, the pressure of the fixed mass of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas. That is P inversely proportional to V. So PV is equal to constant. A good example for a boy's law is breathing. When we inhale the air, our lungs expand. So the pressure inside our lungs get decreased because the volume of our lungs increases. And now if the if we exhale the air, our lungs contract. So the pressure inside our lungs increases because the volume of the lungs get increased. Charles law. This law is invented by a scientist named Charles. This law states that when the pressure of the gas is kept constant, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas. That is V directly proportional to T. So V by T is equal to constant. A good example for Charles law is hot air balloon. When the temperature inside the hot air balloon increases, its volume also increases. As a result, it floats in the air. And now if the temperature inside the hot air balloon decreases, the volume of the hot air balloon decreases. As a result, it comes back to the land surface. Now Avogadro's law. This law is invented by a scientist named Avogadro. This law states that when the pressure and temperature of the gas is kept constant, the volume of the fixed mass of the gas is directly proportional to the number of moles and molecules of the gas. That is V directly proportional to N. So V by N is equal to constant. A good example for Avogadro's law is blowing of a normal balloon. When we blow a normal balloon, the number of moles inside the normal balloon increases. As a result, its volume also gets increased. And now if the air comes out of the normal balloon, the number of moles inside the balloon comes out of the balloon. As a result, its volume also gets decreased because the volume and number of moles are directly proportional to each other. Now, by combining these three equations, that is Boyle's law, Charles law, and Avogadro's law, we come across a new equation called idle gas equation. It is also called as combined law of gases. It is nothing but PV is equal to nRT or PV is equal to mu kT. Here P is pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature of the gas. So these are the thermal properties of matter. Now uh, let us enter into our next topic, the laws of thermodynamics. It is one of the major concept of thermodynamics. There are four main laws in thermodynamics. They are zeroth law, first law, second law, and third law of thermodynamics. Zeroth law of thermodynamics. This law states that if the system B and C are in thermal equilibrium with the third system A, then the system B and C are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Zeroth law of thermodynamics is also called as law of thermal equilibrium. To explain this law briefly, let me say, uh, let us consider three systems A, B, and C. Initially, the three systems are at different temperature. After some time, the system B is in thermal equilibrium. A and the system C is in thermal equilibrium with the system A. At this time, there is no flow of heat between these three systems uh, as the three systems A, B and C attain its thermal equilibrium. So as a result, we can conclude that the system B and C are in thermal equilibrium with each other. First law of thermodynamics. This law states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. First law of thermodynamics is also called as law of thermal equilibrium. So this law can also be stated as energy can neither be created nor destroyed.